Good afternoon, everyone. A belated Merry Christmas to you and happy Stephen's Day. And what a Stephen's Day is, is this is an unmissable day in the Irish calendar with two grade ones spread across three meetings, just shy of €500,000 in total prize money between three meetings today. We're to up and down the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland and a feast of action. And you've got the best seat in the house. So put your feet up, sit back and enjoy plenty of great action, not least at Leopardstown. That is the scene there, a lovely sunny day there. Hurdles and bumper track is soft chase yielding soft in places for a seven race car. The first of four days of Leopardstown's Christmas meeting, which features seven grade ones. The first of which is our feature today. The 220, the brand new racing post app, novice chase over two miles and a furlong. Knight Frank, uh, juvenile hurdle as well. The grade two at 110, about an hour and 10 before over two miles. Fieldor took that race last year. He is the favorite for the brand new racing post at Novice Chase, a race that Gordon Elliott has only won just the once with Clarkham in 2014. He has the strongest hand of all this year with Fieldor and Hollow Games, both one from one over fences and both representing Cullen Truck. Let's have a look at who won't be making their appearance at Leopardstown today. In the, in the opener, number 12, Leading Flame. Number 27, Lady Bank. 12.35, number 3, Kerr Door. 22, Hamasha. And four out of the 145, number 1, the bold six is five bold approach. Uh, hey Johnny, number 9, is out, as is number 18, Mata Matuta. So a fair few horses have come out. Just the one jockey change, thankfully. Master Brefney is now the mount of Luke Carberry, who claims the seven on the number 29 horse. In our opener, the 12 o'clock, the first of two intriguing novices hurdles. So that's Leopardstown and it's sunny as well, down in Limerick. Grade one action there as well, there. Their feature grade one was updated to grade one status in 2018. That is the Forheen Novices Chase and is the centerpiece of their Christmas festival as well. This is the first day of it. Soft, heavy in, soft too heavy, heavy in places uh, for their 12 race card, which kicks off with a three-year-old maiden hurdle over two miles. Another maiden hurdle at 12.58 over the same trip. Uh, the feature is a little bit further down the card. It's over an extended two miles and three furlongs, named after one of the most famous winners of it, Forheen, who brought the house down under Patrick Mullins when he won it a few years ago. It's named after him. It's sponsored by Guinness, and it's a Limerick centerpiece of their season. 240, their feature, a really interesting card all the way, all the way through, even right down to the mayor's bumper, which closes the card at 350. So as you'd expect, pretty heavy, difficult conditions. Only two non-runners though, which is always a good sign as well. 12.58, number 11, he's ultimate, and Breezy Bell, number 15, is out of the 2.08. So two horses out, two jockey changes to bring you. Kieran Callahan claims the seven on number 19, in excess in the 12.58, the second race. And in the finale, uh, number five, Mr. Matthew Jack Love claims the seven on Granos Girl. And we can't forget Down Royal in the bargain as well. Soft yielding to soft in places is the going ahead of their uh, the, the card, which kicks off over an extended two and a half miles uh, maiden hurdle at 11.40, which will be the start of our programme, the first race of their really, really competitive Hunter's Chase. Vossele looking to right last year's wrong, having been beaten in it last year. Well, he's the hot favourite for their feature at 2.33. That's over three miles, 11.40 through to 3.08. These horses don't go. 12.48, number one, Wrecking Ball pulled. 128, number two, Champagne Sparkles. 233, number one, Brain Power 7, Singing Banjo, don't go. And in the 308, number four, Fathom 2. And 12, one hell of a getaway. And just a solitary jockey change as well. Uh, Kalanisi Dove now has Niall Moore claiming the four. Number 18 in the 12.48. So you're up to date with the bare details. Let's get around the grounds. The first time Leopards down, let's say a very good afternoon to Gary O'Brien and Kay Harrington.
Hello everyone, welcome to day one of the Christmas festival here at Leopardstown. The sun is shining, but we're actually getting a few drops of rain here as you come to us. Kate Harrington is going to be with me here on day one of the festival. Kate, season greetings, welcome along. How excited are you by what lies ahead? Yeah, really, really excited, Gary. It's um you know, it's what makes Christmas uh, for me. Um, ever since I was a kid, it's all about um, coming racing at Leopardstown for the four days after Christmas. Christmas and the dinner just gets in the way. Exactly, <laughs> yes. And we've got Christmas-style weather here as well. It is pretty cold at Leopardstown today as well. Quite a lot of rain in the run-up to this fixture also. Soft ground now on the hurdle track and the chase course, which they have been watering here over the past few weeks, yielding soft in places. We'll just see how things play out on that particular front. But some really big names on show here today, not least in our feature event at 2 20, the grade one brand new racing post app novice chase and Kate a small but select field just the five runners it was a similar situation last year and we had a really good race didn't we between Fernie Hollow and Riviera de Tell how do you see things playing out this time around obviously the key here is the renewal of a rivalry potentially between Phil Dorn and Sam Watt. yeah it looks a really really competitive renewal Gary and um, it um, is all about Phil Dorn and San Juan and you know hollow games as well but in some respects, sometimes we're forgetting about Midnight Run. He has all the experience. He's won a grade two as well. A lot of these are only having their second start over fences and straight into grade one company. He's got the experience, albeit he has to step up a good bit if he's to put it up to our market principles. But he, in some respects, could be the forgotten horse of the race um, already being a grade two winner. But it really is all about Phil Dora. I was so taken by his chasing debut at Navin, uh, where he beat San uh, Wa and um, I think he's going to step forward again from that run. Yes, he has that four-year-old weight allowance. Interesting to see, though, whether Samoa can step forward from the Navin effort. He was a very smart hurdler, and Gordon Elliott got a good second string to his bow there as well. Cade in the shape of Hollow Games, who was a good winner at Navin. Would that be doing him a disservice to say he's a second string, actually? <laughs> yeah, he nearly could be. Say, like anyone would be happy to have um, Hollow Games as their first str string here today. But um, on Jockey Buckins, he does look like he is the second string, and he was very, very good um, when winning that um, beginners chase at uh, Navin, and looked an awful lot in some respects a quicker horse than he did um, when running over hurdles last season so that's the feature then that comes up at 220 there has actually been a few quid for the outsider there visionarian as well see peter fahey's predicting a big run from him we've got grade two action earlier on in the day at 110 with the knight frank juvenile hurdle a lot of untapped potential on show here kate but how good will any of these have to be to get the better of Lossiemouth, who was so impressive when beating stablemate Zarek the Brave at Fairy House earlier this month? You know, um, at Fairy House earlier in the month, I thought Zarek the Brave was going to be um, potentially the um, Cheltenham banker in the Triumph hurdle, but Lossiemouth went out, and you know, Danny Mullins gave her um, a brilliant ride, came wide, and you know, she made Zarek the Brave look ordinary. She won very, very suddenly, and you know, you'd imagine all she's going to oh. do. Nearly had an accident here. <laughs> is um, is um, is um, improved from that run, and um, she is Philly. That is just uh, one that looks on the improve. But it is interesting to see um, Gala money coming for Gala Mansour. Of course, she was a listed uh, winner over obstacles at, um, at, uh, in France earlier on in the year. I've always said she was a safe pair of hands. She proved it there. <laughs> Willie Mullins very strongly represented in that race. Cougar, who won his first two starts, Kate, impressed a lot of people at Gorland Park and then Royal. Big drifter today. Is that a, a worry for you? Yeah, you, you know, he, Cougar, he has been quite impressive on both those starts, as you say, and um, it's interesting to see this son of deep impact taking to hurdles so, so well. <laughs> I don't think um, the, ja the Japanese will be too happy seeing a deep impact <laughs> uh, potentially go out and win a grade two hurdle here today. But, you know, um, poor Roach knows what he's doing with his horses. His horses are in absolutely brilliant form uh, this season, and uh, he is an interesting one that could be, um, has the experience and could be on the improve. So there are two marquee events, if you like, but plenty of interesting fair to chat about as well. Okay, what about the maiden hurdles that kick things off? You've got a great chance in the first of those with Jatara. How's her preparation gone? Uh, yeah, Jatara, she's, um, you know, she was an impressive winner at uh, Navin the last day, and uh, I think she's been schooling really, really well at home. She's a filly that all she's done is improve um, with each run. She's been in, been in a little bit of a slow learner, um, some people might say, but, uh, you know, but it is, she is going to have to be at her very, very best, you know, um, 
Um, she has High Definition, who is, um, who is interesting enough, still a cult. Um, and this son of Galileo, of course, he was tried at the very, very top level. He was one time our favourite for the English Derby. And then we've also got um, the talking horse, um, the Willie Mullins charge mm. for Minion. Um, also, I'm a little bit concerned. His, the form of his race in France, the second and third, and the second has been a you could say a bit of a disappointing horse for the Gordon Elliott. He was bought um, for the Gordon Elliott yard and he has yet to win a race on these shores. Um, but he obviously is working at uh, the house staying at home. OK, we'll see how that goes. That looks uh, maiden hurdle with potentially a fair bit of depth to that opening contest. And in the second maiden hurdle, Willie Mullins bringing one back from a very long absence. Again, even longer than Parmeni on Dark Raven, who won a couple of bumpers for the yard back in... 2021, the spring of 2021, Kate, lacks hurling experience, but would you imagine he's still going to be tough to beat? I really like Dr. Bravo in this race. I've gone through that for his the form of his uh, bumper runs two or three times over the last couple of days, and I just I know he's got the Willie Mullins factor, and he's won two bumpers, and you know I just but the form of those bumpers haven't stacked up to what like we saw Dr. Bravo. He was so impressive potentially on jockey bookings. He was um, the second or third string in the Willie Mullins yard, or sorry, in the Gordon Elliott yard in that bumper um, at Ferry House that Gordon so wanted to win in memory of his uh, uncle Willie Elliott. But he was a very, very um, impressive winner that day. And I think this son of Dr. Gino, um, I'm sure he's very, very well schooled. And I think he could be um, the one they all have to beat. I think he's third, third favourite at the moment. OK, maybe a little bit of value to be had there with Dr. Bravo. Kate, just before we wrap up for now, I must ask you about your other runner in the car today, changing the rules, who goes in the novice handicap hurdle at 145. Quite a few non-runners in that race, which will make life a little bit easier. Could today be his day? I think he's shaped pretty well on more than one occasion. Yes, he, um, his seasonal debut at Nabham was very, very good when he ran at two miles. Uh, potentially just took a little bit of a blow, and he does things very, very easy um, at home. And we're bit disappointed in him at Fairy House and um, you know I just think we covered him up stepping up to two and a half and he just didn't quite like it and uh, back to two miles today we'll jump him out and make plenty of use of him so hopefully he's the one they're all gonna have to beat. Okay and your mum I'm sure will be watching in at home she'll be hoping for a Christmas winner. Yes uh, mum's at home she's a little bit unwell at the moment but she's getting through things and um, yeah a nice double today to kick things off will be good for her. Fantastic I think you've won up at Down Royal as well have you? Yes we've Max Express up at Down Royal he's in the auction maiden hurdle and uh, hopefully he'll run a nice race. Lovely stuff okay best wishes to the Harrington's then with their runners here at Leopardstown and at Down Royal this afternoon. Amazfair building it's a chilly winter's morning here but the crowd's starting to filter in often a big holiday crowd here as you'd expect on St Stephen's Day or Boxing Day if you prefer the first of our seven races then coming up at high noon so sunny scenes and a chill in the air and Leinster down to Munster we go and Limerick their first of four days of their Christmas festival Fran Berry did all four last year he did one of them with Lisa O'Neill and the pair are on the track now Afternoon, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I should say, and very welcome to Limerick for day one of the four day Christmas festival. It's a beautiful day here, plenty of rain in the last 48 hours. It is going to be testing ground, but we've got a cracking seven race car to kick off the action here today. Headed up, of course, by the fifth race of the day, the Grade One Faheen Novice Chase, of course, won by the Great Horse himself back in 2019 in great style. And we've got a cracking race this year as well. And delighted to say that Lisa O'Neill will be alongside me here for the afternoon for what Lisa promised me a cracking day's racing. Yeah, great day racing Fran and actually the sun is shining mm. which when I was driving down I wasn't so sure if that was going to materialise especially when I got here there was quite a heavy shower and as you said there's been quite a bit of rain over the last 48 hours but there's good troves of people coming through the gates which is great to see and we're looking forward to a great card ahead of us We are indeed and on that feature race, fifth race today the Fahi Novice Chase and we have a very short price favourite, the horse at 6 from 6 5 from 5 in the track of course and one point to point win, Jerry Kalam of course made a winning debut over fence recently Lisa and he was a very good novice hurler last year yeah, it's hard to fault him in anything that he's done, Fran, to be perfectly honest. And what we've seen of him in Fairy House on his debut over fences was quite taking as well. I thought he was quite flawless, to be fair. Um, he, I'm sure he learned a lot that day too. He had a good lot, time, lot of time off before that. And obviously he'll come on mentally and physically for that. But today he faces his biggest challenge of all, stepping into Grade 1 company for the first time. He never got to that level over hurls, but his rival and opposition in the market, Kilcrute, did. He was a champion bumper mm. winner and obviously... 
he, he reached grade one level over hurls as well but um, he was quite effective at Punchestown too Fran it's an exciting race and I'm hoping Jerry Colum is the one I really like what I've seen from him I was a little bit disappointed with Kilcrush I suppose when he had maybe a below par start to his um, hurling um, season last mm. year and um, he finally got off the mark uh, on his third attempt and then went on to grade one level where he was placed but um, it's interesting how good he was at Punchestown but hard to know what to make of the form. Exactly what did he beat today of course but uh, on Jerry Colomb he took all the length of the two miles six furlongs straight in, in uh, Turles to win his novice hurl. He was outpaced three furlongs out but he stayed on strongly. What about dropping down a trip today in his company? Yeah he is an out and out stayer there's no doubt about that but he should thrive on these conditions mm. considering the ground is very testing as well and he'll have no problem handling that whatsoever ground or sorry trip maybe just a little bit of a minimum maybe a concern but I, I think he'll be okay and he'll be able to cope Kilcrud of course as Lisa said was very good when winning on debut at Punchestown on his chasing debut a lot to like about that way he jumped but what did he beat on the day Willie Munns has two other runners in the race of course Lisa authorised Art won a grade three at uh, Tipperary early in the season both of them though their best forms on good ground or yielding ground at worst yes exactly and that's definitely a concern coming into these tougher testing conditions both of them grade three novice winners as well and obviously adamantly chosen rose to success when he won the Land Rover bumper but I think he definitely is better on seen better on better ground and uh, authorised art is he's quick and effective over his obstacles but we've seen the best of him on better conditions trip notwithstanding Jerry Colomb the likely winner yes I'd like to think so I, I think he's very good from what we've seen but there's no doubt that he has to prove himself today that's a feature race today the fifth race today Jerry Colomb will be a warm order there for Gordon Elliott a very nice ride for Jordan Gain for to pick, uh, pick up here today Day. Third race today is a very interesting conditions hurl. We've Longhouse Poet, of course, uh, big run the Grand National last year. High class horses own right. He won the Testis Chase. A uh, bit of a lacklustre return to action recently over hurls. And they have a very short price favourite, Lisa, in Pinkerton. First time tongue tie on. Two really good runs recently. Yeah, two really good runs. And both of those runs came in his first and second start in handicap company as well. I thought maybe he was just a little bit outdone when he fluffed his lines at the last in Down Royal. And maybe he just came on. Came him up against maybe an unexposed type in Maryland Giant the last day in Fairy House but he's been seen to really good effect his last two runs this looks like a golden opportunity for him to get off the mark and I think connections have picked a nice opportunity for him looks a really good day uh prospect today, Pinkerton to get off to mark this season, at least for training all mead, Brian Cooper second race today is a really interesting maiden hurl, we look could have a high class prospect in Foxy Girl, trained by Henry de Brom had very good Irish debut recently Yeah, that was a really good run behind Liberty Dance in Thurless, Liberty Dance went on to win and listed Mayor's Novice in, in Thurless again, Davy Russell on his last and final <laughs> ride, but uh, Foxy Girl was seen to good effect behind Liberty Dance and uh, you'd imagine that she's going to benefit for that run under his belt uh, she was off a long time as as well and uh, obviously it's her first it was her Irish debut as well in Thurless I'd imagine there's going to be mental and physical improvement from that run and she looks like the likely favourite but obviously with the defection of his ultimate in at the bottom of the reserves and first reserve gets in uh, Willie Mullins charge mm. in excess which Kieran Callan has taken a seven pounds off and um, there's plenty a bit of support in the market for it yeah really interesting race second race day crack and main hurl we get underway here at 12.25 with an interesting three old hurl sharp Price favourite will be Realism, who's in the market along with Biker, trained by Charles Burns, a winner uh, last time in England when winning for Richard Hannon. That's a look here to Carl Limerick. Look forward to catching up with you ahead of the first race today, due off 12.25. From Gold Cups to Grand Nationals, the latest big races to the famous clashes of the past, Racing TV's YouTube channel has it all. Rachel Blackmore, History International, Manila Times win. Catch up on episodes of shows that you might have missed or enjoy hours of replays of some of your favourite races from the last 20 years. Simply head to YouTube and search for Racing TV. You'll never be far away from watching the next big race.
Our first race is not too far away and it comes from Down Royal. It's a really interesting one to kick off proceedings as well. The Irish National Hunt Stallions, owners EBF Maiden Hurdle, four-year-olds and upwards over an extended two and a half miles. Ivan, naught from ten so far, but seven to four to get off the mark today. The very differently profiled Sam McGee, nine to four, five to one barometer, smooth player, also fives. Twelve to one, Jimmy Chu, Pecos AA, Ottazini, 18 to one, 22 to one, Ring Duffer and Harry Romeo, at 33 to 1, 40 to 1, Cosmo Renfro, Wingat Warrior 100 to 1, with not in it to win it, and Champagne Gallopin is 150 with 200 to 1 bar. It's a very good afternoon to Bernard Condren at Dan Royal. Thank you very much indeed, Dunkers. That's a happy Christmas to everyone. Festive greetings here from Down Royal, the third of the Irish meetings on Racing TV Extra this afternoon. The first of seven races will be getting underway here at 11.40 a.m. in just a few minutes' time. It's a, the first of three hurdle races on the card as well. We've got two maiden hurdles, maiden hurdle over two and a half miles, featuring Ivan, who brings in a high level of form here for trainer Ray Cody. The second race on the card then is an auction maiden run over two miles and one furlong and that will feature the return of the Gordon Elliott Mel Monroe who will be making her hurdling debut having run a nice race in a bumper at Galway on her first start um, under rules having won a point point earlier this year. The third race over hurdles then is a race the opportunity um, hurdle sponsored by Adair Manor and JP McManus, Vox LaBelle um, for Elizabeth Doyle and John Shinnick um, will be bidding to arrest uh, a frustrating sequence of placed efforts in some more competitive races than this. The first of our races over fences then will be at 1.23 and this is the beginner's chase featuring the chasing debut of Chavez for Willie Mullins and Elliot Ogren. Chavez, a Malcolm Denmark horse who was formerly with Paul Nichols and has now made his way across the Irish Sea to Close Sutton and that beginner's chase had been won by very some very smart horses in the past. The second of our chases on the card is a handicap chase over two and a half miles featuring the Jim Draper trained Know the Game, Jamie Codd taking the mount aboard the son of Calafay who has recorded a, a win already this season and he's stepping down in trip today. The Hunter's Chase sees um, the return of Vosselet for local trainer David Christie. Barry O'Neill is in the plate and his path to victory has been eased somewhat by um, the withdrawal or the, the non-runner now of Brain Power who sadly has been off his feet this morning. And the final race on the card is the bumper. That'll be at 3.08. Um, Faulty will be the favourite there for Noel Mead and um, jockey Pat Taff. So runners are down at the start for the first of our seven races this afternoon and this is the Irish National Hunt Stallion owners EBF Maiden Hurdle Ivan is the favourite here for Ray Cody and Niall Moore 15 to 8 at the moment Sam McGee making his rules debut and his hurdling debut for Henry de Bromhead, his second favourite at 2-1. to one. Barometer is fives, as is Smooth Player. Jimmy Shu Pekka's A is 14s, Ottazini 18s, and it's 25-1 to one and bigger the rest. Interesting contest here to get the card underway. This race actually was won last year by Jerry Colomb from the Gordon Elliott Yard, who is the odds-on favourite for the Faheen Novices Chase at Limerick, the Greek Braid 1 down in Limerick today. The race has been won by some very smart performers over the year. And Ivan represents Ray Cody and probably brings the strongest level of form into this contest as well. He was last seen at Clonmel at, um, about three weeks ago when he was second behind Santonito. Prior to that... He had been placed in a grade three novices hurdle, again on heavy ground behind Chantreuse. He also has some very good form in the book behind the likes of Manella Crooner and Eric Bloodaxe as well. So Ivan, if he can run to form and given any normal level of improvement, should go close. Well, in, in reality, he should be hitting the back of the net today. He's horse number four. Niall Moore's in the saddle. Sam McGee, we mentioned him a few moments ago, makes his 
debut here this afternoon for Henry de Bromhead. He is a five-year-old. He was a graduate of the Goffs Punchestown Sale back in April. He now sports the colours of Roger Brookhouse. He's a son of Jetaway, a young stallion who has been doing particularly well with his first few crops on the track. Sire of the likes of Brandy Love, among others. This fellow making his rules debut here having been a winner of a point-to-point -point at Tattersall's Farm back in April. Gordon Elliott has a good record in this contest, of course, trainer of Jerry Colomb. He sends out Smooth Player, of course, number two for Sam Ewing. So the horses are taking the final turn before calling them in. And our commentator here at Dan Royal is James Griffin, who will call the first of seven races here on St. Stephen's Day. We have reached post time. Starter yet to take to the rostrum. So the low line sun possibly causing a issue before our first, causing a very minor delay before we are underway. Jockey Sam Ewing pulls down his goggles. We must be nearing the off. Horses begin to walk towards the starter. Yellow flag is raised. And they're off, off and running on the opener in the Boxing Day card here at Den Royal and a cheer from the crowds for the INH stallion owners EBF Maiden Hurdle and Wee Jerry sent on into the lead to in second place Ivan on the outside of in it, now in it to win it and smooth player. Outside of it and moving forward is Jimmy Shu Pecco. Outside of Ivan races Sam McGee. Widest of all as they begin the run into the home straight is Rowdy Romeo but Wee Jerry to Jimmy Shu Pecco. Smooth player, now in it to win it, Ivan and Sam McGee and Rowdy Romeo. Then behind that is Barometer on the inside of Ottazini and Ring Dufferin as they meet their first obstacle. And Wee Jerry with the lead. And a mistake there by Otto Zini jumps into Barrow Meter. And a little bit of damage done to Champagne Gallopin. And likewise, the back marker Wing Gap Warrior with a concertina effect as they begin the descent towards the stands with us to bring them up towards the judge. And Wee Jerry to Rowdy Romeo, Jimmy Shu Pecco. Then comes Smooth Player on the inside. Outside of it in the pink and black is now in it to win it. And Sam McGee in the pale colours, Otto Zini and Ring Dufferin, Ivan and Barrowmeter. Wee Jerry, not great over it. And an unseat out the back by Champagne Gallopin. And Wing Gap Warriors pushed away from the, on the landing side. At what will be the last for the circuit to go is Wee Jerry. And having a good look out the back, both Cosmo Renfro, who gets a reminder likewise for Wing Gap Warrior. Up in front of the crowds with a circuit to go. And Wee Jerry leads the field to in second place, Rowdy Romeo, Jimmy Shu, Pecco. Then Smooth Player now in it to win it. And Sam McGee and Ivan Barrowmeter. Otto Zini on the inside of Ring Dufferin. The Belmont boys lock down Daisy, do as you're told, and Cosmo Renfro. And the back markers, Wing Gap Warriors. They race away from the main enclosure. And Wee Jerry still with the lead to Jimmy Shu, Pecco on the inside of the quartered colours. Outside of it is Rowdy Romeo. Then comes 
the red and white back on the inside a smooth player Ivan and Sam McGee and now in it to win it Otto Zini ring Dufferin the Belmont boys I'm still get, receiving re, a reminders. Wing Gap Warrior. Lockdown Daisy's just in front of it with Do's You're Told and Cosmo Renfro. So down towards the next hurdle that will bring them towards the back straight inside the final mile and a half. And Wee Jerry still with the lead. To in second, Jimmy Shu Pecco, Rowdy Romeo. And then in fourth is Ivan and Smooth Player. Sam McGee and now in it to win it. And Barrow Meter. And behind, now in it to win it is Otto Zini, Ring Dufferin, the Belmont boys, Lockdown Daisy, Wing Gap Warrior, and do as you're told, and the back marker is Cosmo Renfro. There's the field stream out over the hurdle down the back straight, and we Jerry, still with the lead, to in second place. On the outside of it, and getting a little bit closer, is Rowdy Romeo, Jimmy Shupeco and Ivan in fourth. In fifth place is Barrow Meter and company with Sam McGee, smooth players under pressure, Otto Zini's moving forward, then Ring Dufferin, and now in it to win it, and the Belmont boys, concentrating on the front half dozen. It's Wee Jerry, Rowdy Romeo, and Jimmy Shupeco and Ivan. Then comes Barometer and Sam McGee. In seventh place is Otto Zini and Ring Dufferin as they make the long run towards the next hurdle. And Wee Jerry by half a length to Rowdy Romeo, Jimmy Shupeco. Then comes Ivan, Barometer, and behind Barometer is Sam McGee, Otto Zini in the mauve and yellow for the lovely ladies' partnership, and then Ring Dufferin. Now in it to win it, and the Belmont boys attaching herself on to the leading group. But Wee Jerry, still with the lead to Rowdy Romeo, travels strongly and gets it even closer to the long-time leader, to Jimmy Shupeco, Ivan, Sam McGee and Barometer on the inside, Otto Zini, under pressure, Ring Dufferin, the Belmont boys, and then now in it to win it, but Wee Jerry by a neck, to Rowdy Romeo, Jimmy Shupeco, and then Sam McGee, Otto Zini, Barometer, Ring Dufferin, the Belmont boys, and now in it to win it, as they head towards the final five furlongs. And on the outside, Dylan Maxwell and Rowdy Romeo loom large on the outside of Wee Jerry and Garod Bruder. In third is Ben Harvey. He's now split in the leading pair. Jimmy Shupeco, Sam McGee, Barrow Meter, Ivan and Otto Zini. Ringed off from the Belmont boys and now in it to win it. They have three hurdles to jump and they swing into the home straight. And hitting the front for the first time a new leader. Jimmy Shupeco, Rowdy Romeo, Ivan, Sam McGee and Otto Zini, Barrow Meter. As they head towards the final three furlongs and a faller there, Barrow Meter, bringing down Wee Jerry, interfering with both now in it to win it, and the Belmont boys, but Jimmy Shupeco, two in second is on the outside, Rowdy Romeo in third with the red cap, Ivan who's tra travelling strongly, but outside of it likewise, Sam McGee, and Jimmy Shupeco to Sam McGee, Rowdy Romeo, Ivan getting a dream run up the inside, and Sam McGee and Rowdy Romeo is trying to get back with the leading pair, which is Sam McGee and Jimmy Shupeco, Ivan up the inside, Rowdy Romeo and Otto Zini at the final hurdle, and Jimmy Shupeco, Sam McGee and Ivan, he's getting a dream run up the inside, and Ivan hits the front to Jimmy Shupeco, Sam McGee, Otto Zini, and inside the final 100 yards, Ivan, Jimmy Shupeco, Sam McGee, inside the final 50, Ivan scores on Boxing Day for Niall Moore. Jimmy Shupeco, Sam McGee, Otto Zini ran a lovely race, then comes Rowdy Romeo, and behind that is Ring Dufferin, and now in it to win it, the Belmont boys. Great finish to the opening contest of the day here at Dan Royal on St. Stephen's Day. The winner of the Irish National Hunt Stallion owner's EBF maiden hurdle is number four, Ivan Niall Moore and Ray Cody Ivan. Justifying two to one favouritism and has been beautifully ridden in this contest doing what was needed. Um, the most experienced horse in the race as well, the son of Yates, who brought some high-class form into the contest, having been second in a, a Grade 3 novices event at Clonmel back in February and had had a nice warm-up effort back at Clonmel um, just 20 days ago as well. You've got a feel for the likes of Wee Jerry, who travelled really kindly throughout before being brought down three flights of hurdles from home. Lovely effort as well from the placed horses, including Sam McGee and also Jimmy Chu Pecco as well. Sam McGee, who was running a lovely first race um, on the race course proper and a first run for Henry de Bromhead as well, having been bought um, in April after a win in a five-year-old point-to-point at Tattersall's farm. Sam McGee is definitely a horse to be looking out for in the future. And Jimmy Shu Pecco has also run a fine race as well, having his um, hurdling debut here 
having run two okay races in bumpers as well. But Ivan, who is um, winning here, and it was, it, was, it was certainly not before time as well, Ivan has taken victory in the first of our seven races here for trainer Ray Cody and jockey Niall Moore. Racing TV's social media channels are always at your fingertips wherever you are. Watch the day's big races again and join the debate. Read tips from the experts and catch up with the latest breaking news. Enjoy highlights from the channel and expert insight that you might have missed. Make sure you stay in the know by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Stay ahead of the pack. Follow Racing TV on social media today. So we're underway, and the first race of three meetings in Ireland today went to Ivan, who is off the mark. After plenty of experience, he just needed to get out and do it, and do it he did, getting a dream run up the inside. Didn't look likely for all of it, but the two-to-one favourite justifies favouritism, albeit a marked drifter from the early prices. Nile Moore, the winning jockey. Ray Cody, the winning trainer. Mrs A. Brislin, the winning owner. Second, Jimmy Chu Pecos, a really big run in second, 11 to one. Third, Sam McGee, plenty to work on from that. Nine to four, back in third. Over we go to Leopardstown for the first race of the day. This is an intriguing maiden hurdle and plenty to pick over. It's for four-year-olds. There'll be five in a few days. It's the All About Sunday maiden hurdle. And in shot there at the moment, I think that could be number 16, Parmenian, who is a fascinating contender here. First run for Willie Mullins, having taken a race at Crayon over a mile and three on the flat for his only run in France but let's go through the runners and riders. For our first, number one after the rules, Simon Torrens for Emmett Mullins, a big price. Number two, battle it out in the same ownership. Charlie O'Dwyer claims the seven for Father Connor. Sec uh, third, num third, number three, Bears Hug. Alan King claims the seven for Adrian Sexton. Four, Beaumont, Darrow O'Keefe for Henry de Bromhead. Five, Chiefs Kingdom, Daryl Jacob riding in Ireland today for Paul Nolan. Number six, Diverge, Danny Mullins riding for Willie Mullins. Seven, Foxfire Glow. Uh, Mark Walsh for Gordon Elliott. Eight, Gentleman Joe. Michael O'Sullivan claiming five for Henry de Bromhead. Nine, the hurdling debutant high definition. High class or high enough class on the flat. Now tries a different thing. JJ Slevin riding his hurdling debut for Joseph O'Brien. Number 10, Importateur Ian Power for Alan McIntyre. Number 11, Jump the Shark, Luke Dempsey for Gavin Cromwell. 12, we've already bought you leading flame, being a non-runner in this. 13, Make the Plan, James Duggan claims seven for Oliver McKeon. 14, Natural Ability, Peter John Carberry rides for Tony Martin. 15, On My Bike, Keith Donoghue the jockey, Gavin Cromwell the trainer. So that's over half of the field for our opener. Parminian is number 16, and we'll touch on him in just a second. But let's head back to Dan Royal for some winning reaction with Bernard. Ivan has recorded his first success, and it's not before time. Niall Moore riding the winner for trainer Ray Cody. Niall, that was a, a long time coming from Ivan. He brought the best level of form into the contest. Um, what were your instructions going out? Actually, Ray kept it very simple. He said, just jump him off in the first four and five. And uh, he said he'd travel away from me and all. 
and looking at his form, like he will stay, he stays further, like, so I said, when I was coming down to say, he looked like he was in trouble, but once I gave him a squeeze, away he went again, he just quickened away, he showed his class there again, so look, he's a, he's a nice horse for the boys to have, and they duly deserve one like him, they do a great job there, and look, I'm delighted to ride a winner for him, it's great. Forgive me now, was this your first time riding this fellow in a race? Yeah, this is my first ride on him in the race, and, uh, yeah, look, sure, uh, yeah, no, he's... A lovely ride to get, and um, a few lads in the yard were great. Owen O'Brien comes into where I ride out in Philip Fenton's, and he was great. He rode the horse a few times, and he told me what he's like and all, and it was a great help, so, yeah. What do you think, I know it's probably more of a question for the trainer, but what do you think, where would you see him going next? I can imagine he'd go for a good handicap somewhere, or maybe he might go back for a grade two somewhere. This horse is a lot of class. I'm sure if he steps him up and trip again, he'd be better again. I'm sure he'll only improve. So, yeah, I'd imagine we'll leave it up to Ray anyway. He does a good job with him, so. And listen, one ride today as well. Not, not a bad Christmas present, really. One ride and it's a winner. No, I actually, I actually got a spare in the opportunity. So I have a, a Kalanisi dove for Seamus Fahey. So, yeah, sure, hopefully she can run a race as well. Not as uh, a long way up for her. So it's just grand to get two rides out of it anyway, so. Well done, Niall. Very best of luck later on as well. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Well, welcome back to Leopardstown, where, as you can see, the horses are making their way down to the start for our first race here on St. Stephen's Day. It's the All About Sunday Maiden Hurdle, and we've got a red-hot favourite here in the shape of number 16, Parmenion, trained by Willie Mullins and the mount of Paul Townend. Twelve months ago, of course, in this very same race, Stateman was a warm order for those connections, but he crashed out two from home. Hasn't really looked back since then. And Parmenion is... A warm order here, as I say, to make the perfect start to life in Ireland. Kate Harrington alongside me. Kate, we'll come to your runner in just a second, Jatara, but how fearful are you of what Parmenion might be? Yes, he ha is the talking horse. Um, it was about two weeks ago I heard about um, this Joe Donnelly horse that was going for the four-year-old maiden hurdle um, at Leopardstown at Christmas time. And um, you know he is a short five price favourite from um, all the talk that's been going around the country about him so it'll be interesting to see if um, he can pull it off on his race course um, debut here in Ireland um, albeit he did win um, over in France um, last uh, springtime but it is interesting enough the form of that race and um, the second uh, has joined the Gordon Elliott yard and he has been well beaten on a number of occasions and the third has yet to win a race since as well so shade of what's on about Parmenion there he is I see the jockeys wearing black armbands I believe that is as a result of the sad passing of Dave Fox's wife Dave who retired a few years ago but would have been valet for a lot of the lads and the family business still going strong with his lads looking after it now paul and rob and our condolences to the foxes uh, hurdle number one in the home straight will be a no great shock here with the sunshine they're going to miss out the hurdle in the straight so it's going to be a long run to what will be their first and also a long run in from what will now be their last kate how much do you think that changes the dynamic of this race well it um, potentially will play into the likes of um, the high class flat horse high definitions um, chances here today and um, he is a very very interesting recruit for the Joseph O'Brien yard of course bought at the horse and training sale at Newmarket um, bought out um, outright by Mr. John Magner for 350,000 guineas. Um, Mr. Tabor and uh, Mrs. Smith were in the partnership. It does look like he actually has a colour change to what is actually in our card. He looks to seem to be running in the, the Derek, Derek Smith, Smith colours, colours yeah. um, in on my race card and um, on Racing Post. It is down to be solely owned by Mrs. John Magner. Um, so I might be. Um, my um, sources of what I just said might be wrong in that respect after seeing him now in this colour change. One can only imagine he didn't make his reserve at the sales anyway. High definition is first time out for Joseph O'Brien today. Kate, what about Jatara? Smashing mare who won well at Navin last time. 
How do you see her chance? Yes, she's a really, really nice filly. She's been on the improve. Um, she was a good listed bumper winner the last day. And um, albeit today, she did win a two and a half mile maiden her, her hurdle, or bumper, sorry, I should say, um, on her race course debut. But um, she has been um, getting a bit more speed in her life um, um, as of late. Her work has improved. She's a lot, lot sharper and she jumps very well. Touch wood. <laughs> OK, we wish you well with her. Jack Kennedy, significant booking as well for the Harringtons here in our first race of the day. It's the All About Sunday Maiden Hurdle Christmas Festival about to get underway. Off and racing in the opener, the All About Sunday Maiden Hurdle for four-year-olds. And as they head up the straight towards the first flight, Close up in the centre, Gentleman Joe, towards the near side, Jatara, bypassing the flight in the straight as they come on up in front of the enclosures. Jatara near side in the centre, in the purple and white is high definition. Gentleman Joe is right with them. Also close up is Privilege. The favourite, Parmenian, is towards the inside. They're tracked in the early stages by Bo Moore on the rail in the stripes. Is Diverge between horses, the grey is Final Fantasy as they head to the turn to bring them away from the stands and on to flight number two. High definition leads with Privilege close up, Jatara the outside. Tracking them on the inner is Parmenian. Close up behind them in pink, white and black is Gentleman Joe as they clear flight number two. High definition reach for it. A few mistakes back in the field including Slonog of Galair as they head on to the third. Continuing away from the stands, high definition with Gentleman Joe up alongside on the outside, Jatara. Privilege is right with them, Parmenian in yellow and black is towards the inner. And their track to the turn that brings them to the back straight by Diverge. Making the turn with a good run now before they reach flight number four. And high definition has gone on from Parmenian, Jatara is towards the outside. Close up in fourth position at this stage is Gentleman Joe and they're followed by on the inside, Divulge with Privilege alongside, a couple of lengths then, to Bo Moore with Sign from Above, and the grey Final Fantasy is next. Final Fantasy followed at this stage by Star Harbour, and behind Star Harbour is Make the Plan. As they begin the run down the far side, approaching the first of three flights in the back straight, high definition leads narrowly to Jetara. They're about four lengths clear. Parmenian is back in third, Gentleman Joe fourth. On the outside, Privilege as they clear that flight and head on to the halfway stage. Not much to choose between the leading pair. High definition with the orange and black on the outside of Jetara. Parmenian taking closer order towards the inside is a close up third. Less than two lengths away then to Gentleman Joe. Divulges towards the inside and Bowmore towards the outer. Between them is Privilege as they clear the fourth last flight and continue down the back straight. High definition leads, goes on by over a length, Parmenian second. Jatara still close up on the outside of Gentleman Joe. Behind them is Divulge with Privilege and Bo Moore. And just behind them is Sign from Above as they jump to third last flight, nearing the end of the back straight. High definition leads, Parmenian. Jatara improves again up on the outside to regain second spot. Parmenian now third. And they're followed across by Gentleman Joe tracking the leading group. Behind them on the inside is Divulge. Bo Moore is right with them. Trying to make headway behind them in pink colours is Sign from Above as they turn. Less than half a mile to race and two flights to jump. High definition. Jatara pushed along in second. And they're chased on the approach to the second last flight by Parmenian the inside. Bo Moore up on the outer. As they jump to second last. High definition led from in second Jatara. Bo Moore the outside, Parmenian driven along in fourth and chasing them in fifth spot is Sign from above, trying to stay on in the stripes behind them is Divulge. But as they straighten up, long run in with the flight in the straight being omitted, high definition leads from Jatara trying to challenge on the outside is Bo Moore, Parmenian over towards the inner but high definition with the call as they head to the furlong pole and bypassing the final flight, high definition out in front. Jatara second, Parmenian on the inside in third, signed from above four and they're ahead of Bowmore with less than a furlong to race, high definition in JJ Slevin out in front. Jatara second, Parmenian third as they go to the line, high definition, Classy on the flat makes the winning start over Earls for Joseph O'Brien and JJ Slevin wins the opener in good style from Jataria. Parmenian second, signed from above third, clear, signed from above fourth, clear of Bowmore in fifth.
Well, 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 high definition, who was a bit of a talking horse during his flat career, didn't really deliver upon his early promise, but have we perhaps just found that hurling could be the making of him, Kate? He's made a winning debut here over flights at odds of 9-2. to two. We'll come to your filly in a second, Jataro, who's run really well, but thoughts on what High Definition did? Yes, he's done this really, really well, um, Gary. He's a classy, classy uh, flat horse, and he's done it well. You know, albeit he's put in a few novice mistakes, JJ7 has been good and positive on him the whole way. He's run around a little bit at times in front of his hurdles, but, you know, all he's going to do is improve from that, and uh, he's put the race to bed um, from the turning out of the back where they come to what would it should have been their second last was their last. I think things might have helped Jatara a little bit more if we had the last in, but um, he's done things really nicely um, and uh, he's an exciting horse going forward. Uh, the way he's run through the line there, you could even see the way JJ was so, so positive on him, you could even see him stepping up and trip in time. Yes, and plenty of room for improvement with his jumping as well. He went out to his right at quite a few hurdles, and I thought he did your filly no favours, Kate, for much of the journey, the way he was just edging in that direction. Overall, how pleased are you by Jatara's performance? Yeah, I thought she didn't. She was a bit more novice than I thought she was going to be um, over her hurdles at times. But, uh, you know, I love the way she's run the whole way to the line um, up this home straight. And uh, she's just jumped into, bumped into a really, really classy flat horse. If she ran against him on the flat, I would say she wouldn't be mapped. So she's won an absolute great race. And uh, then we have the Willie Mullins uh, Paramonium, to the talking horse, uh, back in third and a very good run from Sign from Above from the Peter Fahiar back and forth. Sign from Above certainly has run well, but Parmenion will, I suppose you'd be, you'd have to say, Kate, be a disappointment to those who were with him today. Was there any obvious excuse? He seemed to have a nice run round on the inside. Just then, when the front two went for home on the run to what was eventually the final hurdle with the one in the straight being taken out. He just seemed to get caught a bit flat-footed. Yes, he did. And, uh, you know, I, he was a little bit disappointing. In the early part of the race, he was um, keen in Paul Townend's hand. I just wondered, wonder, did he run a little bit with the gas out uh, for Paul? And he's um, been a long way, way off the track and um, he might have just got tired. I'm sure whatever he did this does today, he'll improve from it. Um, and, you know, he did have the nice run round, as you said. Um, high definition was jumping out to the right and into Jatara most of the way and uh, didn't help her chances whereas Paul Townend got a dream run down the inside when he was jumping out to his right. So the winner returns 9-2 to two, joint second favourite. I think he went off the same price as Jatara in the end. In the order of the first three it was pretty much maintained all the way round. Sign from above was the one who made up a bit of ground to finish on their heels in fourth position and given that it's hard to see any clouds in the sky, I'd imagine that last hurdle is going to be out for the next and might well be the whole afternoon. One time derby favourite, High Definition, has made a successful hurdling debut. He's broken his maiden at the first attempt in this sphere, 9-2 to two under JJ Slevin for Joseph O'Brien and Mrs John Magnia. Incredible to think he was second in the Tattersall's Gold Cup as recently as May of this year. Second, Jatara, 9-2. to two. Third, Parmenian, 5-4 to four on favourite. Was in a perfect position to strike, but just looked flat-footed when push came to shove. Racing TV members won't miss a second of the action on RacingTV.com with dedicated live streams from every race course with Racing TV Extra. Missed a race? Every replay can be found on RacingTV.com alongside an unrivaled archive of interviews and features. You can even register for your next free race day through the Racing TV Club, including the weekend ticket. Make the most of your Racing TV membership on RacingTV.com today. There is the scene in Ulster. Up we go to Dam Royal for their second race on the card. And Gordon Elliott has runners up and down the country across both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. And this is one of the short ones, Mel Monroe. 
who is uh, heading down. Not in shot, that is number three. He's a bit further down the pecking order in here. That's Black Bamboo, who is the second favourite. 13 to 8, Mel Monroe for the Connolly's Red Mills Irish EBF auction maiden hurdle over two miles and a furlong. Black Bamboo, 11 to 4, Molly's Glory, 100 to 30, and on the drift. 8 to 1, Blue Donfer, if we were a rich man, if I were a rich man, I should say, 8 to 1. Uh, Max Express, 50 to 1, with Skull Duggery. With seven going to post, it's back to Bernard. So runners arriving down at the two mile one furlong start here at Dan Royal ahead of our second race on the car due off at 12.13 p.m. This is the Connolly's Red Mills Irish EBF auction maiden hurdle. This race restricted to horses that cost 45,000 euros or less um, when they were sold at the store sales. It's has provided over the years plenty of winnable opportunities as well for some smart horses who didn't actually cost a fortune when they were sold at the sales. And the favourite here is number six, Mel Monroe, for the Gordon Elliott Sam Ewing partnership. Sam Ewing has been really impressing great scores on both sides of the Irish Sea this season. And with the departure of Davy Russell, from the jockey ranks as well, there will be even more opportunities at Gordon Elliott's yard and indeed many other yards as well for Sam Ewing, who is the son, of course, of Warren Ewing, one of the, the leading point-to-point -point trainers in the country, the man most famous for having produced the likes of Constitution Hill and Bobsworth. Mel Mulroe is the interesting one here. She's number six there in your screen to the right, the black and white colours. A daughter of Walk in the Park. She's only had two starts so far in her life. She was a winner off a point to point for Harley Dunn down at Monks Grange in County Wexford back in March, winning by 10 lengths on that occasion. She went to the sales thereafter and was acquired by KTDA Racing, who've campaigned some very smart mares over the last number of years, including the likes of Mount Ida. Mel Monroe then made her track debut in her first run for Gordon Elliott's Colin Traw Stables at Galway in a bumper at the end of October. And she was denied in the closing stages by my lucky Colleen. And um, Mel Monroe herself on that occasion was sent off the five to six favorite, just a little bit of tail flashing in the closing stages. And now she's having her third career start and making her debut over hurdles here this afternoon. Black Bamboo is another of the well-fancied ones here for Cork trainer John Joseph Murphy. Black Bamboo is a five-year-old by fame and glory. And he was most recently seen at Cheltenham's November meeting when well beaten behind gentle slopes. Prior to that, he was a winner of a bumper at Limerick. And that was in February of this year, last season. Molly's Glory. Number seven from Michael Grassick has Finney and Maguire in the saddle. Molly's Glory in the red colours, the yellow cap. Had a nice start recently over hurdles down at Thurless. Indeed, both her starts over hurdles so far. So they're coming into line. James Griffin will be calling them home. And the favourite is Mel Monroe for Gordon Elliott. And Samuel, actually, it looks like they're going to take another turn here, a bit like they did ahead of a first race as well. It's also worth mentioning horse number one, Blue Denfer, in the colours of Manair and Swed. Stuart Crawford and Ben Crawford, the brothers from Larne. Stuart Crawford actually trained the winner of this race last year, O'Toole, who's turned out to be quite a, a smart handicap hurdler, Chase Prospect. And Blue Denfer is not without his chance here. But the favourite is Mel Monroe for Gordon Elliott and Sam Ewing. It looks time, like this time they're going to jump off. Here's James Griffin. One or two of them just a little bit eager to get off and running. Yellow flag still raised.
who in the come for the third time. And they're off. Off and running for our second race, the Connolly's Red Mills Irish EBF auction maiden hurdle. Seven facing the starter. And Molly's Glory on the outside of If I Were a Rich Man, and then Max Express. And then behind on the inside is Bleu d'Enfer. Outside of it is Mel Monroe, Skullduggery, and the back marker is Black Bamboo. So quickly on to flight number two. And our leader on the inside, If I Were a Rich Man, to Molly's Glory. And then Max Express, Bleu d'Enfer, Skullduggery, Mel Monroe. And on the inside along the rail is Black Bamboo, so up in front of the judge with a circuit to race, and If I Were a Rich Man, on the inside by a length, to Molly's Glory, Blood on Fair, outside of it in the sheepskin noseband is Max Express, who's running a little bit keen, and then Skullduggery, and along the rail, Black Bamboo, and in between, Mel Monroe. So away from the stands they race. Two hurdles on this section of the track, and If I Were a Rich Man, to Molly's Glory, Blood on Fair, and then Max Express, Skullduggery, Black Bamboo, and Mel Monroe. So on they race and over the road crossing and if I wear rich man in the hands of James O'Sullivan to a second, Finney Maguire riding Molly's glory, Ben Crawford in the two-tone green, the blue Don Fair, Connor Smithers, the two shades of blue, and then comes the pale colours, Adam Feeney and Black Bamboo and Skullduggery, and the colours of Irish Grand National winner Lord Lariat, ridden today by Michael Malloy and the back marker Mel Monroe, Sam Ewing. Down the back straight they turn, and if I were a rich man by a length and a quarter, to Molly's glory, half a length back to on the inside, Blood on Fair, Max Express, by a head to Black Bamboo, as they have a long run now before they leave the ground once again. Five hurdles already jumped, and if I were a rich man, still by a length and a half to two lengths, to Molly's glory, Blood on Fair on the inside, Max Express, Blam Black Bamboo, and Skullduggery, Mel Monroe as they continue the long run to the next, and if I were a rich man. For the Capital Racing Syndicate, two in second place, Aidan Gleeson's Molly, Molly's Glory, then comes the Simon Muneer and Isaac Suedo and Blood on Fair, and then the Flyer Syndicate's Max, Max Express, and then Mrs John Murphy's Black Bamboo, and in behind is Pat Blake's and PJ Casey's Skullduggery, and the KTA's Mel Monroe, but if I were a rich man, Molly's Glory and Blood on Fair. The field is seven, covered by about six lengths, and if I were a rich man, heading towards the final seven furlongs, so well within the last mile, the Connolly's Red Mills Irish EBF auction maiden hurdle, and if I were a rich man, let loose on the front end to Molly's Glory, Blood on Fair, Max Express, Skullduggery, Black Bamboo, and Mel Monroe. But if I were a rich man, and Molly's Glory, to Blood on Fair, Max Express, then Black Bamboo, and Skullduggery, and Mel Monroe, in seventh, and looking on at the moment, and not just completely carrying jockey Sam Ewing on the bridle, but if I wear rich man, travels well to Molly's glory likewise. Blood on fair, saves ground on the inside. Max Express, under pressure and strong pressures. Mel Monroe, still in last place. Skullduggery and Black Bamboo as they head towards the home turn. And if I wear rich man, Molly's glory, Blood on fair, Max Express, Black Bamboo. And then Mel Monroe's just gone by Skullduggery, but still the field of seven now covered by about five lengths. And if I wear rich man by half a length to Molly's glory on the outside, on the inside, Blood on Fair, Max Express, Mel Monroe, slightly guessed to that and then jumped into the back of both Blood on Fair and Black Bamboo. But our leader, if I wear a rich man, now challenged on the outside by Molly's Glory, Blood on Fair, switch from the inside to three wide. Max Express, Mel Monroe, Black Bamboo and Skullduggery over the road crossing, two to jump in our second race of the day. And if I wear rich man, Molly's Glory, Blue Don Fair, Mel Monroe, Black Bamboo, Max Express, Skullduggery over the second last mistake by Blue Don Fair. If I wear rich man, Molly's Glory, Black Bamboo, Mel Monroe, Max Express down towards the last. If I wear rich man, Molly's Glory, not great, better jump if I wear rich man. If I wear rich man, Molly's Glory, Black Bamboo, Mel, Mo Mel Monroe inside the final hundred. And if I wear rich man, scoops away from trainer Paul Nolan. If I wear rich man, scores second Molly's Glory, third. Black Bamboo, Mel Monroe, then Blood on Fair, Max Express and Skullduggery. If I Were a Rich Man takes the second race at Down Royal and is off the mark over hurdles and indeed in his career as well. 10 to 1 under James O'Sullivan claiming the five for Paul Nolan. Had set the pace throughout. They were all lining up to have a crack at him and your eye was very much drawn at this point to Blue Don Fur as they were coming round the home turn. Alas, errant jumping at the second loss is probably cost him a bit of a chance, albeit that the winning margin suggests that 
if I were a rich man, would have been very hard to pass, even if him or Molly's Glory had winged the second, last and last, respectively. The uh, Molly's Glory got it all wrong there and has plugged on ultimately. But if I were a rich man who had set the fractions under Jimmy O'Sullivan, was away and gone. And he showed that win at Clonmel was no fluke. 100 to one third at Clonmel and a winner today at Dam Royal. So that was the second race at Down Roll, if I were a rich man getting off the mark over hurdles, as did high definition at Leopard Sound on his first go. High class flat horse, potentially high class hurdler. Here's some winning reaction. Joseph O'Brien here at Leopardstown as High Definition makes a winning start in the opener over hurdles. Joseph, I'm sure thrilled to see him win like that. Tell us a little bit about the background of how you got the horse. He was obviously there to be bought at the sales, was he? Yeah, he was, uh, uh, Gary, and um, um, I suppose uh, we're very lucky to, to get him. Uh, he was a very talented flat horse, and, um, you know, Dad and, and everyone in the team were, were, were confident that, you know, he had the, he had the right um, attributes to potentially make it as a, as a dual-purpose horse in the future, and um, big good-looking horse. Um, Classy, clear wind that he's versatile ground, ground wise, and I'm um, very pleased with his hurling debut today. He was often maligned the horse after, I suppose, looking so promising as a juvenile. Was there always a feeling there could be a bit more in there? Do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, uh, yeah, I think he, he, he ran very well in an awful lot of big races and he didn't win a lot, but he ran very well and held his form consistently well at the top level. He obviously had a very high rating of, I think he, he was rated 119 at one stage, so so a very classy horse and um, yeah, nice to see him get a good start to hurling today. How did his schooling gone, Charles? So did you come here confident or more hopeful today? No, we, we were pleased with uh, his schooling and uh, we hadn't really done a lot of galloping with him, but but he had a lot of schooling done, and um, it wasn't ideal making the running on his on his hurl debut. Uh, but hopefully he will have uh, showed the benefit of, of that experience going forward. And he jumped very well on the whole. Uh, he jumped a bit right at one down the back, but when things got competitive, I thought he was very good over the last few, and uh, he seemed to be full of running going to the line. We saw on the flat he stayed pretty well and ran through the line really strong today as well. What's your feeling about distance? Could you see him stepping up maybe in time? Yeah, well, there's no doubt he's plenty of pace for two miles, but, you know, JJ uh, felt that he'd, he'd have no problem going further either if we wanted to do that. So I, I think um, I think anywhere between two and two and a half is probably fine for him. Good man. I presume you'll have a look maybe at the Dublin Racing Festival for his next one, will you? Yeah, something like that would be an obvious uh, target for him next. So, yeah, let's see how he comes through here, but something like that will be on the horizon. Superstar for a big week, Joseph, and you've got three chances left to come today, represented in both graded races with Nuzret and Midnight Run, and then embittered later on. How are you feeling about your prospects? Yeah, um, Nuzret goes into the, the, the juvenile with uh, a good chance, hopefully. Probably lacks a bit of experience compared to some of his rivals, but he's in good shape, and uh, we're hoping for a good run from him. Uh, Midnight Run won a grade two the last time in Punchestown, and... I guess he has all the experience. Um, he's a very solid horse, and you know, hopefully, he gives the gives the more fancied runners a run for their money. And uh, a very solid horse, and um, and he's been a star for us. And let's hope he gets at least some money today. And you got a few down at Limerick as well, I think. Have you? Yeah, we few in Limerick today. Um, probably Global Equity is the uh, is the uh, is the uh, more fancied one. Um, um, and we've a couple in Maiden Hurls of chances. Um, and uh, yeah, we're hoping they can run well. Um, it's heavy ground, heavy ground down there. Um, but yeah, nice to get a winner here, uh, Gary, today, and uh, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the week. Lovely. I presume home by the Lee would be the one perhaps you're most looking forward to here over the rest of the week. Yeah, absolutely. We have him in the in, in the three-mile hurl. Uh, he won very well the last day in Navin. Um, again, it's it's a step up. It's going to be a step up again, but we think he's in good shape, and he's certainly entitled to have a good crack at it. Looking forward to seeing him run. Great start, Joseph. Thanks for your time, Mullen. Thanks, Gary. He's got runners up and down the country, Joseph O'Brien, including realism in the next at Limerick, which is our first down at Limerick. You can see him there in the JP McManus, in the JP McManus silks. It's, he's not favourite, though. That goes to hurdling debutant. Uh, well, Biker was, but as Ludus is now backed in. Three to one, a very open affair to kick off the card. And it was three of them uh, fighting out for favouritism at the moment. Let's get to Fran and Lisa. Yes, you're very welcome to the first race of the day here at Limerick. What is a beautiful day now, the rain has cleared off. Lisa, what wins this? 
Yeah, it's a, there's plenty here lining up, uh, Fran, and obviously Ludus seems to be top in the market at the moment. Uh, Biker was uh, plenty of market supporter earlier on in the day for Charles Burns and uh, Philip Burns on board, but he's he actually, Biker, he's got good form in uh, on the flat in England, making his debut over Hurls, Fran. He's definitely an interesting type. He looked like he had plenty of size and scope about him in the parade ring as well, and I liked his attitude when he won at Windsor the last day. I thought he stuck to, to his task very gamely from the two furlong pole all the way to the finish line after making the run in so I can see they're lining he's like going to line up kind of prominent maybe just sit in behind the pace so interesting to see how he shapes very much so realism has been quite strong in the market high class rating on the flat if you like yet to win on the flat at one run over hurls he's behind uh, course Ludus at Cork yeah there's no doubt that he's got ability Fran he's obviously still a maiden on the flat but provided some really, really good uh, good displays on the flat in some high-class races as well. And if, if he can transfer that kind of level of form to here today, there's no doubt that he's the one to beat. Um, he just needs to show that he's as effective over jumps. He does indeed, yeah. Wide open contest. Just hearing that the third hurl will be admitted due to low-lying sun. Trainer Joseph Bryan had a winner already with an ex-high-class flat horse course. High definition, winning the first at Leopardstown. And realism on his flat form would set a good standard. He's just got to prove we can transfer that form to the jumps. Number seven, Paradise Lost, uh, Lisa, is, is an interesting horse to think with a future, uh, maybe not today, but a horse to watch. Yeah, he's definitely one to watch for Charles O'Brien. Burns making his debut. Midland Christmas Racing Festival. Nine flights to be jumped in the CJ Sheeran three-year-old maiden hurdle. And the first to show in front is Canzino and Daniel King as they make the run to the first. Being chased in second by stable companion Danza Della Luna with Corn Market in the yellow cap coming up towards the outside to go second as they come to this first flight. Canzino, Corn Market on the outside. In fact, that first flight being bypassed due to the low sun. Would have been nice to be told that, but uh, anyway, they make their way downhill towards the two flights in the straight, which will be the first two of eight of the jump, all told. And Canzino on the inside of Corn Market. They lead by about three to four lengths over Racing third on the inside is Ludus for Jordan Gainford with Danza de la Luna on that one's outer. Their length is so in front of Metamorpheus, who races on the inside of Scarbrook, with on the outside of Scarbrook is Bayou Bell with Realism in the white cap. Racing around mid division, followed by on the inside by Checker Square. So as they straighten up towards the first of the seven flights in all due to be jumped in this contest. And on the inside, it's the great Canzino. That have had a lengthy run to the first of the seven flights. Let's see how they jump it. Canzino just running around a little bit in the approach to the flight, but jumps it well enough, as indeed they all do. Corn Market races second on the outside as they come to flight number two. They're two to three lengths in front as they jump the second of jumping a third on the inside is Ludus in company with Danza de la Luna. They're for a length and a half back by Bayou Bell with Scarbrook on that one's inside. Realism, followed by Metamorpheus, and behind those races the favourite biker in the mostly white jacket with between those two is Checker Square. On the outside race Agarine and Paradise Lost in the back marker as they head out on the complete circuit is Chemdog. So making the right-handed swing to bring them towards the entrance to the back straight for the first time, at which they will have five flights to jump. And the lead is with Canzino, not much increase in the pace. Canzino still taking a little bit of a keen tug in front for Daniel King, but leads by half a length to Corn Market and Dearman Maloney in second. Length and a half then to Ludus, under Jordan Gainford, races third on the inside of Danza de la Luna and Philip Donovan. Length and a half then to Scarbrook, who's on the inside of both Bayou Bell and on the outside of that duo races Realism as they come to the first of the flights in the back straight. Behind Realism, who jumps that well on the outside, races Biker who's made of a place or two ahead of Metamorpheus, and behind Metamorpheus is A. Green, a length and a half in front of Checker Square as they jump the flight four from the finish. Bad mistake by Paradise Lost, drops that one to, drops that to one from the back of the field with only Chemdog behind it. So continuing the uphill run inside the final three quarters of a mile and jumping the final flight, what is effectively the final flight in the back straight, three flights in the finish. Canzino, the leader, stable companion Danza de la Luna moves up one from the outside with on that, the outside of those two continues to race Corn Market. Ludus races four on the inside. They're followed by Biker, who's continuing to make progress in company with Scarbrook. Agarin with Bayou Bell and Realism on the outside of that group. Very tightly bunched group, about eight or nine. Followed by Metamorpheus. Paradise Loss has made up the ground loss of that flight, but has 
Checker Square on its inside and Ken Dog, although the back marker still in touch as they continue the downhill run inside the final half mile and towards the two flights which await them in the straight. Wide open contest. Ludus moves up on the inside to join issue with Canzino. Danzella de Luna is a close third. Four on the inside race to Scarbrook. Realism come on the outside of Cornmark and followed then by Bayou Bell and Agarine. By a biker, the favourite might need a little bit of luck and running trapped in behind horses as they swing into the straight towards the two flights in it with and with less than a quarter of a mile to race. And on the inside, it's Ludus with the advantage from Scarborough coming there between horses. Danzel and Aluna on the outside. Behind those on the inside is Metamorphius with Biker. Realism travels on the outers a couple of the second last. And on the outside, Danzel and Aluna pecked on landing with Scarborough. Metamorphius tries to make a challenge between horses, but it's Ludus with the advantage as they race down towards the final flight. Ludus is going to jump at two to three lengths in front of Metamorphius in second. And racing down inside the final 150, it's Ludus out in front by a length and a half from Metamorphius. Paradise Lost stays on well, but Ludus wins it. From Paradise Lost, possibly second on the outside of Metamorphous, close with that placing, and they're followed in by Danzel and Luna and Biker. Ludus, an opening winner for Gordon Elliott and Jordan Gainford. Ludus had taken a big step forward from his first start at Navan over hurdles to his second at Cork, and from start two to three, he's taken the biggest step of all. 11 to four favourite scores under a fine ride from Jordan Gainford, and Gordon Elliott, with a plethora of runners across Ireland today, is on the board. It was his race to lose coming to the last by the looks of it. There were a few snapping at his heels and coming around the home turn, it was very difficult to tell exactly who was out of the reckoning. But while the last two weren't exactly fluent, that suggests that there's still plenty to work on with him because the talent's there and the engine's there, as it is with the second Paradise loss, who stayed on really nicely under Brian Cooper for Charles O'Brien. Uh, ultimately, the likes of Biker never really... Uh, never managed to get into contention under a waiting ride from Philip Burns. He was probably hampered by a loose horse as well. Um, but ultimately, it was Ludus who is off the mark for J Jordan Gainford and Gordon Elliott. That was Limerick. Let's get back to Dan Raw for some winning reaction. If I were a rich man, has done it very nicely on just his second start over hurdles, joined by James Nolan, brother of winning trainer Paul Nolan, and chief assistant as well that was a, a great result um really good performance just a second start over hurdles as well you must be delighted it was Bernard. yeah we're delighted with him because it's the first day it's nice to get a winner off your back as well you know what i mean for the week between leperstown and here and limerick and everything else and but once you once you get one winner on the board it takes the pressure off you you know um but uh, yeah good performance uh, uh, uh he's a free running sort and james gave him a lovely ride because he was allowed to slow it down in front himself there and fill him up um he's not a slow horse but uh, i thought he went to the line well and well and these kind of races, they're a nice opportunity as well for a smart horse who mightn't have cost an absolute fortune at the store sale. They're fantastic. They're fantastic. I mean, they're, and I, I, I don't know the stats on it, but there seems to be more this year as well. But they're brilliant. And the bonuses are involved in all as well there. And it gives everyone a chance. But they are in a great prize money. It's a fantastic uh, uh, plan. And it's, uh, it's, it's very important, those auction races, yeah. Well, listen, best of luck. Hopefully he'll be the first of many winners for the Nolan team over the festive period. Oh, that, no, no, I don't know about that. There's not enough for that. But anyway, it's one on the board. Anyway. Well done, James. Thanks a million. Thank you. Well done to Paul and James Nolan. They've got Anne Stand in this next maiden hurdle at Leperstown, although that would be a massive shock if he was to bring up the double. Willie Mullins holds a strong hand. Dark Raven, 11 to 10, to belie his massive layoff. 631 days off the track. He's making his hurdling debut today and is the shortest price of all. Viva De Vito has experience over hurdles, probably just needs to settle a bit. Three to one second favourite. Five to one, Dr. Bravo for Gordon Elliott, who just won the opener at Limerick with Ludus. Ulan Bato de Che, 13 to two. Clonshire River 14 to 1, 25 so to flow top speed, 33 to 1, don't stop the music, Cozone 40s, 50 to 1 a piece about Kilt Silano and Rich St. John, 80 to 1 Mulan West with 100 to 1 bar those and 21 going to post. Another short price favourite for Willie Mullins who holds a very strong hand in this. Anthony, thanks very much. Yes, there is Ulan Bator de Shea in shot and the favourite here in the Muneer and Suede colours will be seeing those on Nusrat in the Great Two Juvenile Hurdle later on. Kate, alongside me here. Kate, I know you feel Dark Raven is worth taking on here. The favourite in the first proved a little bit disappointing. This guy does have some questions to answer, doesn't he? After the long absence, it has to be injury related. There's no way that can be by design. 
No. And it's his hurdle debut, obviously. Yes, this is his hurdle debut. He, of course, he um, did win two um, smart four-year-old uh, bumpers. Uh, went back through the form of those races. Nothing spectacular has come out of any of those races. And I think there's a few more, maybe less exposed horses that have won so impressively some bumpers. One of them being Dr. Bravo. I was very taken by his performance at Fairy House um, at the Winter Festival. And he looks really well in the paddock beforehand. And you imagine whatever he did as over bumper in bumpers he's going to improve with a hurdle in front of him yes nice horse dr bravo jack kennedy in the plate to partner the runner-up chitara in our opening contest that was won by high definition anything else you could see getting involved here kate um, we, we touched on uh, the other Willie Mullins runner uh, via DeVito De um, in the pre in the parade ring beforehand. That was a nice run behind J uh, the smart Joey Machini of the Paul Nolan's yard, and uh, he was keen that day. He's got Keith Dunahue on board him today, and you can he, it is interesting to see that Keith is lining up on the rail in behind the market principles to get a bit of cover and get him switched off. Confirming that the hurdle in the straight is out once again here, and I'd imagine it's going to be a theme of the afternoon. So, very long run to the first and a very long run in from what is now the last. We're just coming up to post time. There's a few clouds coming over the Wicklow Mountains there. Hopefully they get in. <laughs> Not often we're looking for clouds, is it? Anyway, no. <laughs> here they come around the turn. And it looks as though Paul Tannen might well strike off in front Ooh, here. He just gave a kick, kick there, there, didn't he? Yes, he did. Mark I think Raven. he kicked out at um, Hullabator de Cass, the grey other uh, in the Rich Ritchie colours behind. He'll be interesting to see, Gary, what he did. He was very difficult uh, when he was making his debut for connections in the Cheltenham bumper when Rachel Blackmore rode him. I think the bit even came through his mouth that day and then disappointed again at Aintree. But he is interesting. Obviously shows a good bit at home. All right, then. Peter O'Hare will take up the story here on race number two. White flag is raised. Off and racing in the Thornton's Recycling Maiden Hurl over two miles, bypassing the flight in the straight, so just jumping six obstacles and disputing the early lead. Dark Raven, near side Mulan West. They share it with close up between horses. Little Twinkle Star, not far off them, it is Dr. Bravo. As they head on to past the stands, near side in black and green is Mulan West. Alongside is Little Twinkle Star. Dr. Bravo, over towards the inside, two shades of green, is the favourite Dark Raven. They're attracted in the early stages by Clonshire River towards the outside, So Day Flow. The two greys just behind these are Top Speed and Ulan Bator de Shea as they head to the turn that'll bring them to flight number two. Little Twinkle Star, Nile Prendergast has gone on, leads Mulan West. Dark Raven close up on the inside with, alongside Dr. Bravo, the first of the greys, as they rise at flight number two. Little Twinkle Star from Mulan West, Dark Raven, close up between horses in purple and yellow, Clanshire River. Dr. Bravo taking a very keen hold towards the inside behind the leading group is Ulan Bator de Shea. Top speed not far off them. So they flow not far off the leading group also and towards the outside gold speed with alongside that one don't stop the music. Long run now before they reach flight number four as they head towards the back straight. And in the lead, Little Twinkle Star from Mulan West. Clanchar River has approved to dispute the second spot. Dark Raven tracks them towards the inside just ahead of Dr. Bravo to the outside. Gold speed has made good headway. Not far off them is So they flow. And then Ulan Bator de Shea, ahead of Gold Speed, mid division towards the inside, Viva de Vito, as they begin the long run down the back, in the back straight. Little Twinkle Star by a length and a half to Mulan West in third spot. Towards the outside is Sand Castle, a break of two and a half lengths or so to jumping up on the outside, Dr. Bravo alongside Clanshine River, as they head on towards the seven furlong point. Four flights to jump. Mulan West is disputing the lead now at Little Twinkle Star. In third spot, tracking them is Sandcastle. A break then of a couple of lengths to up on the outside, Dr. Bravo with along the inner. Clanshire River behind them. A break of almost four lengths to Dark Raven. And then top speed. 
Behind them in the stripes as they head to the third last flight is Viva De Vito with Ulan Bator de Shea next. Nearing the third last flight. And going up on the outside to edge into a narrow lead is Sand Castle. Comes away from that flight, disputing the lead with Mulan West, Little Twinkle Star. Just behind them, Dr. Bravo, also Clanshire River, beginning to improve, having been switched off the rail, Dark Raven. Ulan Bator de Shea is on the inside of Viva de Vito. Top speed is in touch with them. Tightly grouped as they head on with less than half a mile to race and just the one flight to jump it, the flight before the turn in and then the long run for home. Not much to choose between on the inside Mulan West. Alongside is Sandcastle and they're closely followed as they approach it by Dr. Bravo, Dark Raven making good headway up on the outside, top speed as they come away from that final flight and begin this long run in of almost three furlongs. Dr. Bravo with Dark Raven coming through, top speed, Viva De Vito is just behind them as they make the swing with two furlongs to race. Dark Raven, Dr. Bravo on the rail, they go on from in third top speed. Ulan Bator de Shea is next with on the inside Viva De Vito. Furling and a half to race and the favourite strikes the front. Dark Raven from on the inside the grey. Dr. Bravo, a break of a few lengths then to Viva De Vito and then towards the inside is Clanshire River. But Dark Raven goes on by a few lengths. Dr. Bravo is staying on again in second. They have it between them, they're well clear. Less than 100 yards to race. And out in front, Dark Raven, dual bumper winner, wins for Willie Mullins and Paul Townend. In second is Dr. Bravo, they're clear. In third spot, Clanshire River, and staying on for fourth was So They Flow. So it is a winning return for Dark Raven, who's now unbeaten in three starts, two bumpers, and this maiden hurdle race. He justifies his position atop the market here in Pull 10 and the Willie Mullins. It was never likely to take too long before they were on the score sheet. They strike here in the second race of the festival. I'm not sure it was entirely plain sailing for Dark Raven on the way around, Kate, but all's well that ends well. What did you make of it? Yeah, it's a, he definitely in the first um, half of the back straight, he wasn't travelling or jumping um, with fluency. Definitely a bit ring rusty after um, his long layoff. But, um, he, you know, he's got into the race and he's the further he's gone, the better he's travelled. I'd love to actually see the head on here, Gary, because it, it kind of annoys me a little bit the way they took the hurdles out for the first race. The sun is stayed out. Why haven't they just taken the other two hurdles away? Because they've made... Paul Townend, albeit he is race riding, he is keeping Jack Kennedy as tight as he possibly can. And Jack knows he has to come out of those two hurdles. And, you know, his horse has potentially been a little bit green when he's asked him to come off the rail. Like, I just think it's a bit lazy of the ground staff here at Leopardstown why they haven't just taken those last few hurdles away and they've made them come out um, off that doll. I, I presume it can only be, Kate, that they're hoping they might be able to because if they come out that'll be it for the day but I presume they can only that but can be I, the only explanation I, they hope they'll have them for later race I know it just it just is something that does drive it just annoys me it um, takes five I've seen them put up hurdles it takes them five six minutes to put them back up we see it here you see Paul Tennant is just race riding. He's leaning in against, um, he's giving Jack Kenny very little to come out on and Jack's horse is very green and um, coming off that rail. He's kind of like, I'm used to just running down the rail. Why do I have to come back off it? Um, so that is just a little bit frustrating. I just don't see why um, they can't um, take out the hurdles. And in the end, he does have to switch around <laughs> Dark Raven, doesn't he? Rant over. <laughs> but never really looked like getting there in truth. Clonshire Rivers run well again to grab third spot. He showed a bit of potential at Punchestown. He's backed that up today. Uh, Viva De Vito, a touch disappointing. Several of the others struggling to make an impact there. But Dark Raven, how high do you think this fellow might be able to go, Kate? Okay, because to be entitled to be a bit of improvement on that, wouldn't there? There certainly would be. You know, he's run on really, really well. And um, as I said, he was green early on in the race. I'd say he is, if they can keep all the wheels um, on him, um, he is a very, very exciting novice uh, for the Willie Mullins yard um, going for Dr. Bravo. He's done things really nicely. And so does Flo um, on his um, race course debut. Son of Joshua Tree has done very, very nice, I think, to run on for fourth. OK, that is the story of our second race here. Winning favourite, Dark Raven.
And it was worth the wait, wasn't it, Gary? 631 days since he backed up his bumper win at Leopardstown with a win at Fairy House. And on Hurdle's debut, while it wasn't plain sailing, he's going to come on a bundle for this, you'd imagine, for this experience. Dark Raven, impressive off the mark at the first attempt in the maiden hurdle. Evans' favourite for Paul Tannen, Willie Mullins, Simon Munir and Isaac Sued. Second, Dr Bravo, good run in defeat, 5-1, to one, beaten three lengths. Third, Clonshire River, 16-1, to one, 13 lengths behind that pair. From Gold Cups to Grand Nationals, the latest big races to the famous clashes of the past, Racing TV's YouTube channel has it all. Rachel Blackmore, History International, Vanilla Times win. Catch up on episodes of shows that you might have missed or enjoy hours of replays of some of your favourite races from the last 20 years. Simply head to YouTube and search for Racing TV. You'll never be far away from watching the next big race. First race today here in Limerick, seen a good performance by Ludus to get off the mark on his third run over hurls here today. Jordan Gainford was in the saddle giants now. Jordan, well done. It was good. Um, I'd say the penny's only really starting to drop with him. And uh, he, he really he relished the ground today. Um, Sam rode him the last day. He said he's a lovely horse and he's going to come on from it. So, uh, no, look, he, he did the job well and hopefully it's, uh, it's uh, far from here. Nice performance by him, and they did not look to go that uh, quickly initially through the race. No, we didn't go that quick. Um, there wasn't much speed at the start. and. Uh, in fairness, Tubin popped down and I got a little position behind him. Uh, the, the top of the hill was out and it, it suited ideal. Um, we were hacking, we, we got there a little bit soon, but um, in fairness to him, no, he was good. Nice performance, wins in the colours of Aidan Ryan, and of course, a big day for you, of course. Nice ride to pick up in the grade one, Faheen Chase, Jerry Colom. Yeah, very nice. Um, he's been unbeaten so far, hasn't done anything wrong, so uh, no, look, these grade ones are not simple win, but... Hopefully, hopefully he will get a good clear around the jump and have a bit of luck. We're getting a lot of rain here now, as you can see in the background. How testing was the ground in the first race? Obviously, you're getting the best of it, uh, fresh track at that point in time. Yeah, it's, it's soft ground. Again, there's rain falling here now. I think it's lovely, loose, soft ground. Well done, there. Lovely. Thanks, William. Thank you. Runners are down at the post for the next at Danbury. Three non-runners. And that leaves us with just a field of 15. Just a field of 15. It's very competitive at the top of the market. Cave Court is currently your 100 to 30 favourite. 11 to 2, Fox LaBelle, Bellaney Gem, 8 to 1 with Will Go Watts, presenting Megan, 17 to 2, 9 to 1, Peace Party with 10 to 1, Bardos, and it's back to Bernard. A, a betting man. So the runners are down at the start here, ahead of our third race on the card at Down Royal, the 1248, the Adair Manor Opportunity Handicap Hurdle for conditional riders. Cave Court, number four for Noel Kelly and Hugh Morgan in the last hour or so has shot to favouritism. Fox LaBelle, number 13 for Liz Doyle and John Shinnick in the JP McManus Hills was the overnight favourite. Fox LaBelle and Court, Cave Court, well, they've got two totally different Profiles, if you like, Cave Court having just his fourth career start here. And he was last seen at Carlisle when well beaten behind Knock and Knorr in the novices' hurdle. This will be a, a handicap debut for Cave Court, who represents County Derry handler Noel Kelly. Hugh Morgan in the saddle, very acclaimed rider based with Henry de Bromhead, and of course um, rode a horse called Young Dev almost two years ago in Navan when performing a miracle not only to get a clear round without any stirrups but also managed to win a, a three mile chase jumping 17 fences without any stirrups on that occasion. Fox LaBelle for Liz Doyle, John Shinnick in the Jamie McManus Silks has been well fancied here. Remains a maiden after 21 starts and this could well be a fine opportunity. John Shinnick in the saddle for the first time. Here's James Griffin with the call. And then Spring Street and Galactica, Princess Megan, as they make the run towards the first. Plenty of pace on and presenting Megan to Planet Janet and R. Dillon on the inside. And then comes Spring Street, Galactica, and True Destiny, racing widest of all, is presenting Megan. Slightly reached for it, but lands with a clear advantage over Planet Janet in second place and R. Dillon in third. Spring Street at the second. 
And then comes the change of colours, Cave Court in the royal blue with emerald green sleeves and a black cap. And then outside of it is Fox LaBelle, Jimney's Glory. Back on the rail is Peace Party, Galactica and Spring Street. Bellini Gem and High Ski, and then behind races will go Watts and Pharisees, Kalanisi Dove, True Destiny, and then comes Size 5 and also a change of silks, black with royal blue epaulets and a striped cap. Presenting Megan and R. Dillon, they've steadied the pace to third place Spring Street, and then comes Planet Janet and Peace Party, and outside of it races Fox LaBelle in company with Cave Court as they continue their run away from the stands. Presenting Megan R. Dillon. And then in third place, making a forward move, Cave Court, getting a little bit closer to then behind his Peace Party in Spring Street, Fox LaBelle and Planet Janet, Bellini Gem at the next. And presenting Megan, still with a clear advantage over R. Dillon on the inside. Outside of it is Cave Court, Peace Party, Spring Street, Fox LaBelle. And then comes Planet Janet and Bellini Gem, Will Go Watts on the inside of High Ski and Jim Lee's Glory, Galactica, True Destiny, Pharisees, and then Calony C. Dove, and looking on in rear is size five, presenting Megan by half a length, a mistake by Jim Lee's Glory, reminders for size five, but presenting Megan, R. Dillon, and then in third place, Cave Court, Peace Party, Spring Street, Bellini, Gem, Fox, LaBelle, Planet, Janet, Will Go, Watts, High Ski, True Destiny, and then comes Galactica, Calony C. Dove, Pharisees, Jim Lee's Glory, and size five, but presenting Megan still with the lead in the hands of Ben Kennedy to in second is R. Dillon and Gavin Bruder. Spring Street and Ambrose McCurtain on the inside of Cave Court and Hugh Morgan. Bellaney Gem and Patrick O'Hanlon and Fox LaBelle and John Shinnick and Peace Party in the quartered Silks and Owen Walsh. In behind is Planet Janet Connor Brazel and then Will Go Watts has got a little bit closer and Connor Smithers. High Ski and Ben Harvey. Along the rail is Pharisees and James O'Sullivan, Galactica and Paddy O'Brien, True Destiny, Liam McKenna and then the yellow, Niall Moore, Kalanisi Dove, Jimny's Glory, Kieran O'Shea and our overall back marker continues to be size 5 in Shane Fenlon. But presenting Megan leads the field to in second place on the outside, Cave Court on the rail are Dillon, Spring Street, Bellaney, Gem, then Planet Janet, Peace Party, Will Go Watts, a little bit of movement in the saddle for Fox LaBelle and then getting closer Galactica, High Ski continues to travel on the bridle and in behind Kalanisi Dove and Pharisee saves ground. Jim Lee's glory has just been passed by size five as they head inside the final three quarters of a mile and presenting Megan R. Dillon on the inside. On the outside, four wide cave court and then Spring Street. Peace Party, Planet Janet is capitulating under pressure. Will go Watson, the sheepskin noseband Galactica, Bellaney Gem, Pharisees taking off heels there. Presenting is Planet Janet and Pharisees and Kalanisi Dove begins get closer. A little bit of rough riding in the Adair Manor handicap hurdle, closely bunch field, presenting Megan to Will Go Watts in the centre outside of it is Cave Court Bellini Gem Galactica, Spring Street Peace Party under pressure, High Ski running on, likewise Kalanisi Dove, True Destiny reminders, Fox LaBelle as they head towards the final two hurdles and over the road crossing inside the final quarter mile, going for home is Cave Court Galactica in the centre Will Go Watts, Bellini Gem, Kalanisi Dove presenting Megan, the long time leader at the second last, Galactica stand side is Cave Court, the far side will go what's Kalani C. Dove in the white cap under pressure Bellini Gem and at the last it's Cave Court Cave Court runs down to his right Kalani C. Dove stand side Galactica is in between but Kalani C. Dove and Niall Moore the far side Hugh Morgan Cave Court Kalani C. Dove the best turned out is going to be the best in the race Kalani C. Dove for Michael Allen and Shaw Allen trainer Seamus Fahey scores second Cave Court Galactica Bellini Gem will go what's running on from the long way back size five He rode the winner of the first in Ivan and a chance spare for Niall Moore has seen him get a double. 20 to 1 for Kalanisi Dove for Seamus Fahey. And he stayed on, she has stayed on indeed, stayed on really resolutely towards the line. He's had to be have his wits about him, Niall, at this point. It's just exactly when to make the challenge. And when the likes of Bellaney Gem are starting to cry enough, he's produced her at the final hurdle. And she really has stuck her head down and, and put everything in. This is a really pleasing performance for a horse who didn't arrive in the best of form, but had some back-class form. And I guess the run in August at Kilbegan, you could have given her a chance. Well, she was unconsidered in the market, and she is a winner for Seamus Fahey. That was Down Royal. We can get some winning reaction over a Leopard's Down with Gary.
So, Paul, congratulations. How good a performance was that after the layoff, first time out over hurdles? Yeah, um, I suppose coming over there, you're just not really <laughs> worried, to be honest. You just crack on with him. But, you know, a nice performance, and I think he's still progressing, if you know what I mean, and there's there's a little bit left on him, I think. How did the race go for you? It seemed to be a bit of shuffling about on the way around. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to be handy way down the inner, and I just thought when we got to the end of the back straight, I was riding into a bottleneck a bit, and Jack was going well, so uh, he was going to be keeping an eye for me. So I just said to keep it simple. If we were good enough, we'd get, on, we'd get outside Jack, and he'd bring us into the race, and he, he did. Hopefully he can build on this. Do you think he's graded material? I hope so. I think he can build on it. Um, Jumping and galloping wise, I think he'll come on plenty for it. And just before we let you go, excited to be on Lossy Mount today? Yeah, hopefully I'm on the right <laughs> one. Uh, look, we, we, we won't know until we try, but she was very impressive the last day. Good man. Paul, thanks a lot. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Paul Tarnand steering Dark Raven to a first win over hurdles and a first win and remaining unbeaten, a first run for 631 days. It fascinated to see what he develops into. That's the scene at Limerick for their second race. Runners heading down for a four-year-old maiden hurdle. It's over two miles. And here is the betting for the Science Plus maiden hurdle. In excess is your six to four favorite for Willie Mullins. Kieran Callahan claiming the seven. 15 to eight, Foxy Girl who's had a couple of runs so far. Just the one in Ireland as well, behind Liberty Dance, who's seen one a listed race. Six to one, Dr. Brown Bear. Benno, 10 to one. 11 to one, Royal Moon. Ages of Man, 25 to one. The same price as Binks. It's 28 to one, bar those. And here's Fran and Lisa. Second race day here in Limerick, and it's a cracking four-year-old maiden hurl. We've got really interesting line up here Lisa none less I suppose than the reserve has been well back now number 19 in excess has gone ahead of the market ahead what was the morning line favourite Foxy Girl yeah, in excess, Fran, a new recruit for Willie Mullins in running in the colours of the Slaneyville Syndicate. Obviously was um, finished second in a mile and four bumper in one of the province tracks in France. And uh, I thought that was a good effort, albeit if you want to be critical, I thought he maybe had a slightly he high head carriage. But he does make his debut in this sphere today and it'll be interesting to see. There was plenty of market support for him since, since he was declared uh, reserve earlier on this morning. But he doesn't have it easy. Foxy Girl, she's got good form here in the book in Thurless when we last seen her. See her coming into shot there, Foxy Garland thought like on balance given there was her first run since that's a uh, debut second in France in a great in a listed hurl uh, she's off the track for uh, quite a length of time you can upgrade that performance given the way the race worked out and she's entitled to improve for that outing you would think yeah there's no doubt about that and I suppose if you go actually go back to her debut performance in Autoy the winner actually she was beaten a length and a quarter by Matil Matilda du Burley who actually went out and subsequently won another listed event and was placed in grade three company since so that the form of both her races has really been franked and considering that she was off the track for quite a while you'd, improve, you'd imagine there's improvement to come. You definitely would. Uh, an interesting one, plenty of experience at least is number eight, Dr Brown Bear last seen running in the Fred Winter at Cheltenham, Fred Winter Boodles at Cheltenham on stable debut. He'd previously had decent form without winning of course uh, for Brendan Duke, ran well in a couple of strong mid hurls. Yeah, showed a really good account of himself and plenty of efforts in juvenile company last year. A big, a big solid type and looks as if uh, he'll probably improve with a bit of time as well. Um, he obviously, as you mentioned, was a new recruit for Martin Brazel, um, made his debut in the Boodles and uh, he's returning to make his seasonal debut here today after 286 days off the track. He was fourth in grade three company as well. He's yet to get off the mark, Fran, but he could, he could capitalise here today. Yeah, un unproven on testing ground today, but has a good level of form and balance. Speaking of level of form, the flat at least, number one, Benno, highly rated in the flat. He was placed to the Queen's Faz back in 2021, Royal Ascot. Hasn't just shown the appetite I'd like to see over jumps just yet. He was quite scratchy on both his first and second start over number hurls. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And I think like we've clearly seen that he has ability on the flat, Fran, and I, as I agree, we're, we're yet to see that over jumps. But um, he was beaten 17 and a half lengths at Fairy House the last day, and he was beaten further than that on his debut at Punchestown. He ran really well in two runs in Cesarowicz and obviously in the Queen Vaz. If he can reproduce any of those flat runs, you would imagine he should be the one to beat, but he has to prove that. Stable companion number two, Dante's pass, lining up good and handy in his stable debut. We'll get up just to Hallen for the call, second race of the day. Science plus maiden hurdle, and on the inside, the great Dante's pass is close up together with Royal Moon and in excess with Foxy Girl on the outside of that quartet as they make the run towards the first flight. And it's Royal Moon 
and Conor McNamara is the one who's taking them along at the steady early pace. Foxy Girl on that one's outside. They jump at first and second. Two to three lengths in front of the third running in excess with racing in four is Dr. Brown Bear with what might have been, and that one's outside. On the inner is the great Dandy's Pass. There, a length or so in front of Benno, one of four runners for JP McManus in this contest. On the inside of Benno, as they continue the downhill run towards the straight, is Ages of Man with Serok, a length or so behind those, in company with Flemings Riva. So as they continue the downhill run and head towards the straight, towards the two flights that await them, flights two and three on this occasion, and Foxy Girl is the leader under Mike O'Connor by about a length or so. From the second running Royal Moon, a length then to win excess, who races third on the inside of the red cap of Dr. Brown Bear. Behind those races Dante's Pass, the grey, on the inner of what might have been. Binks is next in the field with Ages of Man and Benno towards the outside of those. Ages of Man just got in a little bit close to it. Serok is next with behind Serok, races out of the park, a length or so in front of Fireworks, who's in company with Vulture Peak. Leader just bunny hopped that flight a little bit, but didn't lose any momentum. So as the race up past the winning post, complete circuit of the race in this Science Plus Maiden Hole. And the lead is with Foxy Girl and Michael Connor, leads by about three to four lengths. Over in second running Royal Moon, a length and a half then to win excess, who races third on the inside of Dr. Brown Bear. What might have been and Dante's pass next, followed a length back by Benno on the outside of Binks. Ages of Man next, followed by the Yellow Jacket of Out of the Park. Fireworks followed a length and a half back then by Vulture Peak, who's in company with Raglan Road on the outside of Harvard Guy. A length then to find Hands of Gold is on the outside of Noble Crusade and three lengths to Flemings Riva, who is the back marker of the 18 runners as they make the right-handed swing to bring them towards the first of the flights in the back straight. Flight number four, <coughs> six in all left to jump. And Foxy Girl continues to take them along by about three lengths as they approach this flight. And Foxy Girl, much better at that. Very slick jump, lands three to four lengths in front of in second place. Races Royal Moon. Three lengths then to Dr. Brown Bear on the outside of In Excess as they jump the fifth last. Behind In Excess, a length and a half then to what might have been in Dante's Pass. Benno is next on the outside of Binks, a length and a half then to find Serok, who's on the inside as they jump the fourth last flight of Ages of Man, and they've gone away from out of the park, who's followed by Fireworks. Next in the field then races Raglan Road, who's in front of Hands of Gold, who's made up a couple of placings as they pass the five furlong point and race towards the flight at the top of the hill. Three flights left to jump, and it's Foxy Girl continues to take them along for Mike O'Connor. Extending its advantage of anything, Got in a little bit tight there, but doesn't lose any momentum. Lands four lengths in front of, as they, in second place, Royal Moon. Third on the outside then, races Dr. Brown Bear within excess four, as they continue the downhill run towards the straight inside the final half mile. And Foxy Girl travels well out in front, four lengths in front of Royal Moon, just beginning to be pushed along in second. Dr. Brown Bear on the outer, in excess is next. Benno makes good ground behind those, ahead of Dante's pass, and they've gone on from Binks with trying to stay on behind those out of the pack is Raglan Row. Swinging in towards the final two flights and it's Foxy Girl who's out in front, three to four lengths in front. In excess now gives chase in second for Kieran Callaghan. Third is Dr. Brown Bear, followed then by Benno on the outside of Royal Moon and what might have been next. Down to the second last, it's Foxy Girl who's out three to four lengths in front of In excess in second. Benno stays on on the outside of Dr. Brown Bear and Royal Moon, but Foxy Girl followed there was Raglan Road. Foxy Girl is out three to four lengths in front of In excess in second. Benno's effort appears to come to an end in third, but at the last, Foxy Girl, big and bold, jumps at half a dozen lengths in front and racing inside the final 150 yards. It's Foxy Girl going to score here for Rob Gore, Henry de Bromhead and Mike O'Connor. Wins by about three to four lengths at the end from In excess in second. Third was Benno for Royal Moon and they were in front of Dr. Brown Bear, what might have been, and the staying on hands of gold. As her price suggested, she had every reason to be a short enough price, Foxy Girl, and under Mikey O'Connor, she's off the mark at the third attempt, having placed a listed uh, mayor's company as a juvenile when running an O'Toy for her previous connections and, and running a good race behind subsequent listed uh, novice hurdle winner Liberty Dance. And, with nothing in the field like that today, Foxy Girl is off the mark at the third attempt. Uh, in excess is a run creditable race in defeat, considering he was off. She, yeah, he was off for 632 days. He has stayed on and, and left something to work on. But Foxy Girl had the fitness in the book. 
and she has very much made it count and, and stamped her authority on her race in, in truth. She looked like she it was possible she could have a class edge, especially if she was able to exploit the fitness of In Excess, who no doubt will have a race like that at her mercy at some point. But it's Mikey O'Connor and Henry de Bromhead who have a Stevens Day winner, courtesy of Foxy Garland, in really nice style as well. That was down at Limerick in our previous race at Dan Roller. It was a nice winner and a double for a claiming jockey. Let's get back to Bernard Condra. So it's been a momentous day for jockey Niall Moore. A double here from just two rides at Dan Royal. Ivan in the first contest of the day and now Kalanisi Dove. Both horses breaking their maiden and a nice spare ride to pick up as well, Niall. Well done. Yeah, it was a lovely spare ride to get. All, um, thanks to Gary Cribben, who rang me this morning. When the spare is going, put me down that he was on the ball and he's brilliant at his job. And I'm very grateful to have him as my agent. It looks a little shame he's had him in great half farm, had her in great farm. And look, she was very fresh and very well. And I knew she come. She, she it was a break until her last run, the last day. She was off for 52 days and she was back the last day. She ran okay back at night, but as you clear, you see, she needed the run. And I, I said, geez, this one will have a chance now from that. And her mark as well is lovely. So she. Look, it's great, and it's great to do it for a small trainer and small owner. Like, this is what they live for, and for them to have a winner at Christmas means more to them than they know, you know. And it must be nice as well. I mean, both horses came in here; they're both maidens, and both maidens know more as well. So you, you've certainly worked the oracle. Yeah, well, that's today. And another day, I could be the worst man, but sure, we'll take we'll take today as. One of my best days I've had, so not as great, as great. Now, hopefully things stay going the way they are. And this will be your first double, I would imagine. This is my first double, yeah, yeah, no, it is great, yeah. So where else can we look forward to seeing Niall Moore over the Christmas? Um, well, I'm based with Philip Fenton, and I ride one for him on Wednesday, and I have a, a lovely ride off Garden on Road and Eish in the Pretemps, so uh, that'll be one to look forward to as well, and I don't know where I am the rest of the week, so hopefully fall in for a few more now down the line. Good man. Niall, listen, very well done indeed, and best of luck um, for the rest of the Christmas period. Thank you, thank you. Cheers. There is the scene at Leopardstown as we head for our first graded race of the Leopardstown Christmas Festival. Of four days, there are some big races. This has produced some big horses. Field Orr, who is favourite for our grade one feature later at Leopardstown, he took this last year. The Knight Frank Juvenile Hurdle, a grade two over two miles. Lossy Mouse, so impressive when making her debut in Ireland, having won her first start at Toy so impressively and then following up in graded company. She's five to four on to take the rising class in her stride. A strong hand for Willie Mullins once again, looking for a double with Dark Raven having won our previous race. He's also responsible for the second favourite, Gala Mosso, 100 to 30. 11 to two about Cougar, really interesting one for Poria Groach and Mark Walsh and JP McManus. Uh, Nuzrat has been a bit of a drifter to give Joseph O'Brien a quick fire. Uh, or double on the card, having taken one of our early races with high definition. Fives out to sevens. It's a massive gap to the rest. The lossy mouth has been a talking horse for some time and five to four on to take the step up and glass in her stride. Racing TV's social media channels are always at your fingertips wherever you are. Watch the day's big races again and join the debate. Read tips from the experts and catch up with the latest breaking news. Enjoy highlights from the channel and expert insight that you might have missed. Make sure you stay in the know by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Stay ahead of the pack. Follow Racing TV on social media today. Yes, welcome back to Leopardstown. First of our graded races coming up, the Knight Frank Juvenile Hurdle and all eyes on Lossie Mouth as she bids to confirm the very strong impression she created at Ferry House on her Irish debut. First start for Willie Mullins there. Paul Townend, unsurprisingly, taking over in the plate today. And equally unsurprisingly, they're not going to be jumping the hurdle in the straight once again here in our third race of the day. So as you were lengthy run to the first and a very long run in from the last and 
There's just one more hurdle race to come after this, so I think they could nearly just take the punt at this stage and take those hurdles out. We'll <laughs> see how they play it anyway. My little rant after the last race, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're using up ground on the chase track. That doesn't need to be. Just take the hurdles out. Um, but um, I don't. It would be interesting to see if we haven't seen a picture of them down the track. It would be interesting to see if they have at this stage. But there is Lossie Mouth. Um, he was um, looked. For, she looked very well in the paddock before and got a little bit unsettled when doing um, her final lap of the parade ring. Um, did a few fry laps, but just that you could potentially say she's in good form. How strong do you think the opposition she's facing today is, Kate? Is it any better than the likes of Zarek the Brave and Comfort Zone, who you beat last time? I guess there's a couple in there that maybe we don't know too much about. Yes, there is a few you don't know too much about, but I was t so taken uh, by Zarek the Brave on his uh, first start over her. I couldn't see him getting beat the last day and you know but Lossie mate she went out and she ran out a real good winner but we have a few that um, are a little bit um, more experienced here today and um, there is one at a slightly bigger price there number one 33 to one a uh, court Mag um, um, of from was with the Jim Bulger yard was bought here at the champion sales and um, won a three-year-old hurdle in Sedgefield and then followed that up with a grade two win at Toy but then was no match um, for his um, rivals in a grade one. And in fact the race that he ran in last time was won by the horse he'd beaten when he scored at Toy two, two starts back so maybe he just didn't perform that day McTighe if you could forgive him he could potentially be overpriced here 33 to 1 looks as though they're still in Kate. <laughs> Off you go yeah. again. Yes, no, I hope I go again. But I just feel they're using up ground, the chase track ground. They've had two full field maiden hurdles and they're running up the final uh, furlong in the chase. We don't have any fresh ground for the chase track later on in the week. If we have a very wet week later on, they're just using ground that doesn't need to be. Just take out the hurdles. There's the big outsider here. That's number 10, Pinkfire Lily. Uh, also ran in the grade three at Ferry House and was predictably uh, class JJ Slevin who won on high definition earlier in the plate. But the support appears to be continuing, Cade, for Gala Marceau. And look at these shots down at the start here. Looks as though Danny Mullins is going to pop off handy on Gala Marceau, who won her last two starts in France for her previous connections and is a fascinating contender here in the honeysuckle colours. Sundial might well be the one to make the pace. He was amongst the also rounds at Fairy House, but Gala Marceau, potentially a formidable rival here. Yes, she certainly does. She comes with a good lofty uh, reputation. She won on the flash and then she won her maiden over hurdles and then won, followed that up with a listed win um, at Otoy the last day. And um, obviously, um, connections are very positive on her, I'm sure. And um, coming from the outfit she's coming from, she has potentially been for a schooling hurdle and been around uh, in Thurless. And there was a big contingent of Willie Mullins's there um, a couple of weeks back. But um, another horse um, that it, at a bigger price, war correspondent, he did run a nice race um, at Cheltenham the last day after winning his maiden hurdle at Punchdown. He did things very, very wrong under Sam Twiston Davis that day, was very keen and just didn't get in um, a good rhythm of jumping. If Jack can get him in a good rhythm of jumping at a bigger price, he could be won and um, with a bit more improvement to come. Wouldn't disagree with that, war correspondent then. A previous winner at Punchestown. Potential each way material here. They're making their way in nice and quietly. Remember that hurdle in the straight is out once again here. It's the night Frank Juvenile hurdle, grade two. And Peter O'Hare will describe the action for us. White flag is raised. Off and racing in race three, it's the Knight Frank Juvenile Hurl, and straight into the lead is Sundial. Already a few lengths clear as they head up the straight, bypassing what should be the last flight in the straight. And out in front, Sundial leads by four or five lengths from Lossy Mouth towards the inside Gala Marceau. They're tracked in the early stages by McTighe towards the outer with the white cap is Cougar, Nuzre is on the rail. As they come up to pass the judge, Sundial, Simon Torrance taking them along. Leads by 
About four lengths to the odds on favourite Lossy Mouth Paul Townend. On the inside is McTighe Dunnemiler. Just over a length away then to Gala Marceau, Danny Mullins on the inside of Cougar and Mark Walsh behind them. Tucked away on the rail is Nuzra, Daryl Jacob alongside War Correspondent and Jack Kennedy. The grey on the outside of that one is Jure de Fett and Jack Foley. And they show in front of Risk Bell, Luke Dempsey as they clear flight number two. At the back of the field in the early stages, Aha Boy, Michael O'Sullivan and Pinkfire Lily, and JJ Slevin as they head away from the stands. Nearing flight number three, Sundial with a reduced advantage over Lossie Mouth. McTighe is towards the inside, sharing second spot. Cougar landed fourth, just ahead of Gallum Marceau towards the rail. Up on the outside, Jure de Fett has closed up slightly as they make the left handed swing that brings them towards the back straight. Sundial leads, tracked by McTighe on the inside of Lossie Mouth. They in turn tracked by Cougar. On the rail is Gala Marceau. Wide in the green cap is Jour de Fett. Between them is Nuzre. Then War Correspondent. Risk Bell and still at the back on the outside, Pink Fire Lily. And Aha Boy also at the rear of the field as they head down the far side. They're on the approach to flight number four. And Sundial continues to show the way. Leads by less than two lengths. Lossie Mouth closer in second. And they're followed by McTighe and Cougar and Nuzre. Jure de Fett is towards the outside, just ahead of Gallimar So towards the inner and then war correspondent. Gallimar So jumped up past a couple of rivals at that flight as they head on. At the halfway stage, they're heading to their next flight, which will be their third last. Sunday leads by less than a length from Lossie Mouth second. Nuzra has improved up to be a close third on the outside. McTighe and Cougar closing behind. Length and a half away then to Gala Marceau, just ahead of our correspondent Jure de Fett. Risk Bell, Aha Boy, and at the back is Pink Fire Lily. Continuing on with less than six furlongs to race and just the two flights to jump. Going to the last one in the back straight. Sundial, lost him out up on the outside. Fiddle it slightly, but is within a length of the leader. Over two lengths then to Nuzre, towards the inside Cougar, closing up in fifth position is Gala Marceau as they continue towards the end of the back straight. And up front, Sundial retains the advantage of about a length. Lossy Mouth second, Nuzre third. Cougar is fourth, Gala Marceau towards the outside. War correspondent is beginning to close. Jure de Fett is next and then Risk Bell. McTighe has dropped back. Aha Boy, Pink Fire Lily at the rear as they near their final obstacle on the approach to the straight. Lossy Mouth up on the outside of Sundial as they jump it. Lossy Mouth led from Sundial in second, and they're chased towards the straight by an improving Gala Marceau towards the outside. Behind them is Cougar. Over two furlongs to race on the level as they swing in and head up to straight. Lossy Mouth out in front. Paul Townend chased in second by Gala Marceau. Danny Mullins back in third is Nuzra, Daryl Jacob, and then Sundial as they head on with a furlong and a half to race. Lossy Mouth leads by about five lengths. Gala Marceau is second, staying on in third is Nuzra, and they're clear inside the final furlong. Lossy Mouth with a clear lead from stable companion Gala Marceau second, Nuzra in third, but as they head for home, Lossy Mouth will follow up her impressive win in Fairy House, wins the night Frank Juvenile in great style, double up for Willie Mullins and Paul Town, and Lossy Mouth beat Gala Marceau in second, Nuzra third, and staying on in fourth spot was Risk Bell. Don't think you can ask for much more than that, Lossy Mouth. It was so impressive at Ferry House last time, has backed it up here at Grade 2 level with a decisive defeat of stable companion Gala Marceau. That said, the runner-up emerging with plenty of credit here and looks a promising type in her own right, but no match in the end for Lossy Mouth. He was ridden closer to the pace by Paul Ten and than was the case at Ferry House last time. And Kate, were there any anxious moments? It didn't look like it. No, there certainly wasn't, Gary. She's done, put in a very professional performance here. And uh, I was a little bit concerned in the first half of the race. Um, she was quite keen under Paul Town. And um, as were a lot of her rivals throughout the field, they didn't go um, an overly quick gallop. It'll be interesting to see what the time is. But she's put the race to bed uh, really, really quickly. And, you know, it's uh, been a Phillies 1-2 uh, here, um, it, which is great to see. And... Um, 
just shows you the high quality um, field um, here, just the fillies really coming to the fore and uh, she's done it really, really nicely. Here we are over the final flight, this long run in to come. You just wondered what Danny Mullins was holding on to and Gala Marceau, he stalks Lossie Mouth round the turn here and briefly gives the impression those goggles coming down mm. Kate it's often seen as a positive sign isn't it maybe people read too much into it but then quickly starts to change his hands and there's only going to be one winner I think from now yes exactly of course Lossie Mouth had the um, benefit of a run and a win um, back a month ago and um, Gala Mansoura I'm sure whatever she's done today she's going to improve from it but she's going to have to step forward again if she's to put it up to Lossie Mouth um, Nurset has run well back in third and um, a few of the others in behind have been quite disappointing the likes of Kruger I thought he would uh, put it up but he was very keen throughout the race with Mark Walsh it looked like Sundial was set to make a, a good pace for him but um, he didn't um, go quick enough at all and he was very very keen Kruger. First second and fourth for Willie Mullins in the end Risk Bell has shaped quite nicely back in fourth place seven and a half lengths the winning margin for Lossie Mate. there they are just going around that bypass final flight of hurdles and well it's going to take a real good one to lower her colours Kate have you seen anything that can get close to her yet I, I don't think so I definitely haven't um, I've been impressed um, with the Churchill horse that won in um, Cheltenham I've been very impressed by him but uh, I thought um, it was Zarek the Brave he was going to be the banker but she's already lowered his colours I think she's going to be very exciting one for the Rich Richie Willie Mullins team OK let's see what Anthony made of it Anthony lost him out goes from strength to strength Thanks, Gary. If you weren't a believer before at Fairy House, you should be now. Lossy Mouth justifies odds on favouritism. Five to four on favourite scores. Double for Paul Town and double for Willie Mullins. Winner for Mrs. Susanna Ritchie. Second, Gala Marceau, three to one. Third, Nazareth, 15 to two. Seven and a half lengths, the winning distance as we head back to Limerick and Framberry. Girl getting off to mark on her second Irish start here today at Limerick. Today, ridden by Mike O'Connor. Mike, she shaped very well at Turles on her debut run, of course, playing Liberty Dance. Uh, it was very good here again today. Yeah, she did indeed. Um, you know, she's very good placed for him. Um, and she did it very well today. You know, you'd be, you'd be hoping going off for a run in Turles that she might show up here today, you know, and the ground was probably in her favour as well. So, you know, it, it all helped today. Indeed, and with the benefit of that run, you're very keen not to let it develop into a sprint, if you like. You let her stride along throughout, and she jumped very well. Yeah, um, there seemed to be no great deal of pace early on, so I, I was quite happy just to let her bowl away, you know. Um, but she, she seemed happy doing that, and probably made it a nice even even gallop throughout to suit my own mare. You know. A lot of rain pre-race. Uh, how testy is the ground out there now? It's been opened up a bit. Yeah, it's starting to open up. You know, um, it's lovely soft ground. It's proper, proper winter, winter racing ground. Um, but no, it's, it's it seems good and it's opening up all right. But no, it's just lovely soft ground. Interesting ride, right, of course, in a very competitive mare's handicap. Harold Queen Jane for Henry likely race day uh, on proven on this ground or balance her form is on better ground. Yeah, you know, um, I suppose also she's she's another fine big mare. Um, you'd be, she's off, I think, six months. So. Look, you'd be, you'd be hoping for a good run today. You know, she also has good place form um, and soft, nice weight. So you'd you'd hope that she'd be there, although it is a quite a competitive hurdle now. But. It is indeed a crack in handicap parlance. Always nice kick off to Christmas with winner. Yeah, it's, it's always great. I had a nice Christmas present and hopefully we can try and kick it home a few more during the week. Well done there. Thanks very much, Frank. Chase over two miles and four furlongs and some really interesting horses in this as well. A couple of interesting chasing debutants here. Chavez, number three in the iconic silks of owner Malcolm Denmark, is making his debut. He's also making having his first run in Ireland and his first run out of Willie Mullins' yard. He was formerly trained by Paul Nichols and had some very good form over hurdles as well for the Master of Ditchit. But it's the Master of Clusutton whom he represents now. This horse has got the physique and the pedigree to be a chaser. He's by Yates, he's from the family of Glencarrig Lady, and 
Elliot Ungren is in the saddle. Elliot has got a number of rides over the Christmas period for the Willie Mullins yard. Another of the interesting chasing debutants here is number seven, Jack in the Box, in the all blue silks of the Magner family. Jack in the Box, another horse who's bringing smart hurdling form into this contest. Another young horse as well making his chasing debut and Ben Harvey takes the ride here for trainer Gordon Elliott. Of those who have form already over fences, you've got number 10, Salmanino for Liz Doyle and Finian Maguire. This fellow he will be having his third start over fences. He was a very good second behind Monister Armui um, just over six weeks ago down at Cork. Pat's Choice is another one to represent Gordon Elliott and Sam Ewing. So they're coming into line. James Griffin with the call. Chavez, the favourite here, making his chasing debut for Willie Mullins and Elliot Ogren. Yes, beginner's chase, going without champagne sparkles. And Salmonino in company with Pat's Choice and Innovative, the leading trio. Behind that, we have a line of five on the inside, crew, bourgeois, in killer mode, air square, jack in the box, and widest of all is game to cause. And then the final pair of Chavez and held up Slightly detached at this very early stage is Champ de Gain. So into the home straight, and Pat's choice on the outside of Salmanino, an innovator, will take off in third. Jack in the box, and a mistake in an unseat there, Elliot Ogren, given no chance by Chavez. So Pat's choice, we're down one, leads the field to Salmanino. Then innovator, Jack in the box, killer mode, and crew bourgeois, the riderless Chavez, and jockey Elliot Ogren has gotten to his feet. Air Square has two behind, gained the cause and Champ de Gan. So at the middle of the three fences up the home straight, and Pat's choice, Sal Manino, the leading pair. And then behind is Innovator Jack in the Box, Killer Mode, and Crew Bourgeois. So the rider is Chavez doing Pat's choice absolutely no favours at all. Likewise, Sal Manino. But heading up in front of the judge and the crowd with a circuit to go. And Pat's choice on the outside of Sal Manino, Jack of the Box in killer mode, crew bourgeois, innovated, air square, then comes behind that is Champ de Gain, and Gain de Cause, relegated to the rear of the field, as Pat's choice has a think about of where he just came out of the paddock, and the riderless Chavez still leads the main body of the field to Pat's choice and Sal Manino, in behind is innovated and killer mode, and then comes Jack in the Box and air square, Crew Bourgeois, Champ de Gain and Game de Cause as Pat's Choice and Sal Manino. To in third, Jack the Box and unseated there, Champ de Gain. So Ben Crawford gets to his feet, but Pat's Choice, owned locally by the Sloans, to in second, Sal Manino. Then in third, Jack in the Box and Killer Mode, Crew Bourgeois and Air Square. And then comes Game de Cause. Innovative mid division as well as they head into the back straight and Sal Manino for the FODA partnership. Two in second, the Sloan's own Pat's Choice in third, the Noel Mead Racing Limited killer mode on the inside of Sue Magner's Jack in the Box, and then comes Gigginstown House Studs Innovated, and then comes the John John Simon Mangan owned and bred Air Square, Crew Bourgeois, and Gain de Cause. But Pat's Choice by half a length to Sal Manino, then a two and a half back to Jack in the Box, a clear third. Killer Mode, four. Five, Innovated. Air Square, six. Gained a cause, seven in the JP McManus silks. And rear of the field is the Coffee and Brown owned Crew Bourgeois. But Pat's Choice has suddenly gone on by over four lengths to Sal Manino and Jack in the Box, Killer Mode, joined by Innovated. Air Square in the inside have gained a cause and they've gone on and leaving behind Crew Bourgeois. But the Sam Ewing partner, Pat's Choice to Finney Maguire and Sal Manino. Pat's Choice, Sal Manino, and Ben Harvey, Jack in the Box, and innovator Connor Brazel. On the outside of Owen Walsh and Killer Mode, Air Square, and Paddy O'Brien, and Liam McKenna gained the cause, and Barry O'Neill and Crew Bourgeois, but Pat's Choice still has a lead of over four lengths. To Sal Manino in second place, Jack in the Box third, four innovator, five Air Square, then Killer Mode brushed through the top of that, gained the cause and crew bourgeois, but Pat's Choice, the blinker Pat's Choice, has the lead, narrow deficit now to two and a half lengths, Sal Manino second, and Pat's Choice, very li laborious over that fence, to Sal Manino in second, innovator third, four Jack in the Box, Air Square, Killer Mode, gained the cause and crew bourgeois, but Pat's Choice with the yellow sleeves to the white sleeve, Sal Manino, then comes the dark blue of Jack in the Box and the Gigginstown House so stud silks of Innovator, the pink of Air Square, and then Gain de Cause in Killer Mode, reminders for Crew Bourgeois, but Pat's Choice 
Salmanino jack in the box air square and innovated on the inside to gain the cause in killer mode crew bourgeois swinging into the home straight three to jump in the Irish Stallion Farms UBF beginners chase and innovated has suddenly swooped to the front two in second killer mode Salmanino Pat's choice jack of the box and air square and at the third last innovated air square Salmanino on the inside is killer mode as Innovator goes on about his business by over a length to Air Square in second. Salmanino, killer mode, jack of the box. Long time leader, Pat's choice gained a cause and crew bourgeois. Down over the road, crossing inside the final quarter mile. Innovator, Salmanino, Air Square, killer mode, jack in the box. All in with chances. And as they are after swerving around the broken fence, and it's innovated, Salmanino, jack in the box, air square, innovated, one left to jump, Salmanino, jack in the box, switch stand side, air square, still boxing away, innovated, Salmanino, jack in the box, air square, innovated, has gone on again by a couple of lengths to Salmanino, who's trying to rally, jack in the box and air square, but innovated inside the final hundred yards, and innovated to Salmanino and air square, jack in the box and at the line, innovated scores, Salmanino, air square, possibly third to jack in the box, Pat's choice killer mode and gained a the lightly race innovated has made a successful return 16 to 1 winner for Connor Brassel claiming the five for Henry de Bromhead and after a 253 day absence you were looking for market confidence there was none came out to about 20 to 1 and he looked like he just joined in coming before the second last some confusion there exactly and given that the fence was broken they were never going to be jumping it but ultimately innovated has had enough fitness on, on his side while also suggesting he might also come on for this he has got a little bit tired but he's been well entitled to after a, a fair layoff like that it looked but the only question was was salmonino going to be able to make use of his recent match fitness under finney mcguire looked in a good position to strike ultimately innovated was the one who has won on his return. But the race was blown wide open earlier in the race with Chavez. More of that later. Elliot Ogren claiming the five for Willie Mullins. A, a day of contrasting fortunes. It's been great for the Mullins team at Leopardstown, but not so much at the away meetings. But it's good to see Innovated back. And I guess if you look at it, he was the lightly raced horse in the race. This is only the sixth run that he's had. And he didn't have much trouble getting off the mark over hurdles, given he, he got off the mark at his third attempt in a, a January maiden hurdle uh, earlier this year. And then two more runs hadn't quite seen the same form. But it's good to see him in this new discipline do so well. Now, this is the fall from Chavez. Elliot Ogren, who's claiming the five. You see him in the middle in the Malcolm Denmark colours. He just kind of walked through it, didn't he? He didn't really jump it. And ultimately, that was it for the favourite, which blew the race wide open thereafter. Ultimately, those are in, in and around the top of the market weren't able to take advantage, and it was Innovated who has won again for the first time over hurdles, adding to the maiden hurdle win in January. Well, we said it was a big price. It was 16 to 1. You could have got a little bit bigger as well if you'd been around earlier in the day. Connor Brassel, a winner for Henry de Bromhead and Jigginstown House stud. Second, Salmonino, 13 to 2. Third, Jack in the Box, 9 to 2, with Chavez falling very early. That's the scene at Limerick ahead of their third race on the card, the later starters. And this is the O'Kelly Brothers demolition hurdle. Two and a half miles the trip, an odds on favourite in the form of Noel Meads Pinkerton, 11 to 8 on, 3 to 1 Summer Melody, 5 to 1 Longhouse Poet, Bois de Clermont, 14 to 1, Elusive Guy, 16 to 1, with just a field of five going to post for the O'Kelly Brothers demolition hurdle. His Fran Berry and Lisa O'Neill. Very welcome back to Limerick for the third race today in interesting conditions. Race short price favour Pinkerton. He's stepping up trip here today on testing ground with a tongue tie on following two very good runs. Lisa in handicap hurls over two miles. Good opportunity for him on paper to get off the mark here. Yeah, it's interesting that we see him uh, step back up in trip from the last time we seen him at this trip was uh, over uh, at the Red Mills hurl in Nace actually when he took on Journey with me. Um, but he's shown shown himself to really good effect in two handicap starts so far. This looks like a golden opportunity for him to get off the mark. I thought he was just outdone when he fluffed his lines at the last in Down Royal on his handicap debut, and also maybe he just run in, ran into uh, a lesser 
exposed individual and Merlin giant, giant in Fairy House the last day, but he carries a first time tongue strap and I think he's the one to beat. Summer Melody being quite strong in the market, very game winner of a Navin bumper two starts ago. Yeah, you'd like to see um, him shape better over hurls than we did see the last day. Was a good bumper winner and showed himself to good effect that day in Nav and staying on really, really well all the way to the finish line, suggesting that he'd really thrive with a step up to two and a half, which he did do in Nav and on his debut, on his, his first run debut over hurls. And uh, he was beaten 22 lengths, Fran. That's, he really has to, has to show a little bit more than what we've seen there um, for him to shape as if he's going to be competitive today. Longhouse Port in his red cap going forward as well. Of course, a high class chaser's own right pulled up last time in a part times qualifier at Pontchartrain. Looks like he will line up second to number five, Summer Melody. The favourite Pinkerton would imagine will be held up by Brian Cooper given he's stepping back up a trip here today. A strong traveller. Be interested to see how quick to go here and will they try and expose his perceived perhaps stamina lim limitations on test and ground as we make the way down here to the start we got up to Justin Hanlon for the commentary for the third race of the day and they're off two circuits and 12 flights of hurdles we jumped in this O'Kelly Brothers demolition hurdle and uh, nobody very keen to make it Longhouse Poet is the first to show in front of Summer Melody Bois de Clamart and Pinkerton, three and four, and Elusive Guide, the back marker, the five. But they're making the right handed swing at a very, very sedate pace indeed, and still a longish run before they reach the first of the 12 flights to be jumped in this third race of the day. And the lead is with Longhouse Poet from Summer Melody. And they dawdle along about a length and a half in front of Pinkerton, who's between. Bois de Clamart on the outer and Elusive Guy on its inner. So continuing to make the right-handed spring to bring him towards the first of the 12 flights in this two and a half minor. And continue on the run towards it, it's Longhouse Poet and Ricky Doyle on the outside of Summer Melody and Charles Burns. As they approach this flight, they jump at first and second, Summer Melody a little bit more fluent on the inner of the Longhouse Poet. A length and a half in front of Pinkerton, Border Clamour and Elusive Guy, who was a little bit untidy at that first flight, but as they jump the second, Longhouse Poet, slightly better than the Summer Melody this time. Not a lot to choose between the two as they continue the uphill run towards flight number three. And Summer Melody on the inside of Longhouse Poet. They jump it a length and a half or so in front of Pinkerton, who races in third, Border Clamour and Elusive Guy. So as they continue the run towards the top of the hill, and the flight that lies in a wait, uh, that's in a wait for them there, flight number four. Summer Melody and Longhouse Poet lobbing along. Both jump it fluently. A length and a half in front of Bordeaux Clamart, who lands third. On the outside of the odds-on favourite Pinkerton in four, an elusive guy is the back marker of the quintet. So not that much injection of pace really as they can make the downhill run towards the turn into the straight for the first time and towards flights five and six. Summer Melody and Philip Burns on the inside of Longhouse Poet and Ricky Doyle, a length and a half then to find Bordeaux Clamart and Richie Deegan on the outside of Pinkerton and Brian Cooper, elusive guy and Peter Smithers bring up the rear of the five runners as they come out towards the centre of the track and towards the slightly fresher ground and come towards flight number five. With no change in the order as they approach the first of the two flights in the straight. And on the far side, Summer Melody, out jumped again there by Longhouse Poet. But the Summer Melody doesn't lose any momentum as they come to flight number six. And over again, Longhouse Poet, whose jumping has improved as they've gone throughout the race. Leads by a neck, Summer Melody on the inside. A length, then, a length, length and a half then to find Bordeaux Clamart on the outside of Pinkerton. And the back marker continues to be elusive guy. So heading out on the complete circuit to race. As they go past the nine furlong point and continue the long right-handed swing to bring them towards the first of the flights in the back straight. Six and all left to jump 
in this O'Kelly Brothers demolition hurdle. And not much change in the order and certainly not much change in the pace towards the, uh, from the outset, although as they make this swing into the back straight, some injection is inevitable as they come towards the flight six of the finish. And on the outside, Longhouse Poet with Summer Melody, a neck between the two of them, a length and a half in front of Bodo Clamour in third, Pinkerton four, and Elusive Guy continues to be the back rock of the five and just made a slight mistake there, Elusive Guy, pushed along for a few strides by Peter Smithers as it just loses about three or four lengths in the back of the field. Towards the flight five to the finish, Longhouse Poet stood off that one, lands half a length in front of Summer Melody second, length then to Bodo Clamour third on the outside of the favorite Pinkerton in four, Elusive Guy, Back mark of the five, again, not as fluent as the quartet in front of it, jumping that fourth last flight. So continue towards the top of the hill, inside the final five furlongs in this O'Kelly Brothers demolition hurdle. Longhouse Poet, Summer Melody on its inner, a length then to Bada Clamour on the outside of Pinkerton, and Elusive Guy, still the back mark of the five, remains in touch despite a couple of jumping errors in the back straight. And Longhouse Poet just guessed a little bit that one, but landed with plenty of momentum as they jumped that third last flight. Bota Clamar now goes second on the outside of Summer Melody in third. Pinkerton a close four, and Elusive Guy the back mark of the five. As they make the downhill run inside the final half mile, Longhouse Poet tries to stretch them, half a length in front of Bota Clamar on the outside of Pinkerton, who travels well. Summer Melody just drops back and is passed for four by Elusive Guy as they head towards the turn of the straight and swing in. Two flights left to jump, coming towards the middle of the track once again. Longhouse Poet, Pinkerton, Travels up well on its inside. Summer Melody tries to get a second win now on the inner. They're followed by Elusive Guy and Bois de Clamar just tapped a bit for toe as they come down towards the second last as Longhouse Poet responding in front. Pinkerton, Elusive Guy tries to get the split between the two and at the second last, Longhouse Poet, a good jump. Bad mistake and fall going goes Elusive Guy. Down to the final flight is Longhouse Poet responding well in front. Pinkerton tries to produce a challenge on the inside at the last. Longhouse Poet paddles through it but jumps it better than Pinkerton and racing inside the final 150. It's Longhouse Poet is out two in front. Bois de Clamar stays on again on the outside but Longhouse Poet wins it from Bois de Clamar. Pinkerton in third, Summer Melody four. And Peter Smith is up and walking away after his second last flight on seat from Elusive Guy. Good to see Longhouse Poet back with a win. The first win since winning the Thiestes at Goran back in January. That was a, a big pot to win. And this is not a bad pot to win back over hurdles either. And he's always been in the right position, hasn't he, under Ricky Doyle for Martin Brassel. Was always near the front. At times, you were just a little bit worried about how well Pinkerton was going in behind. In fact, if you'd taken the short price in the first half of the race, you'd have been very happy with the funereal-like pace that they went early. However, when they wound it up, he ultimately just hasn't got home, has he, Pinkerton? No excuses in behind, travelled well into it, was close enough if good enough, and ultimately wasn't quite good enough and has faded for third with Bois de Clamont finishing second. But it's long as Poet back with another win. And speaking of winning, Paul Townend's been doing plenty of it over at Leopardstown. Let's uh, have a quick word with him before we go back for the Novice Handicap Hurdle. Again, Paul Townend, Lossie Mouth has taken the grade two night, Frank Juvenile Hurdle. Paul, you were delighted to get back on her today. Well, I say get back on her. Your first time riding her today. How good was the experience? One would wonder why you didn't ride her first. <laughs> no, it was very good. It was a very messy race. Um, and I just didn't want to leave the horse in front off. So I ended up out there and got a bit keen in places, but not as keen as a few behind me, I'd say. And you'd like the way she done it. Um, she, she got down and, and done it when she had to. And um, she's, I think she's, she's smart. Yeah, she's very good, you know. She's laid down a real early marker, hasn't she, with those two wins. How high is that standard, do you feel? Is it one that others are going to struggle to get to? I haven't ridden in too many of them, to be honest, this year. But um, of the ones I've ridden in, she, she is the standard. And... Um, I just don't know where, where she's going to stop improving to. Um, she hit the line strong after doing things wrong today again, which you, you'd love going to try and for that, down that route anyway. Yeah, she looks a lovely prospect. And Paul, two out of three ain't bad on the opening day. I suppose the one that got away was Parmenio and looked as though maybe he was expected to deliver. What was your take on it? Yeah, we, we liked him and uh, looked the race, looked a strong race on paper. Uh, the fancied ones were up there and we finished up there. So uh, I said there'd be plenty of winners come out of it, disappointing he got beaten. and. Um, I, I still hope he's a little bit better than that, but maybe he's not. Maybe you know, maybe it was just a very good race. But um, 
yeah, no disappointing start, but uh, a better finish. Yeah, you've got plenty of worse days, in fairness. Just before we let you go, Fasal Vega, how big a thrill is it going to be to get back on him? You're looking forward to him immensely. Um, yeah, just hopefully things can go right and uh, he can he can back up what he's done so far. And uh, yeah, we're happy with him home. And, and as I say, he'll, he'll learn a bit more tomorrow. We're looking forward to seeing him. Well done today. Thanks, Paul. Thanks very much. Well done to Paul Tan and Lossy Mouth Imperious there. And at Limerick, it was the one two Longhouse poet and Bois de Clamour who stayed on for second, but Longhouse poet added to his previous tally of one win from seven hurdle starts. Make that two from eight. Five to one for Ricky Doyle, Martin Russell, Sean and Bernadine Mulry. And second, Bois de Clamour, 11 to one with Pinkerton ultimately not quite seeing the trip out in the conditions and odds on only third now to the frame. Sunny Leopardstown up next, the one before the big one. The career is at Dornagroup.com, a novice handicap hurdle over two miles. Very competitive, low style, a fascinating contender back over hurdles. Three to one, four to one changing the rules. Brookie, five to one, six to one and being back. Dutch Schultz, it was fake, 15 to two, 14 to one and bigger the remainder. 14 go to post with four non-runners and three to one the field. Let's get back to Gary O'Brien and Kate Harrington. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, they are down at the start, as you can see, for our fourth race of the afternoon. Four absentees in this one. And there is the horse I think might be the one they all have to beat. But what do <laughs> I know? Let's ask the assistant trainer, Kate Harrington. Kate, changing the rules. Mark Walsh back in the play today. Has been a little bit costly to follow up until now, but <laughs> do you think we've yet to see the best of this guy? That's my view. You know, he, you can see him there. He's a beautiful big son of Walk in the Park. Of course, his dam was a full sister to um, Moscow Flyer, and we've had a bit of the family um, down the years feeling the love, and uh, she won plenty of races. But uh, maybe ste we stepped up to two and a half miles the last day, and... Uh, you know, we dropped him in. I think he's a horse that likes a little bit of daylight and to be able to use his stride. So back to two miles today. I feel Mark's going to be good and positive on him. Um, it is a bit disappointing not to have the last hurdle in there because he is all about jumping. He's a big chaser in the making. Um, and I think he's um, off a very, very nice mark. And um, let's hope he can put his last two experiences in handicaps uh, to good use. He travelled so, so well first time out this season at Navin, just faded into fifth in the end behind Dolly's destination that day. And as Kate says, mitigating circumstances at Ferry House last time. Got messed around a bit up the straight that day too. Four to one then, but the favourite is low style. Barry Connell seemed very confident about that when he spoke about his Leopardstown runners recently. Kate, would you be respectful of that one as an opponent? Yes, definitely. He's very lightly, lightly raced horse, very impressive um, when he made his um, handicap debut and then fell when he went over fences uh, the next day. Back over hurdles here today. It looks like Mikey O'Sullivan is going to be good and positive on him there in the familiar yellow with blue, navy blue sash uh, colours. So they're making their way in, and the hurdle in the straight is indeed out once again here, so it won't have been jumped in any of the four hurdle races on today's card. Hopefully, yes, they have it out this time, so Do they? no need to go round that so hurdle. you heard me ranting. <laughs> Well, I think if they were if they were going to take it out, they were going to do it for this race, Kate. Yes, exactly. Let's join our commentator then, Peter O'Hare, for this novice handicap hurdle, our fourth of the afternoon here. The careers at Dornengroup.com novice handicap. White flag is up. Off and racing in race four. It's the careers at dornandgroup.com novice handicap hurl. Two miles and just six flights ahead of them and as they head up the straight, Rocky Boya is the early leader. Close up near side, Navigator Jack and towards the inside, close to the early pace is changing the rules. Tightly grouped as they head on up to pass in front of the sand, Rocky Boya with changing the rules towards the inside. They're closely followed on the rail by McFeast alongside is Navigator Jack, the orange colours are well funded, towards the outside Tully Polenny, the blue and yellow towards the inner Dutch Schultz, alongside that one is a million bucks and they show in front of the favourite in mid-division at this stage, low style just ahead of Contraposto, which was faces on the rail, wide of them Sovereign Duke, Brookie between horses in a noseband and the overall back marker is Wild Dollar as they go to jump their first flight, Rocky Boya with on the inside 
changing the rules, not much to choose between them. Jay Shaw in a couple of lengths in front of Mac Fees, with alongside Navigator Jack, well funded, keeping to the outside and wider still Tully Polani as they rise at the second flight as they continue away from the stands and head for the turn that will bring them away into the back straight. Rocky Boy leads under Thomas Riley from on the inside changing the rules Mark Wallace. Tracking them is Navigator Jack Dunham Minor. The orange colours, well funded Jack Foley. Dutch Schultz has improved under Keith Dunahoo. One off the rail with the yellow cap to attract them. Mac Fees is on the rail with Eamon Fitzgerald. Wide of them is Tully Polani as they begin the run down the back straight. Still on the approach to flight number three. Rocky Boyer on the inside is changing the rules. They remain the leading pair as they approach the first of the three. In the back straight, Tully Polani is up on the outside to shade the third spot. Navigator Jack, well funded, is with them. Just behind them, Dutch Schultz, Mac Fies is on the inner as they clear that flight. And continue down the back straight. Rocky Boy by less than a length, changing the rules second, Tully Polani is third. Navigator Jack ahead of well funded and Dutch Schultz and Mac Fies. Behind them is a million bucks. And then towards the outside is Sovereign Duke. Alongside Sovereign Duke towards the inner is It Was Fate. They show just ahead of Contraposto towards the back at this stage, Wild Dollar. And the overall back marker as they head to what will be their second last flight is the favourite Low Style. Nearing the last flight, on the far side, Rocky Boy leads by just over a length, changing the rules, and will land in second. In third spot is Navigator Jack, and they're followed at this stage by well funded. On the outside is Tully Polani. Dutch Schultz tracks them with Mac Fees. Couple of lengths then to a million bucks as they continue around the turn that brings them out of the back straight and across towards what will be their final flight and a run in of almost three furlongs. Rocky Boya by over a length. Navigator Jack has moved through. Between horses, up on the outside, Tully Polani, well funded, is with them. Right with them is changing the rules towards the inside with the white cap as they near this final flight. Rocky Boy at the inside, towards the outside, Tully Polani. Well funded, pushed along, changing the rules, is trying to close. Brookie is making good headway behind him with a noseband as they make the turn for home. Rocky Boy, Dutch Schultz coming there, one off the rail. Around the outside, Tully Polani. Brookie is just behind him. Low Style has made good headway to chase them and then changing the rules as they head on up to stray Tully Polani. With the white cheek pieces leads Dutch Schultz. Brookie is tracking them. Low style trying to stay on down the outside and there in front of changing the rules. But heading inside the final furlong, Tully Polani. Brookie challenging. Low style into third and then Dutch Schultz. Tully Polani with Brookie challenging strongly. Stand side. They fight it out a few lengths ahead of Low Style. Tully Polani on the far side of Brookie as they go to the line. Tully Polani will win it for Georgie Benson. Brookie second, Low Style third clear of changing the rules. What a great moment for Georgie Benson. Georgie has been a big part of the Gordon Elliott yard for many years now and looked after some really good horses, cause of causes being one of them. She's ridden a winner at the Leopardstown Christmas Festival here against the Bros to boot on the 33 to one shot. Tully Polani is trained by Peter Flood. Great moment for a relatively small outfit, Kate, and the Jolly Boys syndicate who own this horse <laughs> are making their presence felt already, aren't they? Yes, they certainly are. It's a big win for uh, trainer Peter Flood as well. And, uh, you know, Georgie Benson, the storyteller, runs up in... Um, down Royal this afternoon, J Jamie Codd um, has jocked. She, he's taken the ride today where she's, I think, won two or three um, open point to points on him. But this is good compensation for Georgie um, to ride a good positive. She comes around the outside and she's good and positive on Tully Pole Alley here coming towards the last hurdle. It picks up out of her hands and it's just a matter. Um, he's always the eye catcher coming into the home straight. Yes, this was the decisive moment, wasn't it? Dutch Schultz looked menacing at this stage your own horse just got in behind a few at this stage kate did keep on late in the piece and low style who looked to be going nowhere down the back has actually stuck to the task really well after seemingly getting tapped for a toe but brookie in the end is the one who 
follows the winner through but could not get past. No, he certainly couldn't get past and uh, he looked like he was going to challenge. Um, but, uh, you know, Georgie Benson, she's gone for home, turning into the home straight and um, she, she's done it really, really nicely for her and it's great for her um, to get this winner against the professionals uh, here today. And uh, the winners, the owners are still making good noise here in the paddock and uh, they're going to definitely enjoy this winner. No question. Tully Paolani has already been a fine serve, and that's her fourth career win. Three of her jumps to go with her one on the flat. Um, I think the form might well work out to Brookie. Had won a maiden hurdle at Limerick in good style last time, and low style was felt to be a well handicapped horse coming here today. What's your thoughts on changing the rules, Kate? <laughs> As I say he has stayed on again in the closing stages. He, he has stayed on again. You know, he's a little bit of a question mark about him. There, you definitely think you want to step back up to two and a half miles. But, uh, you know, I think I said beforehand my concern was that the last hurdle wasn't in. It's jumping all about his, his game. And, uh, you know, it was a disadvantage not having that hurt last hurdle in straight. Yes, he's a good jumper, all right. Has to settle for a minor roll today behind Tully Pole Annie who is going to get a great cheer when she returns to the number one spot, Anthony. See, I'm, I'm not surprised that they're making noise. The owners, they are the Jolly Boys syndicate and a jolly old day for them and a big day for Georgie Benson. A really cool, calm, collected ride. She'd only ridden one professional other winner in her career. That was on the flat. That was for Sneezy Foster when Elite Trooper Grey caused a minor surprise. Well, this was a massive surprise and a big, big performance from both horse as jockey. Let's see how much of a surprise. There were bigger prices knocking around. 33 to 1. You could have got bigger earlier as well. Miss Georgie Benson, the winning jockey. Peter Flood, the winning trainer. Jolly Boy Syndicate, the delighted winning owner. Second, Brookie, 5 to 1. Third, Low Style, 4 to 1. We're changing the rules just out of the three, back and forth. Racing TV members won't miss a second of the action on RacingTV.com with dedicated live streams from every race course with Racing TV Extra. Mr. Race, every replay can be found on RacingTV.com alongside an unrivaled archive of interviews and features. You can even register for your next free race day through the Racing TV Club, including the weekend ticket. Make the most of your Racing TV membership on RacingTV.com today. Now, the last time we were at Down Royal, you might have seen across the bottom of your screen after the race, there was a steward's inquiry. It didn't affect the result. That was down to an inquiry held into exactly what happened at the, the second to last fence, which was ultimately broken. But the person with the flag was on the track and had to make a, a swift getaway. Thankfully, no one, no one hurt and, and no result changed either with Innovative keeping the race 16 to 1. We'll be back at Down Royal very shortly. For now, let's head back to Limerick and Framberry. Joined now by Ricky Doyle, who got a nice success here at Limerick on Longhouse Pole, better known nowadays, of course, as a chase for winded tests last year, and uh, gets a nice success here today. Well done, Ricky. Yeah, thank you. Um, he's obviously a high class um, chaser there, so this looked an, an ideal, um, an ideal race to get him back going for obviously roads leading back to Aintree, but uh, it was a nice stepping stone. Yeah. And uh, talks to the race it appeared. I know it's testing ground that he did not go that quickly for much of the race at least. No, it kind of to be honest, kind of nearly rode as a piece of work. I didn't. The plan wasn't to kind of make it, but at the same time, he is a staying chaser, so we needed something to go along. So we got it. Um, Philip came up sides in front of me and like that for the first mile. Um, we just loved the way, nearly warmed them up, as you say, and then from going out in the final circuit, we kind of increased their um, bit by bit and kind of turned it into a, a, um, a bit of a stay in race, yeah. Indeed, and uh, you're very strong for the last home. He just got a bit close to last, but he was away from quite quickly. Yeah, exactly. Um, like he's a, he is a proper big chaser. So even to be as tidy as he was at the last was um, very good of him. Um, he's a very clever horse. You know, every time kind of he was left in front of the ears, a prick. He's never doing too much, and when you get stuck into him, it is all there. So no, 
it was great to get on such a horse like him. So, indeed, it was a very nice performance, and uh, hopefully that sets him up for a return, as you said, potentially to Grand National, where he shaped very well last year for a long way. Yeah, exactly. Like he's only turning nine, so he's turning the right age for all them races. So. Um, yeah, it's a great start for the season for him anyway, and he'll only improve from it. Trainer knows how to train a Grand National horse as well. He does know better man for it. <laughs> Indeed he is. Martin Brazil, listen, well done there, Ricky. Nice one. Thank you. So, welcome back to Jan Royal. As we approach our fifth race, race five of seven races, our second race over the chase fences as well. This is the Met Collect Handicap Chase, run over two miles and four furlongs. Just a little piece of news as well, emerging from the previous race. Um, you will have seen there was a steward's inquiry. Well, the result was allowed to stand, but the second last fence has been omitted um, owing to some structural damage. So horses, runners in this race will be required to jump 12 fences instead of the 13 jumping efforts and the favorite here is the top weight number one know the game jim draper and jamie cod teaming up this horse running in the colors of the late mr newell who was a great supporter of racing in ireland and know the game was a winner at nace a very smart winner over two miles at nace six days ago carries a penalty here and has been in great form this season as well. Gordon Elliott's Walking the Walk is the second favourite. Sam Ewing is in the saddle. Walking the Walk has been a, a model of consistency since joining Gordon Elliott. It was formerly trained in the United Kingdom and has been kept busy by the team at Colin Tra. He was a winner at Tremor over an extended two and a half miles. And that was just under three weeks ago. Different track here at Down Royal. It's a little bit stiffer, a bit more of a galloping track. Patrick Rooney's High Street Fashion with Patrick O'Brien in the saddle is another last time out winner. A winner at Punchestown at the end of November. Here they are. Here's James Griffin with the call. Knox out on the inside to Blustery in third and then different strokes. Room to roam as they make the run towards the first. And it's Knox out on the inside of High Street Fashion, Blustery. And Room to Roam, the leading quartet in different strokes, makes it five. And then in behind is our patron saint, in company with Stable Companion. Magic C, and then definitely Darcy and Walk in the Walk as they stream out over the first. Finian's Row, mid-division, in company with Mason's Castle, Who's Houdini, Zagan Zag, Hollybank King, Know the Game, and Glen Miller Lodge as they continue the run downhill towards the next two. Monoxide on the inside of Blustery, Room to Roam third. Four High Street Fashion, five different strokes, and then comes our patron saint and Magic C in behind definitely Darcy bypassing this with defence damage in the previous race and it's Room to Roam stand side far side Monoxide in between Blustery High Street Fashion different strokes and brushing through the top there was our patron saint Magic C is in behind walking the walk definitely Darcy Mason's Castle and company with Finian's Row who's Hidini then Hollybank King Zag and Zig has Know the game and Glen Muller Lodge slightly detached rear of the field. Monoxide, Room to Rome, and Blustery the leading trio to High Street Fashion, and then comes Different Strokes and our patron saint in behind is Magic C racing together with Walking the Walk, and then definitely Darcy just ahead of Finian's Row. Reminders there for Magic C, Mason's Castle, and Who's Houdini, Hollybank King, and Zag and Zig, and Unseated Rider Who's Houdini. Know the game and tailed off is Glenmuller Lodge. But on towards the next, the third of three away from the stands. Monoxide has opened up a gap over Blustery and I am room to roam in high street fashion. And then comes in behind is our patron saint and walking the walk. Reminders for different strokes who's lost a good few places. But Monoxide has opened up a clear lead over Blustery high street fashion and room to roam. And then comes our patron saint to walk in the walk. Definitely Darcy Finian's row, Hollybank King. Then in behind is Different Strokes and Company with Mason's Castle. And then Know the Game. And then dropping back also is Magic C as they stream out over that. And a well strung out field. Glenmuller Lodge is tailed off but continuing. And Zag and Zig only has one behind it. Monoxide to Blustery, High Street Fashion. Donning the colours of Paddy Bowler, a dual Galway hurdle winner. And then in fourth place is Room to Rome. And in behind that is Walking the Walk. And our patron saint, Finian's Row, definitely Darcy, Hollybank King, know the game in Mason's Castle, different strokes, Zag and Zig, and then tailing off is Magic C, 
and still continuing Glenmuller Lodge. But Monoxide in tight over that, two and second blustery, room to roam, high street fashion with the cheek pieces, walking the walk, the gold stag's head on a blue body. And being pushed along away from that back of that fence is our patron saint, Finian's Row, being ridden cold, is beginning to creep a little bit closer, but Monoxide, room to roam, walking the walk. And there's going to be a taxi at the line there for the road brooder. A cab hailed at the previous two fences. Monoxide gets a reminder after landing over that. Monoxide, bunny hops once again to Blustery, room to roam, high street fashion, walking the walk. Finian's Row know the game and Hollybank King both have made plenty of ground. And under pressure is our patron saint. But Monoxide, Blustery. Monoxide, Blustery, room to roam. On the inside with the white cheek pieces, the scarlet and green of High Street Fashion. Then comes Finian's Row, the stars on the sleeves. In behind Walking the Walk, Hollybank King, and Know the Game Under Pressure. And then definitely Darcy, our patron saint of Mason's Castle. High, and then Zag and Zag in different strokes of Glenmerlor Lodge. But High Street Fashion takes over. Monoxide been overtaken on the inside by Walking the Walk. Room to Roam, Hollybank King, and Finian's Row is being slowly smuggled into the race as they have two to jump and it's high street fashion walking the walk room to roam finian's row another mistake by monoxide hollybank king and know the game has plenty of lengths to make up but it's walking the walk on the outside of high street fashion but high street fashion is battling back on the inside and it's high street fashion with the cheek pieces the blinker walking the walk then in behind is finian's row room to roam know the game and hollybank king one left to jump walking the walk and high street fashion high street fashion the scarlet the royal blue and gold of walking the walk the yellow and blue of finian's row who's beginning to roll high Home, down towards the wings of the final fence and as High Street Fashion walks the walk and Finian's Row walking the walk stand side the far side of High Street Fashion Finian's Row but High Street Fashion is battling back walking the walk at High Street Fashion High Street Fashion running a little bit wonderly across the track walking the walk and it's a winner for the Jordanstown based Roonies of, of High Street Fashion beating walking the walk Finian's Row know the game and Rune to Rome and Monoxide High Street Fashion is first past the post, beating Walking the Walk. I think we'll definitely want to look at the head-on, though, because it looked like there was definite contact between them in the closing stages. As it stands, High Street Fashion is a 7-1 to one winner. Patrick O'Brien claiming the 7 for Patrick Rooney and has been pretty gritty to, to keep his position. They, they were going hammering tongs at it from around about the time that Monoxide started to fade away. It, the complexion of the race was essentially, would Monoxide be able to hold on to the advantage or would it set it up for the horses who were following? And ultimately, it was the latter. High Street Fashion was in a great position to strike. It, it did look like he just wandered to his left under Patrick O'Brien after the last uh, it, and probably impeding Sam Ewing and, um, and Gordon Elliott's walking the walk. It's just about to come. At this point, walking the walk is in front. But there's definite contact there, and it looked like there was there as well, and maybe just another point before the line as well. We will see. The winning distance looks like a roundabout ahead. So watch this space for exactly what might happen. But yeah, now we can have a look at it in a, in a little bit better detail because the head-on is probably going to be the, the most informative and best angle to have a look at. The, the action, as we say, comes after the last. High street fashion on the left, walking the walk, on the right and walking the walk I think definitely heads high street fashion who is then it, the onus is on him to fight back and he's come a fair way over there they're actually okay on those two it's maybe that last bump it may be the just the last bump and potentially there to see a steward's inquiry hasn't yet been called we're hearing but we will we will await with interest because it looked like there was definite contact between the two. As it stands, High Street Fashion is first past the post, the winning distance around about a head. But given the evidence that the head-on just showed us, you'd be surprised if at least they didn't have a look at it. Both jockeys, quite, quite key, have their whips in the hands that would suggest their mounts might just drift over a little bit. But we await with interest. But it wouldn't be Stevens Day without a bit of High Street Fashion. Stewart's inquiry has been called. Stewart's inquiry has been called. So. We head over to Limerick now for their next race. The 208, they're lining up for the Mr. Binman Mayor's handicap hurdle over two and a half miles. And Kilbury Warrior for Oliver McKeonan is currently at the head of the market with Willie Mullins' bell metal just in behind. 
Let's have a look at the market in full. Kilbury Warrior is your seven to two favourite. Nine to two, Bell Metal. Missy, six to one, 17 to two. It's all about Eve. Henning, 10 to one with Getaway Goldie, 12 to one bar those. Let's head over to Lisa O'Neill and Fran Barry. Cracking Mayor's handicap hurl here today. Kilbury Warrior is a short price favourite, Lisa. A lot of gonna be a lot of pace on here in testing ground. She stayed on strongly to win Redley, having built up a wide margin through the race and winning a fair house recently. Yeah, as we mentioned on the extra channel, Fran, she actually carries seven pound penalty. She won six days ago, but she's tech she's supposed to go up five pounds in official rating, so she's technically two pounds worse off in here today. Thought she was value for the winning margin at Fairy House the last day. Don't think she'll get it as easy at the front end today. I'm very interested, number three, Bell Metal, very good bumper performer. In and out, if you like, over hurls. This does the first time she's got testing ground since her bumper days. Yeah, I was a little bit disappointed with her over hurls so far, but maybe with these conditions, they'll definitely suit her. She's an official rating of 116. She's been tried over various trips, and she's back to the two mile four today after we last seen her at three mile in Punchstown. This is her seasonal debut. If she's fit and ready to rock, gets her best form back, she could be the one to beat. Crack and handicap hurl. You can make case for a lot of runners in this race. A lot of pace on Kilbury Warrior, the likely front runner. Under Richie Cotter, number seven. Our mayor's had to get Burnham. And Kilbury Warrior sets out in front, trying to, having made all to win at Ferry House last week. And similar tactics being employed by Richie Condon, goes off in front by about three to four lengths. Over Getaway Goldie, Carrie Carroll. Martha Devine races four with Queen Jane on that one's inside in the striped jacket, followed then by It's All About Eve, who's in front of Bow Metal and Robin De Glory with Global Equity. And Next to the field behind Global Equity, races Rappel early. So as they make the right-handed swing to bring them towards the first of the 12 flights, and it's Kilbury Warriors out in front by about half a dozen lengths or so as they come to the first of the 12 flights. From Getaway Goldie, who raced in second, joined th three lengths back by Carrie Carroll in third. Four behind those is It's All About Eve on the outside of Queen Jane. Martha Devine and Henning are next to the field as they jump flight number two. And behind Henning races Bell Metal, who is a little bit awkward at that one. And that one's inside is Robin De Glory, followed then by Global Equity. With next to the field behind those, they jump that third flight is Missy Yee, with Rebel Early towards the outside of the group, followed then by Chacha Dancer. And the back marker is Vera Verto. So they jump three and heading towards the flight at the top of the hill. Kilbury Warrior continues to take them along under Richie Condon, leads by about half a dozen lengths or so as they come to this fourth flight. Over racing in second is Getaway Goldie. Carrie Carroll is going to jump a third on the outside of Queen Jane. Martha Devine is next in company with, on that one's outside, races It's All About Eve. Followed then by Bell Metal and Global Equity with Henning in the yellow cap with the white jacket next on the inside of that one, the red jacket of Robin De Glory. Rebel Early is next, a length in front of Missy Yee and a few lengths then to the back two who are Chacha Dancer and Vera Verto. So continuing the downhill run towards the straight for the first time and heading in towards flights five and six and Kilbury Warrior. Just coming back to the field, not blazing such a trail as it did the other day. It still leads by about a couple of lengths over Getaway Goldie who races in second, Carrie Carroll third. In splendid isolation on the inside, the red and black striped jacket of Queen Jane. Martha Devine is next in the green colors, followed then by It's All About Eve, who's in front of Bell Metal. Behind Bell Metal, as they jump this fifth flight, is Robin to Glory on the inside. Global Equity jumps up on the outer. Bell Metal, another mistake. Henning with Missy E on the outside, followed by Rebel Early, Chacha Dancer, and Vera Verde. At the flight, which was the last in a circuit's time. And the lead continues to be held by Kilbury Warrior, who's going to set out in the final on the final circle with a three length lead. In second place is Carrie Carroll on the outside of Getaway Goldie. Length and a half then to Queen Jane, who races on the inner. Behind Queen Jane is Martha Devine, followed on by It's All About Eve with Robin De Glory and Global Equity, Missy E on the outside in the Diabolo jacket, followed then by Bell Metal and Henning. Rebel Early is on the outside of that trio, followed then by Chacha Dancer in the back marker being pushed along for its troubles is Vera Verto. But continuing the right handed swing, and quite a, a reasonably tightly punched group head out on the head into the entrance to the back straight with six flights left to jump and Kilbury Warrior continues to take them along. Only a length and a half in front for Queen Jane has now moved through on the inside to join Isha for second with both Getaway Goldie and Carrie Carroll. 
Length then to Missy E, who makes ground on the outside to go five. Martha Devine is six, followed then by Robin De Glory on the inside of Global Equity. A length then to one is just losing its uh, pitch slightly, it's all about Eve. Rebel Early is next with Vera Verto making a place or two on the outside of both Bell Metal and Chacha Dancer, and Henning has dropped out to be the drop back to be the back marker. Over the flight five from the finish, and Kirby Warrior as they continue the uphill run just begins to inject a little bit more pace into it as they come to the fourth last, just paddle through it, but lands three in front of Queen Jane on the inside of Carrie Carroll. Missy Yee is four, getaway goalie five. Robin De Glory is next on the inside of Global Equity. Martha Devine and Chacha Dancer are next, but a tightly bunch field and a wide open race as they head towards the top of the hill and towards the flight three from the finish inside the final five furlongs. And Kilbury Warrior continues to take them along. Missy Yee has now moved into second. Carrie Carroll third on the outside. Queen Jane is next with Global Equity. And behind those, continuing to make a progress as Chacha Dancer has now gone ahead of Getaway Goldie and they're followed by Martha Devine who's being ridden along ahead of Vera Verto. Heading down towards the turn into the straight and all change up front as Kilby Warrior relinquishes the lead and it's Missy E has come through to lead now for Gary Noonan. Leads from Carrie Carroll racing second on the outside. Global Equity pushed up between horses to try to join issue with them but a length between the trio and they've opened up a gap of some four to five lengths back to Chacha Dancer, Queen Jane and Kilby Warrior and Martha Devine next. Turning in towards the final two flights, and it's Missy e, the leader, and now extends, goes on by two to three lengths. Over Carrie Carroll, now comes under pressure in second. Global Equity is third, clear of Chacha Dancer, and staying on behind those again is Martha Devine. But down to the second last flight, it's Missy e, who's out in front, just gets in a little bit close, but lands three lengths in front of Carrie Carroll in second, Global Equity third. But down towards the final flight, it's Missy e, and Gary Noonan out in front is going to jump at four to five lengths of the lead. At the last, Missy e stands off, it jumps away and stumbles on landing. And opens the door for Carrie Carroll and Global Equity. But Missy E is going to pick up again now for Gary Noonan and go on by a length and a half. Missy E wins it from its second place, Carrie Carroll, third Global Equity. And they finish clear of Vera Verto four, Martha Devine five, and Queen Jane six. Oh, that was heart in your mouth stuff if you had taken the price of that Missy E. But Gary Noonan had the race at her mercy when making it. A, a bad blunder at the last, it has to be said. But ultimately, such was her superiority. She's been able to gather herself and put her head straight down and challenge again. Gary Noonan, the jockey, Owen McCarty, the winning trader. She came in, in not in bad form. It wasn't long ago that she was winning at, at Wexford. But bar for this, this mistake at the last, or the, this was the second last, but at the, at the last, then she would have absolutely bolted in. I, don't, I think it's completely fair to say, but she did open the door back up to Carrick Carroll. Ultimately, I mean, oh, oh, a horrible mistake. But as we say, such was her superiority that she was able to just pick up where she left off. She wasn't actually headed, to be honest. It, she, she had the race at her mercy. She nearly chucked it away, but she's had enough in the locker to hold it off as well. Cool, calm and collected from Gary Noonan there because it could have been a very different kind of story. Oh, she almost goes she almost goes right down on her nose as well. So a good sit as well. So that was Limerick. And we can head off to Leopardstown. The big one up next, we can head back to Gary O'Brien. Taken by Phil Dorr. I was probably a little bit disappointed. Next up for us here at Leopard Sounds, the feature event on St Stephen's Day, the brand new Racing Post app, Nova Steeplechase, and delighted to welcome Brian Orr from the sponsors of Racing Post to tell us a little bit more. Brian, you're very welcome. You enjoying the afternoon so far? It's, it's absolutely tremendous. I must say it's uh, just a pleasure to be here at Leopard's Town. Um, I haven't been here in quite some time. I've just been out in the stands there, hearing the roar of the crowd. Yeah, the last winner was 33 to 1, and I couldn't hear the commentator <laughs> speak. It was that loud. It was fantastic. Yeah, the syndicate, the syndicate made their presence felt there, that's for sure. I don't know whether we'll have a 33 to 1 shot win your race, Brian, but just tell us a little bit more, if you don't mind, about the Racing Post app. That's obviously in the title. Yeah, that's it. Um, so, yeah, we've, uh, we've obviously relaunched um, uh, the, the new Racing Post app. Um, it's obviously it's free to download. Um, you can... For race scores lucky to be here today, you can you can download it on the QR code for those guys at home. Simply just go to racingpost.com slash mobiles and you can get it on iOS, the Apple Store or, or Google Play. And uh, fantastic features. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, we're, we're really excited about it. There's a lot of new features yet to come. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 
It's the continuation of a long-running sponsorship here with Leopardstown as well. You guys obviously feel this is a good fit here, Brandon. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, I think Richard Forrestal uh, summed it up perfectly in the in the card. It, it just showcases the racing post commitment to uh, to racing, and uh, no finer spot than Leopardstown. Especially in the sunshine. And we've got five quality horses as well, Brian. Have you got any insight for us as to who might come out on top? Certainly no, no insight, but um, Saint Roar, Saint Roar, however, he's, um, he's only beaten on his chase debut by, by Phil Dore, and I thought the price discrepancy was maybe a bit, a bit too big. Well, he's only runner, had a couple of winners already today. Can't mark a no, uh, knock a man in form, so uh, Saint Roar for me. Well, what it's worth, I agree with you, but. Ah. Who knows, it might not be a lot. Brian, it's great to catch up and we hope you enjoy the race. Thanks very much. Appreciate Top stuff. We've seen some excellent renewals of our next race, the brand new racing post at Novice Chase. The first grade one of the Leopardstown Christmas Festival, seven in total across the four days. And the Curtain Razor is a bang up to scratch renewal when you consider some of the horses who have won this, the likes of Duvan, Min, Footpad and Fernie Hollow. Well, all of them trained by Willie Mullins. He doesn't have the favourite, though. Sam Watt is the second favourite for him at 3-1. to one. Fieldor, who last year bolted up in the Knight Frank Juvenile Hurdle, is now an odds-on favourite to do, well, to do it again, Gary. What do you reckon? So, a fantastic race to look forward to here at Leopardstown. Fieldor versus Sam Watt, round two. Fieldor had the better of the arguments. Uh, Navin on the respective chase and debuts and is strongly fancied to confirm his superiority today but Willie Mullins already with a couple of winners bagged here on day one at Leopardstown I'm sure we'll have San Juan a bit sharper than was the case last time and throw hollow games into the mix as well I mean the other two are no slouches either Kate Midnight Run and Visionary and do you think it's a well up to scratch edition yes it's up to, it's a very very high class and um, grade one novice chase this and uh, you know everything we want to see here at um, the Leopardstown Christmas Festival of course Visionarian was a grade three winner um, at the Galway Festival and Midnight Run of course won that broke his maiden over fences um, in that grade two chase at Punchestown the last day he's got they both got plenty of experience on their side compared to the three others who have only had one run over fences both of the, or the between them all and um, of course Hollow Games won, Phil Dorr won and San Roy can he break his maiden over fences in this grade one chase it will be a good feat and Willie Mullins I'm not going to question him questioned him in the second <laughs> I <laughs> was wrong <laughs> there is Gornelli it's been a relatively quiet day for him so far I think did he have a winner down at Limerick earlier Kate I think he had won the three-year-old three hurdle, hurdle yeah. down there but no joy here at Leopardstown as yet, though. The horse in the first certainly ran a very, uh, the second race, I should say, ran very well. So they're coming in to the tape for our feature event, the brand new racing post app, Novice Chase. Let's see if Phil Dor can make it two out of two of the larger obstacles. Looks like Sam Raw is going to drop in today. White flag is raised. Off and racing in our feature, the brand new racing post app Novice Chase, grade one, over two miles in the furlong and running up the straight, spread across the track, visionary and towards the left, hollow games towards the right, midnight run close up between them, just ahead of field door, and San Roy held up at the back of the five runner field as they reached their first fence, visionary and lead, led over towards the near side with the nose band. Goes on from Hollow Games over towards the inner. The grey is filled over between them, midnight run. And a few legs to drift in the early stages is San Roi as they come to pass the judge, having jumped one of their 11 fences. Visionary and Keith Dunhu, a narrow leader. Hollow Games on the inside, Dennis O'Regan, close up between them, midnight run in the maroon and white colours. Tom Hamilton, they're tracked by the four year old field door, the odds on favourite Jack Kennedy, and San Roi at the back of the field under Mark Walsh as they complete the turn that brings them to fence number two the visionary and towards the outside narrow leader over midnight run and hollow games field door keeping to the outside San Ra at the back as they continue away from the enclosures to fence number three visionary and leads pursuing trio close behind hollow games the inside field door the outer and with them is midnight run in fourth and a little deliberate at the back of the field with San Ra as they go into the turn it'll bring them away to fence number four still a good run before they reach it eight more fences to jump 
In the lead vision area, the hollow game's through on the inside, the way to fill door, close to the outer. Midnight run is with them between horses and San Ross still at the back of the field, but only about four or five lengths off the leader. And that leader continues to be Visionarian as they reach this next fence. Visionarian by just a length. Phil Doors has jumped up on the outside to go second. Hollow Game is the inside. They both jumped a slightly better than Midnight Run. And two and a half lengths of drift at the back with San Ra as they continue on to their next fence. The second of the fence is in the back straight. Visionarian leads. By over a length, Midnight Run has moved through on the inside of Phil Door. Hollow Games remains close up to their inner in fourth. San Ra at the back of the field, four lengths off the pace as they continue on to the next, where they have just over a mile to race. Visionarian by three parts of a length, Midnight Run and Field Door together, a length and a half to Hollow Games and San Ra getting a little closer to the outside as they all jump that one well and head on to the next. They have five fences to jump in the brand new racing post at Novice Chase and Visionarian continues to show the way under Keith Dunhu. Midnight run, Tom Hamilton second. Phil Door, Jack Kennedy a close third on the outside. The, uh, mistake there by Midnight Run. Drops back to dispute the third spot as they continue on to the next. Visionarian out in front leads by about two and a half lengths. Phil Door second. Hollow Games moving through on the inside. Ahead of Midnight Run and San Ross. They jump this one. Visionarian led. The Gordon Elliott pair, Phil Door and Hollow Games is nearest pursuers and San Ross trying to improve on the inside of Midnight Run. As they head to the last fence on the far side, the ditch, three from home. Visionarian leads, Phil Doar the definite second. Hollow Games third, Midnight Run trying to improve again. And San Ra very much in touch as they jump it and make the turn out of the back. A mistake there by Phil Doar. Phil Doar dropped back from second to fourth and is driven along as they turn and head for the second last. Visionarian leads, chased by Phil Doar improving again between horses. Midnight run the outside, Hollow Games with them on the inner, then San Roa away from the second last. Visionarian from Phil Doar closing in second. Midnight run is towards the outside third. San Roa is fourth and Hollow Games struggling at the back of the field as they make the turn for home. Visionarian with the noseband. The grey is Phil Doar to the outside midnight run and poised behind them looking for a run is San Roa as they head down to the final fence. Visionary and Phil Doar in the red and white coming there in the centre and towards the outside San Roa as they near their final obstacle. Visionary in the inside San Roa and between them Phil Doar on the run in. San Roa stand side. Visionary and over towards the inner. Phil Doar back in third and they're clear. 100 yards to race. And it's San Roa and Mark Walsh with the advantage. Visionarian sticking to his task well, but San Roa will win for Willie Mullins, Mark Walsh, and JP McManus. Visionarian second, Phil Doar third, Hollow Games fourth, and last of the five, Midnight Run. Phil Doar had the better of the argument at Navin, but on the big day, the grade one, Sam has turned the tables comprehensively. It's a treble for Willie Mullins on the opening day here at Leopardstown. Mark Walsh producing San Juan from off the pace to win pretty decisively from Visionary and a huge run from him in second. He really put his experience to good use today and Phil Doar, you'd have to say disappointing. Mistake three out and we might have a look back at it, Kate. He didn't do the winner any favours at all because San Ra pretty much ran into the back of him after it. No, he certainly didn't, Gary. It'd be interesting to see if we can get um, to see that again. But San Ra, he's really come on from that chasing debut at Navin. And, uh, you know, I said it beforehand, you don't want to question Willie Mullins. He pitched him in here. He's broke his maiden in grade one company. Yeah, we just missed it, unfortunately, as we joined them here, going to two out. Visionary and so good through the air there again. And Phil Doar... Just having to be chased along to go after him. That mistake obviously put him on the back foot, Kate. I don't know whether I'd want to be making too many excuses for him, though. As I say, Sam Waugh wasn't done any favours in that. Mark Walsh has ridden Sam Waugh with real confidence today. And, look, it's easy with hindsight, but Willie Mullins relying solely on this fella in the grade one after being beaten by Phil Lohr, I suppose. Clues were there, weren't they? Clues were there, definitely were there. He didn't pitch him up in the beginners tomorrow. He felt he had the experience he, after Navin uh, to go into this company and um, he's really um, served um, his trainer well. And um, I love the way he picks up into, inside the last furlong here, here, his class really coming to the fore. Yes, this was a horse who was capable of running well in a champion hurdle. Here we are. You just wonder whether Mark Walsh would go for the run between them. I think he made the right, well, obviously <laughs> now he made the right decision, but I think watching it, you were thinking if you were with San Roy, you'd like to see him maybe 
bring the horse in today like that's what he did and just a safe jump there at the last from that point on he always gave the impression he was going to pick off the other two hollow games found out today Kay, in this class over that distance just looked like he was flat out from the get-go. I'd say a step up to two and a half will see him to um, better effects. He jumped well on the hole, but probably just going a gear quicker than he would have liked. I'd say stepping back up and trip and um, will see him more comfortable. And Samoa returning to three to one second favourite, thrusting himself forward as a potential candidate perhaps for Spring Festival honours later on, but he's won uh, grade one here at the Christmas festival at Leopard Sound. I almost said Dublin Racing Festival there, Kate, but we've to wait a little bit longer. I'm sure every chance that's where this guy will be going now, won't he? The yes. Arkell at the Dublin Racing Festival. Yes, you'd imagine that's where he should be heading. And it'll be interesting to see um, where Gordon Elliott goes next with Phil Dorr. Um, uh, to me, he always looked like even a horse that would um, appreciate it. Looks like, um, just looking in the background there, he looked like they're looking up at his hind um, fetlock joints maybe he has a bad cut from that fall or from that that, that, that mistake at three out um, so hopefully he is non-scaved um, by that but um, just, just a few people pointing at things as we see him walking away ok we'll keep an eye on that but there is our winner Sam Watt ridden with supreme confidence by Mark Walsh and the horse have indicated that Anthony and when you're that talented, Gary, you can break your maiden over fences in grade one company. A different type this year, well, this, this run at least, Sam Wah, three to one winner for Mark Walsh, Willie Mullins and JP McManus. They take the first grade one of the four day festival, a huge run in defeat from Visionari in 25 to one with field or a bad mistake, just as they were about to come into the straight, ultimately putting him on the back foot. So, we've just seen Samoa take the first grade one of the, of the day. We'll be seeing Limerick as well, which heading to Limerick. Gary Noonan survived a last hurdle drama. We can hear from him now. Very good performance by Missy to win again on tests and conditions here at Limerick today. Up in grade, Gary Noonan, you're back on board and a nice performance. Well done. Yeah, no, it was a lovely performance. Um, she's very effect effective on that ground. Um, she had nice weight in her back and she'd done it well in the end. Couldn't be more happy with her. Travelled strongly and looked all to be going to plan between the second last and last. The last bit of drama though. A small bit, yeah. Um, I thought, to be honest, I was in control of the race the whole way. Uh, she can be a little bit keen, just got her to switch off early on. Made a bit of ground coming downhill, slotted into my position. Going up the back, I was travelling everywhere. And just, I said I'd leave her roll off the bend and with the rest of the bed. And there was a small bit of a scare at the back at last, but <laughs> thankfully she found the leg. She did indeed just seemed to meet, meet her in a good stride, just in landing, pecked and lost her balance, if you like. It was just like there was a hole in the ground for all the world at the back of it, and she just stood into it, but she, she was good. She was indeed. It's a nice performance there, plenty of muck on you. She loves it. Cheers. Thanks very much, lads. From Gold Cups to Grand Nationals, the latest big races to the famous clashes of the past, Racing TV's YouTube channel has it all. Rachel Blackmore, History in the National, Manila Times win. Catch up on episodes of shows that you might have missed or enjoy hours of replays of some of your favourite races from the last 20 years. Simply head to YouTube and search for Racing TV. You'll never be far away from watching the next big race. Over to Dan Royal, where, by the way, the previous result stands. The stewards did have a look at it, but didn't judge the interference was enough to reverse the result. So result stands as per first past the post High Street fashion, taking our previous race. We're moving on to a, a really intriguing renewal of this uh, McMahon McKay hospitality and leisure hunters chase. It usually is because it usually has the likes of Vosselet in it. He was favourite for a long time. He drifted out. He's second favourite behind the storyteller, six to four. Not too long ago since he was a grade one winner in his own right, but a potential superstar in this sphere and six to four. 13 to two, Dawkin Cock, who beat Vosselet in this last year. Snow Falcon, 17 to two. 20 to one, Coastal Tiep. Down the highway, 33s with Samurai Cracker. And Dilro 50 to 1 with 8 going to post. And Gordon Elliott looking for another winner on the afternoon across the card. Bernard, the storyteller's the favourite. Yes, one of the highlights of the day here at Dan Royal. The Hunters chase for the Hunters past the Panthers. And 
We started off this morning with three former Grade 1 winners in the field. The storyteller, Snow Falcon and Brain Power. Now, alas, Brain Power was declared a non-runner earlier today. So we're down to the two former Grade 1 winners, the storyteller who, of course, was um, the winner of the, the Grade 1 Ladbrokes Champion Chase here just over two years ago over course and distance and indeed Snow Falcon as well who's been a, a fine servant and continues to be a fine servant indeed for Noel Mead. But the market leader at the moment is David Christie's Vosslet. Barry O'Neill, one of Ireland's leading amateur riders in the saddle. Vosslet has been a, a real revelation, particularly last season and, and into this season as well. He won the champion Hunter's Chase at Stratford. He's run well at Punchestown. He was a winner of the Hunter's Chase, the big Hunter's Chase at Ferry House as well um, last Easter. And he actually, he was third in this contest last year behind Dorking Cock, who reopposes again today for Stuart Crawford. But the, the real interesting horse is the storyteller, former grade one winner, representing the all conquering Gordon Elliott team. Another crack amateur rider in the saddle in the shape of Jamie Codd. And this fellow has had three runs and point of points this season. His last two runs were at Quakerstown at the beginning of December and prior to that um, at Nakarn and Fermanagh um, in the middle of November. Snow Falcon represents Noel Mead and Patricia Hunt. Pat Taff, Tom Taff's son, is on board. This fellow was a runner-up to notice the close in, in Dromahan in the middle of November, so he'll have had a nice warm-up for this contest. Stuart Crawford from Larne, well, he's doubly represented in the race courtesy of Dorking Cock, ben Crawford, the choice of Ben Crawford as well, who would, um, would suggest that Dorking Cock is, is fancied over his stablemate Coastal Tia, both representing Stuart Crawford. Dorking Cock was the winner of this contest last year and um, he was last seen um, when well beaten in the, the big hunter's chase at Punchestown at the Punchestown Festival at the end of April. Quick counter through the remainder of the card. We have Samurai Cracker in there for Caroline McAlden. Noel McParland taking the ride down the highway for Kieran Murphy. Timmy Love is on board. Timmy, who works for Franz Gallo at the moment, granddaughter of Irish Grand National winning trainer Dot Love. And we've also got David Christie's Dilro with Abby Fitzgibbon in the saddle as well. So a competitive enough renewal, but the market suggests it's going to be a three-way go here between Vosslet, the reigning champion Hunter Chaser, the storyteller, former grade one winner here at Dan Royal, and Snow Falcon, who's been a high-class runner for Noel Mead and has taken well to life between the flags. Barry O'Neill aboard Vosslet, Jamie Codd aboard the storyteller, Pat Taff aboard Snow Falcon, Snow Falcon in the, the pink colours, Dorking Cock, Ben Crawford in the all blue, towards the right of the picture, they're off and running, here's James Griffin with the call for the Hunter's Chase. Hunter Steeple Chase and Dill Rowe has jumped off detached from the other seven as Dorking Cock has the lead to in second is Vosselet and then in third is down the highway behind that Samurai Cracker outside of it is Coastal Tiep and then Snow Falcon and the Storyteller and a break back to Dilro who's just jumped the first now and as the field go on and Dorking Cock has the lead to in second is Vosselet on third with the white face on the outside Coastal Tiep and along the inside with the blinkers is down the highway and then comes the storyteller Snow Falcon and Samurai Cracker and a break back to Dilro as they jump out over the second and Dorking Cock has company now in Vosselet the clear third is Coastal Tiep and then down the highway racing together with the storyteller Snow Falcon out jumped by Samurai Cracker and then comes Dilro as they steadily make their way on to the next. And Dorking Cock and Vosile. Coastal TF third. Then comes the storyteller. Down the highway, Snow Falcon and Samurai Cracker. And then comes Dilro. As Dorking Cock along the rail. Widest is Vosile of the leading pair. 
And then behind, Samurai Cracker down the highway. Coastal Tiap, Snow Falcon and the Storyteller. And those five covered by about two and a half lengths. And then a break back to Dilrose. The, these eight make their way down towards the next. Once again, two fences in the home straight, bypassing the middle of the three that should be jumped. Dorkin, Cock and Vossile, Coastal Tiep, down the highway. Snow Falcon, Samurai Cracker and the Storyteller and Dilro. As Vossile joins Dorking Cock. Then a couple of lengths back to the Coastal Tiep, down the highway. The Storyteller and Snow Falcon, Samurai Cracker and Dilro. So still a good furlong and a bit before they leave the ground. And Dorking Cock, in the hands of Ben Crawford. Two in second place, Vossele and Barry O'Neill. Then in third, Coastal Tiep and Stephen Connor. And then down the highway, Timmy Love, Snow Falcon, Pat Taft, the storyteller, Jamie Codd, Samurai Cracker, Noel McParland. And then comes Abby Fitzgibbon and Dill Rowe. As down the highway and Snow Falcon had a coming together. So up in front of the judge and a circuit to go in the McMahon McKay Hospitality and Leisure Hunter Steeplechase. And Vossele stands side, far side, Dorking Cock. And then in third, Coastal TF. Stuart Crawford saddling two out of the leading three. Then down the highway. And Snow Falcon, Samurai Cracker going the shortest route, the storyteller. And Dill Rope, away from the stands they go. Three fences on this part of the track, the middle of them being an open ditch. Dork and Cock and Vossele. Then comes Coastal TF. And down the highway, Snow Falcon, Samurai Cracker and the storyteller, Dill Rope. Down towards the ditch. And Dork and Cock. In trainer Stuart Crawford's own light blue and dark blue colours. The far side of it in the purple and yellow and red of Vossele. And then comes the red with the white panel. Is Coastal Tiep, the Cerise of Snow Falcon, the Quartered of Samurai Cracker. And then the dark blue and yellow, the Storyteller, the Lilac and Purple down the highway. And then a break uh, back to the red and green of Dilro. As they begin the run into the back straight once again towards their starting point. And Dorking, Cock and Vossele dispute the lead. Two in third place, Coastal TF. On its inside is Snow Falcon and Samurai Cracker. The storyteller just ahead of down the highway. And still a break of about half a dozen lengths back to Dilro. But Dorking Cock, the overall leader by half a length to Vossele. Then comes Snow Falcon, Coastal TF, and Samurai Cracker. Disputing third place. The storyteller down the highway and Dilro. Dorking Cock with the lead. Vossele in second. On the inside, Samurai Cracker, three wide Coastal Tiep and in between a Snow Falcon. And the Storyteller tracking Coastal Tiep and down the highway. And then Dilro through their starting point. And Dork and Coxhill with the lead. Winner of this race a year ago. Two in second place, Vossele, who chased him home in third. Then Coastal Tiep, Snow Falcon, a former winner of the Kerry National. And then the Storyteller, grade one winner in his pomp. And Samurai Cracker down the highway in Dilro, although last is beginning to edge a little bit closer. Dorking Cock and Vossele, Coastal Tiep and Samurai Cracker, then the Storyteller in company with Snow Falcon down the highway in Dilro. Dorking Cock, ears pricked, eyes on his next jump to Vossele and Coastal Tiep, who edges a little bit closer. Then Snow Falcon, the Storyteller, out jumped there by Snow Falcon and Samurai Cracker down the highway in Dilro. Dorking Cock. Ben Crawford and Dorking Cock, Vossele in second, Barry O'Neill in third, Coastal Tiep, Stephen Connor, but Dorking Cock and Vossele still continue to dispute the lead, stride for stride. Coastal Tiep in third, along the inside, in Alan McCauld in silk, Samurai Cracker, and then the Cerise of the Hunts and Snow Falcon, and the Sloan's the Storyteller, going for a little bit of better ground out wide, then back along the rail, is the Kildare Partnerships down the highway and a break back to David Christie's Dilro with Dorking Cock yet to be headed Vossele ahead back in second Coastal Tiep three wide Samurai Cracker then comes Snow Falcon down the highway the storyteller and push comes to shove for the storyteller but travelling well on the front end is Dorking Cock and Vossele Coastal Tiep Snow Falcon Samurai Cracker then comes the storyteller down the highway and reminders for Dilro but the sprint is on down the hill and in the centre, Vossele, either side, the representatives of Bally Lesson, Dorking Cock and Coastal Tiep. Coastal Tiep with the white face, Dorking Cock the far side, stand side to Coastal Tiep. In the centre, Vossele, Dorking Cock. Ben Crawford looks as though he's been travelling the most confident of the th leading three jockeys. Vossele in second, Coastal Tiep, Snow Falcon down towards the wings of the final fence. Dorking Cock, Vossele, first and third last year, they battle it out, and Dorking Cock. 
Ben Crawford is pushing Dorkin Cock clear of Voss today. The first time he's resorted to the Persuader. And Dor Dorkin Cock is hanging fire in the front end. Handed the advantage to Vossolet. And at the line, Vossolet has robbed him. Vossolet to Dorkin Cock. Coastal Tiem, Snow Falcon. Then comes Sammy Wright Cracker down the highway. Storyteller and Dilro. Fourth fence as they come to the fence at the top of the hill, number five. And it's adamantly chosen, who leads by three parts of length from Jerry Colomb. Aaron's day on the outside of the trail, followed then by Kilcrot. And the back marker of the five is, uh, is uh, adamantly chosen. So they've done the jumping in the back straight and head on the downhill run to bring them towards the turn in for the first time. And no change in the order. Little enough change in the tempo, adamantly chosen. Here's the back mark of the quintet, headed by authorised art and Brian Cooper as they continue the run downhill from Jerry Colomb. Within half a length and second for Jordan Gainford. Jordan Gainford, who uh, agonisingly missed out by a nose in this race last year on Farouk Delen. They're followed in third by Kilcrut, who races third on the inside of Aaron's day four. Not a lot to choose between those two and the back rock of the five continues to be adamantly chosen. So they're in the straight and heading towards fence number six. And there's the come to it. Authorised art, out jumped there by Jerry Colom, who jumps up sides and heads towards fence number seven. With a fractional advantage, Aaron's Day races third, Kilcrut travels well and jumping well on the inside in four, and they're followed fifth and last by adamantly chosen. So heading up past the winning post, Complete circuit to race in this Grade 1 Guinness Fahi Nova Steeplechase. Seven fences left to jump and a mile and a quarter or so to race. And the lead continues to be held by authorised art as the order has not really changed very much from the outset. Leads by half a length to Jerry Colomb, racing second on the outside. Followed in third by Aaron's Day, Kilcrut 4, and Adam has chosen the back marker of the quintet. Long right-handed swing to bring them towards the first defence in the back straight. Seven left to jump. Authorised Art and Brian Cooper, Jerry Colomb and Jordan Gainford with a head or a neck in second. A length then to Philip Enright on Aaron's Day who races third on the outside of Kilcourt and Sean O'Keefe and the back marker continues to be adamantly chosen and Brian Hayes. So continuing on the uphill, continuing the run towards defence seven from the finish. Inside the final mile. Authorised Art on the inside of Jerry Colom. Jerry Colom took off of that fence and lands half a length in front of Authorised Art, who goes back up on the inside on the level. Aaron Zay is a close third, Kilcrut four, Adam and chosen five. And Authorised Art really booted into that fence by Brian Cooper and emerges with a length, length and half advantage as they continue uphill run towards the fifth last. Jerry Colom in second, both jump it well, and they've uh, they've opened up a gap of some five to six lengths now, back to Aaron Zay and Kilcrut and adamantly chosen. Continue with the fourth defence in the back straight. And Jerry Colomb and Authorised Art, both the two really racing at this stage and jumping really well. And they're gone on by about half a dozen lengths over Aaron's day. Kilcrut was not very tidy at that one. And they're followed by adamantly chosen as they head to the fence at the top of the hill. Three from the finish. Authorised Art on the inside of Jerry Colomb. Both reached for it, both jumped it well though. Aaron's day back in third. Kilcrut now being just asked a question or so in four on the inside, just being pushed along for a stride or two by Sean O'Keefe. Adamantly chosen continues to be the back rock of the quintet. They've done all the jumping in the back straight and heading downhill inside the final half mile towards the turn into the straight. And Jerry Colomb moves up on the outside for Jordan Gainford to just head authorised art. Kilcrut tries to cover the move in third, a length and a half back. Adamantly chosen has now relegated Aaron's day to be the back marker of the five as they continue the downhill run towards the turn into the straight. And as Jerry Colomb travels well out in front for Jordan Gainford, leads from authorised art, still to be asked a question in second, hanging in there with him a half a length off him. Kilcrut is in third, adamantly chosen chasing them up in four and they've gone on from Aaron's day open race down to the second last Jerry Colomb on the inside authorised art Kilcut tries to produce a challenge on the outer at the second last Jerry Colomb lands half a length in front jumps it slightly better than Kilcut authorised art and adamantly chosen that out of it down to the final fence it's Jerry Colomb who's out in front as they jump the last Jerry Colomb just gets in a little bit tight but lands a length in front of adamantly chosen and authorised art and racing up in the final 150 yards it's Jerry Colomb who's out in front and is going to maintain his unbeaten record of offences Jerry Colomb wins it by about four lengths in the end from authorised art it's from adamantly chosen the second, authorised Art and kill cut close for three and four. Aaron Say last in the five.
Jerry Colon gets the business done here. The feature race of the day here. Limerick to Fahey Novice Chase. He wins it odds of four to five. Jumping well throughout. It looked like it was going to be a real test going to last fence. But despite a sloppy jump at the last, he's pulled away to draw clear to beat Adam Lee Chose. He ran a cracker back in second. Audrey's Art and Kilcrup battling out for the minor honours. But Lisa, this horse down a trip here today. He's two from two for over fences. Gives owner Rob Core a good day at the off course. A winner here with Foxy Lady earlier on the card. Nice grade one success here for Jordan Gainford also. Yeah, there's, I'm sure that Rob Core are going to be happy with that. But there's one man on board his back today who's going to be absolutely delighted. And we have to give full credit to Jordan Gainford. He got narrowly denied in grade one company here at this meeting here, in this race here last year. But he's got it on, he's come out on top here today. Slowed up, got in a little bit tight. To the, just, just slowed up a little bit, corrected himself at the second last and got in a little bit tight to the last I thought ju that just might uh, slow up his momentum a little bit and uh, I suppose give the hand to his rivals who are coming at him but to be fair he dug out deep all the way to the line he kept finding and he's down a three farms in trip from that winning run of course at Turles early in the year you were hoping his stamina would come into play and it duly did after the last he's just getting in tight to the last losing a bit of momentum that gave somewhat of a chance perhaps to his pursuers at that point in time. Yeah, absolutely. But there's no doubt that we knew that this guy stays so well and the fact that he was doing his best work at the finish, a slow jump at the last I thought was going to hinder him, but he's pulled it all out. And there's a very, very happy man on his back today and that's Jordan Gainford. You don't often see him punch the air when he crosses the line, but he's definitely got a really good kick out of this here today. And he deserves every opportunity that he gets. We've seen him deliver on the big stages like the Cheltenham Festival and, uh, and plenty of other so successes along the way and it's great for him to get this grade one success on the board as well. Exactly, make the most of them opportunities when they rise, double three meetings on today, a great ride to pick up a course and Gordon Elliott keeps it in house with his team of jockeys of course and Jordan Gainford is firmly on that team just behind Jack Kennedy now with the retirement of Davy Russell along with Sam Ewing, great success here from today on the horse Lisa. He's a three-miler in the making, is he, I think, looking at him? Yeah, there's no doubt about that, Fran. He thrived on the softer conditions here today, and Jordan done the sensible thing. He jumped off upsides on front. Uh, Authorised Art led them led them a bit of the way. He he, he made it a little bit closer, and uh, he, he tried to p push the pace a little bit, joining Authorised Art on front to make sure it wasn't a slow pace. Exactly, and on that, I just referenced his win at Hurlis last year of two miles, six furlongs. Tough conditions here today better ground in spring you'd imagine the further he steps up and trip the better he'll be yeah absolutely there's no doubt that he's his stamina is his forte and, and hopefully later on in the year we'll see that play to good effect too but it's fantastic we didn't see him in grade one company as a novice over hurls but we've seen him in grade one company over fences and he's justified that Delighted connections. Jordan Gain for nice success. We'll catch up in a minute. It will get back to get the SPs. Feature race today, one in great style by Jerry Colom here today for Gordon Elliott and Jordan Gainford. A big moment for Jordan, isn't it? A first domestic grade one. He rode the American Grand National winner Hewick back in October, but this will mean plenty to get on the board in his home country. Jerry Colomb, what a horse he is. He's very likeable, isn't he? His attitude, the way he jumps, and he justifies the step up in grade. Five to four on favorite scores, Jordan Gainford, for Gordon Elliott and Rob Corr. Second adamantly chosen at 11 to one. Four and a quarter lengths in it, and from a jockey who's riding his first domestic grade one to one who's in double figures, Mark Walsh rode Samoa to victory and joined Gary afterwards at Leopardstown. Feature race of the day here at Leopardstown on day one. The racing post app novice chase has gone to San Juan in the hands of this man, Mark Walsh. Mark, congratulations. Lovely prize to win. Was it any surprise to you that you turned the tables with Fieldor? Uh, we, we decided to ride him differently. Um, the last day in Avenue, I made the run and basically set up for him because we know he stays well. So there seemed to be plenty of pace on today. And uh, we said we'd just drop him in and, and try and beat him for a turn of foot up straight. And, it worked out well. And Mark, your horse had had a bit of time off from competitive action before the Navin race as well. Did you feel perhaps he might improve fitness-wise more than Phil Dorr had had the run? That's it. Like he, he had a prep run, as, whereas my lad's first run of the season, so you'll, you'll always be hopeful that they'd improve from it, and in fairness, he did. I thought today he was a little bit sketchy over one or two early on without ever looking like he was going to fall or anything like that, but when the taps were turned on, how happy were you, were you with his jumping now? No, I'm, I'm very happy with his jumping now. Um, I was right up behind the boys, and I think... Uh, Tom Hammond's horse made a mistake in front of me and he was very clever to put in an extra stride and pop away now, but he's, he's very nimble on his feet. And three out, Phil Dorr made that mistake. He didn't do you any favours, you no. almost jumped into the back of him. I, I landed on the back of him, yeah, I landed on the back of him, but uh, it, it took more out of Phil Dorr than it did my lad, so it was grand. It looked that way. I mean, going to the last, you pulled him wide to challenge. Did you always feel 
get to the other side and you had them. That was it. I, I, I knew I kind of beat him for a turn of foot and he was just meeting on an alright stride and just sat up and let him pop it and away he went in fairness to him, he galloped all the way to the line. Mark, we all know what a good hurdler he was. The early signs of our fences are obviously really, really encouraging. Do you think he can go all the way in this? Yeah, well, you'd, you'd have to be hopeful. He's setting a lot better over fences. He's a bit more respect for him. He's not like last season and the season before. He, he could be a bit of a tear away, but he's, he's, he's growing up now and he's starting to settle and in fairness, he does jump well, so hopefully he'll be a better chaser now. He's definitely one to look forward to. Lovely to win the big one on day one. How's tomorrow's shaping up for you? Yeah, I have six tomorrow. Uh, Busy day, so I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay, we'll see you then, Mark. Yeah. Well done. Cheers. Thanks, Gary. Well done to Mark Walsh. Sam Wah breaking his duck over. Fences at the biggest stage of them all in the grade one and the feature at Leopardstown. We're moving back to Leopardstown. A really intriguing race. This handicap chase is worth €30,000. It's over two miles and a furlong. Bet through the free racing post app handicap chase, which sees embittered favourite at the top of the market for Joseph O'Brien. Three to one, just ahead of final orders. Very consistent, seven to two. Eleven to two and on the drift, the folks, Tiara. Hal Safari, 13 to two. Eight to one, Silver Class. Alice Avril, 17 to two. Nine to one, Railway Hurricane. Grange Walk, 12 to one. Espion de Chenet, 18 to one. And the outsider of nine, Gary, embittered a very open affair. Handicap with only nine runners. So there they are down at the start for our sixth event of the day. It's really flown by here at Leopardstown and obviously everyone trying to keep abreast of all the action elsewhere. It's a whirlwind really on this particular afternoon. There is Silver Class who was a good winner at Ferry House last time and in the foreground final orders is challenging for favouritism with the Jiggenstown horse embittered. The folks Tiara on the far side there for Henry de Bromheads. Quiet day for him, though he did have a winner up at Down Royal earlier on, Connor Brazel rode a winner for him up there in the Jiggenstown colours. Kate Harrington alongside me. Kate, competitive race. You were just making the point, though, that perhaps it might necessarily have had to have such a small field. Yes, exactly. This was an early closer, and I just think um, with such big prize money and a competitive handicap running at um, the Leopard 10 Christmas Festival, it has only got nine runners turned up, and I feel that is um, a pretty poor show, and just um, HRI might need to have a look at it and just um, bring it back um, a little while, um, but I know we've had a lot of racing that was pushed just before Christmas with the weather and everything, but for such a competitive handicap it's not as competitive as it sometimes is normally see number two there that's last year's winner grange walk who beats your horse exit pole into second that day and henry de bromhead's got a couple of runners here as well alice avril and the folks tiara and violin unable to back up his win at down royal well beaten in the king george earlier on who's your idea of the winner kate I was very impressed with Embittered back down to the two miles the last day um, and that form's been boosted and Rob James taking valuable seven pounds off his back. And they're off in the bet through the free racing post app handicap chase, two miles and a furlong the trip, heading up the straight towards the inside final order shows the way. Close up in the centre is Embittered. Silver Class with the noseband, Hal Safari towards the left of the leading quartet as they rise at the first. Embittered led narrowly. Final orders towards the inside. Slight mistake at the back by Espion Duchene as they come up to pass the enclosures. Final orders towards the far side with Keith Dunhu in the centre, the maroon and white of Embittered, Rob James. The red and black of Silver Class, Peter Carberry, they show in front of Hal Safari, Charlie O'Dwyer. The folks Tiara next with Darrow O'Keefe on his inside railway hurricane Luke Dempsey. Alice Avril a length away under Michael O'Sullivan towards the outside last year's winner Grange Walk and Shane Fitzgerald. And at the back of the field, Espion de Chene, Key and Quirk as they approach fence number two, embittered, final orders towards the inside. Silver Class remains close up in third. Hal Safari just behind them towards the outside, towards the inner is Railway Hurricane. Between them, the folks Tiara as they head away to fence number three. Final orders and embittered with Silver Class to their outside. Not much to choose between that trio. Away from it, final orders led embittered. Hal Safari up on the outside of Silver Class. Tracking them towards the inside is Railway Hurricane. And they're followed into the turn by the folks Tiara around the inside. Alice Avril, the final pair, Grange Walk and Espion Duchene, as they continue on the approach to fence number four. 
They have eight fences still ahead of them, as final order shows the way by a little over a length. Embittered second, Silver Class a close third. Length and a half away then to Hal Safari, a mistake there by Silver Class. Drop back into sixth position, passed in the air by Hal Safari, the folks Tiara, and also Railway Hurricane. As they continue on to the next, which is fence number five. Final orders by less than a length, embittered second. Hal Safari on the outside is third, and they're closely followed by the folks Tiara, with Railway Hurricane the inside, Silver Class with them. Less than two lengths then to Alice Avril, Grange Walk and Espion de Chenet at the back as they head to the ditch opposite the stands. In the lead by over a length, final orders. Embittered rises second with Hal Safari jumping up on the outside. The folks Tiara is right with them between horses. A couple of lengths to Railway Hurricane and then Silver Class. And behind them is Alice Avril and still at the back Grange Walk ahead of Espion de Chenet about eight lengths covering them as they jump the next and away from it, continuing out in front. Final orders, and Keith Dunhu. Chased at this stage by the top weight, embittered. Rob James in second, the folks Tiara, Darrow Keefe third. As they jump this one, Hal Safari, fourth railway hurricane. Alice Avril, Silver Class has dropped back to the rear, joining Grange Walk and Espion de Chenet as they head on to the last fence in the back straight, the ditch, which is three from home. Final order still leads, and Bitter is second. The folks Tiara Hal Safari, and they're chased by Railway Hurricane as they rise at it. A good jump by the leader, final orders. The folks Tiara jumped up on the outside to go second. And Bitter to close third, Hal Safari in touch and fourth to break of three lengths. Railway Hurricane pushed along a further break to Grange Walk under pressure as they come to jump to second last. Final order still the leader. From on the inside, embittered alongside the folks Tiara. Hal Safari trying to creep into contention is Railway Hurricane towards the inside, and they're clear of Grange Walk and Espion de Chenet as they swing in and head up the straight towards the final fence. Final orders out in front, chased by embittered in second. Down the outside, Hal Safari, Railway Hurricane staying on down the inside. The folks Tiara right, right on the heels of the leaders and trying to stay on behind them, Espion de Chenet and Grange Walk. But final order, still the leader as they jump the last. Final orders over about three lengths clear. The folks Tiara over towards the inside and then Hal Safari staying on between them, Espion de Chenet. But final orders leads by three, four lengths. The Folks Tiara second, Hal Safari in the centre of the course, but final orders out in front, driven out by Keith Dunn, who will win for Gavin Cromwell. The Folks Tiara second, Hal Safari third, Grange Walk up for four, just ahead of Espion Duchenne. It's another big syndicate winner here at Leopardstown. This time the CMD syndicate cock a hoop after final orders delivered again. What a jumping performance, Kate. There's not a lot of him, he's a flatbread performer. He was only an ordinary hurler, around about 109 rated in that discipline, but my word, hasn't he found his metier over fences? Yes, he certainly has, Gary. The, um, the winning connections are making a good celebration. They definitely, I'd say, will be around for final orders tonight. <laughs> They're definitely going to celebrate well. But uh, yes, as you say, this son of Camelot, he's jumped from fence to fence. There they are all celebrating inside the last 100 yards. And uh, it's absolutely great to see. It's all about these syndicates. And uh, as you say, this horse, um, he has been so versatile um, for his connections. And um, he just jumped from fence Watch to fence. Watch him here, too. Uh, they're on his tail at this stage. He needs one just to give himself a bit of a cushion. He gets it. And it was only probably one fence all the way around. He got under a touch, Kate. He was winging them, wasn't he? Yeah, Keith Donahue got him into a lovely rhythm throughout the race. And, you know, like... He's not an over big horse, but he just gains length at the each fence. And um, no, he's absolutely exceptional. And like he's like a little terrier. He loves getting into inside the wings of them, and he just spring heeled. And he's there to be shot at, isn't he? Off that home turn, it's a big, big stereo run up to that final fence here. And Keith just allowed him to go in and pop that. He was nice and clever. He probably only lands about two and a half lengths clear. And you just wonder, is he going to be able to find a bit more to repel them? Well, the answer was pretty definitive. Yes. And he's actually pulling away, I think. Yes, he certainly is. Keith's coming out on the fresh ground there up the middle of the track, and um, he's done it under hands and heels. And um, it's great for Gavin Cromwell um, to get a good uh, winner here. And Keith Donahue. Keith had a good second in the grade one earlier on in our card. And uh, no, he's um, he is um, got a great partnership with the Gavin Cromwell team. Yeah, we'll check in with him, but he's on the brink of already beating his best ever previous tally. 
and very, very good jockey, Keats. We all know that. We saw him win there. Troy Town Chase on the big dog at Navin last month. And, of course, the Munster National on the same horse. Can't ride him at uh, Chepstow tomorrow in the Welsh National. But while this fella isn't at that sort of level just yet, I'm sure Final, Order, Final Orders is a horse he absolutely loves riding him because he's a jockey's dream, Anthony. When you want him, he is there for you. Just keeps improving, doesn't he, Gary? Brilliant display once again from Final Orders. Keith Donoghue for Gavin Cromwell. Raucous celebrations by all accounts in the winner's enclosure. And they're probably just the start of them. Great stuff from Final Orders, who wins a four on the bounce and having won plenty this season and last. Seven to two winner for Keith Donoghue, Gavin Cromwell and the CMD Syndicate. Second, the Folks Tiara, five to one. Third, Hal Safari, six to one, with embittered fading out of the frame. That was the handicap chase at Leopard Sound. Let's get some big race reaction from the Faheen over at Limerick. Joined now with John Gainford, who gained a lovely grade one success here today at Limerick on Jerry Cologne. Well done. Thank you, yeah, no, it's unbelievable. Um, I want to say thanks to Garden first and then Brian Robcore. Um, the first day I walked into Gardens, he looked after me, and for him to, to, to have the confidence put me up here today, and uh, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Of course, you're nearly beaten in this race last year. Don't want to remind you that, but it must be very sweet to come back here and get that success. It is. It is um, something that I didn't want to happen again, and uh, <laughs> he picked his two ears over the last two. But big thanks to Jack Henley as well. He told me about this old lad. He, he said when he gets there, don't mind. He'll prick his two ears and have a look. But he said he'd rather be there than trying to be there. So. Thanks, Jack, as well. It's brilliant. It's all very smooth throughout the race, if you like. He jumped great for you throughout. You're always handy. And uh, par apart from maybe getting close to the last, he was faultless. He was very good. Um, myself and Brian there up along the back. I got jumps out of a horse that I thought wouldn't be in a horse, to be honest with you. He was brilliant. And uh, for a novice to do what he did there, I thought it was very good. It was indeed. And uh, given he won over two miles six in Torres last year, down a trip today in testing ground, you'd imagine the further he goes or back up in distance, he'd be better again, possibly? Better again, yeah. Um, that'll be left the garden, but... There's one thing, he, he loves soft ground and he had that today. He did indeed. Now listen, well done, Jordan. Great success for you and the team. Lovely. Thanks, William. Thank you. Racing TV's social media channels are always at your fingertips wherever you are. Watch the day's big races again and join the debate. Read tips from the experts and catch up with the latest breaking news. Enjoy highlights from the channel and expert insight that you might have missed. Make sure you stay in the know by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Stay ahead of the pack. Follow Racing TV on social media today. So a dramatic finish to the Hunter's Chase here, a thrilling finish in fact between Dorking Cock and Vossled and Vossled has prevailed under Barry O'Neill. Barry, that did you always think you were going to get there? Um, like he's a horse uh, man, to be honest with you that you never know at the bottom, you know. He just really, really stays going and to be honest, I talked going on to the last, I had a squeak but we, did not, we, we didn't fly it. Um, but I knew we were kind of getting going a bit and I was just hoping that the line wouldn't come too quick um, but we got there in time but uh, David has done a great job with this lad, he's mining them the whole way through and uh, he's, he's one to look forward to I think. And you've built up a hell of a partnership with him as well haven't you? Yeah no it's brilliant, uh, look uh, I missed him one day there last year alright but uh, no we had a great win in Stratford with him and uh, things like that so look uh, the ground probably wouldn't have been in his favour today but look it just goes to show that uh, a bit of class comes out, comes out on top. And you've got one more ride in the bumper for the for the Watsons. Do you can you what can you tell us about him? He's a he's a debutant. Yeah, he's a debutant. I was I was chatting to Marshall uh, the other day, and uh, look, he's hopeful of a nice run, and hopefully he can build on that from from today. Well done, Barry, top man. Thank you. Thank you. Well done to Barry O'Neill taking the Hunters' Chase with Vosselet. That is always handy. A big price, and participation must be open to question at this point. He's uh, he's got loose. Hopefully. At some point, he will consent to uh, to be caught, and and we can take in the last from Dan Royal. You'd imagine Bernard might have a little bit of time to preview this one. The McMahon McKay M and A Pro Am bumper over two miles and a furlong closes the card at Dan Royal on Stevens Day. Faulty is your 15 to 8 favourite for the Yard Knoll Mead that took this last year with Pinkerton, who was beaten earlier on the card 
in the demolition hurdle. But they won it last year and they're looking to win it again. Bulldog 3-1 to one on debut for the Crawfords. 100-30, to 30, Attaboy Archie. Lucky Lyrene 6-1 to one and drifting a little bit. 14-1, to one, Tizzle Hush Hush, Littlefoot 16s. 22-1, to one, Johnny M. Make No Plans 50s. Ounce of Gold 66s. Always Handy is 100-1, to one, but stand by for... Uh, confirmation of his participation or lack thereof and their big prices the remainder so Bernard unfortunately always handy is having a solo at the moment hopefully he'll consent to be caught quite soon So just a short delay here to the bumper. Um, always handy, number one, and Barry Stone, unfortunately, were separated. Upon arriving out onto the track, so we may have a, a short delay while always handy is caught again. This is our concluding, just first of all, confirmation that always handy has been withdrawn. Number one has been withdrawn. So just a quick look at the betting. Well, number five, Faulty, is the market leader here for Noel Mead. Pat Taff takes the mount aboard this Albert Dravens and Eamon Scanlon owned son of Dunedin, who had a, a brilliant debut run here over course and distance at the at the big champion chase meeting here at the beginning of November. He was second behind King of Kingsfield and he finished ahead of the, the highly regarded Honky Tonk belonging to the Magners, who's trained by, by Gordon Elliott. King of Kingsfield is one of Gordon Elliott's leading contenders for the champion bumper at the Cheltenham Festival next season. And Faulty was right in the mix. And it's no surprise to see him as the market leader here in a race where we have a mix of some experienced horses and some that are making their race course debuts. Faulty actually failed to complete in two starts in point to points in, de in December of last year. He was a, a faller on his debut and then he unseated the rider um, before changing stable and joining the Noel Mead yard. Speaking of horses who are making their race course debuts, th um, this afternoon we've got number three, Bulldog, for the Stuart and Ben Crawford partnership. Crawfords were out of luck and quite unlucky in, in the previous race, the Hunter Chase, when Dorking Cock, just in the, in the shadow of the post, hung a little bit to his right, and Vosslet got up underneath Barry O'Neill for a success in the Hunter Chase. So Bulldog is, a, is running here for, in the colours of Simon Muneer and Isaac Swed, who in recent years have begun having horses in training with Stuart Crawford, who trains right up the very north of the country near Larne. Bulldog is a son of authorised, sire of some really good national hunt horses, including Tiger Roll, and he cost €155,000 at the Tattersalls Ireland Derby sale last year as a three-year-old. So he's obviously a well-regarded young horse and hopes will be high among his connections for a good showing today. Attaboy Charlie has garnered quite a lot of experience in bumpers and indeed in a maiden hurdle as well for Dermot McLaughlin, carrying the colours of Una Sweeney and will be ridden by Emma Sweeney, who's partnered the son of Imperial Monarch in all bar one of his starts thus far. And he's been second the last twice in bumpers at Ferry House last time out and prior to that um, over an extended two miles at Wexford. We we'll always have to pay attention to what Gordon Elliott and Jamie Codd unleash in a bumper. And they send out number 10, Lucky Lyrene, son of Court Cave, who realised €70,000 when he went through the sales. And he's had one start so far. That came here over um, an extended two miles of Down Royal when he was beaten five and three parts of a length by single edition, finishing fourth on that occasion. That was in May. It's the very end of the the national hunt season of last season so he would have had the pause that refreshes and he's back again sporting the green and red colors of the lyrene syndicate barry o'neill has already been among the winners this afternoon we mentioned how he won the hunter chase aboard Vosslet, um the previous race he rides the debutant tis all hush hush trained by marshall watson um, 
a son of Outstrip with a, with a flat pedigree. And he too is a four-year-old, comes from the family of a couple of um, French classic winners, in such as Hatouf. So it looks like number one has been caught always handy. They're coming into line. The market leader here. is Bulldog for the Crawfords. And the Rolf, here's James Griffin with the call. And bumper and Attaboy Archie and Bulldog. And Bulldog goes on to Attaboy Archie in second to Bridge House. Then in behind is Cal's man in company with Johnny M. A free going faulty. Then Lucky Lyrene back to Ounce of Gold and company with Little Foot. And then Tis All Hush Hush and the overall back markers make no plans. But Bulldog is out and gone to clear to Attaboy Archie Johnny M then Cal's man the bridge house along the rail is faulty Lucky Lyrene stands side up in front of the judge the circuit to race and Bulldog has the lead and clear by over a dozen lengths to Attaboy Archie in second place Johnny M and Cal's man the leading quartet then the bridge house faulty Lucky Lyrene Littlefoot ounce of gold make no plans and tis all hush hush but Bulldog the hood of Bulldog is clear in the hands of Ben Crawford. Two in second place, Emma Sweeney, and Attaboy Archie in third is Johnny M. And then comes Cal's man and Faulty in the bridge house, Lucky Lyrene Littlefoot together with Ounce of Gold, make no plans and tis all hush hush. But Bulldog extends the advantage over Attaboy Archie, Johnny M, then a couple of lengths back to Faulty who races in fourth in company with Cal's man, and then a break of five lengths to the bridge house in outside of the bridge house is Lucky Lyrene, little foot, ounce of gold, make no plans and tis all hush hush but heading towards the mile and a quarter marker in the last 10 furlongs of our bumper and Bulldog, nearly 25 lengths clear to Attaboy Archie, Johnny M and Faulty, Cal's man, Lucky Lyrene, the bridge house and make no plans, little foot races with ounce of gold and tis all hush hush but our leader, Bulldog, in the two-tone green of Muneer and Suede to in second is Attaboy Archie, the yellow and light green. In third, on the inside, the light green and red of Johnny M. Outside of it, dark blue and orange of Faulty, our favourite, and then Cal's man in behind, and Lucky Lyrene, but Bulldog, still clear to Attaboy Archie, and then Johnny M, just on the outside of Johnny M, moving into a clear third is Faulty, Cal's man, Lucky Lyrene, and in behind Lucky Lyrene, make no plans, is trying to make a little bit of ground with little foot, and Lucky Lyrene, now going by Cal's man, moves into fifth place, but Bulldog, not as far clear, Attaboy Archie gives chase to Faulty, Johnny M, Lucky Lyrene, little foot, and then comes behind that, make no plans, and Cal's man, reminders for Ounce of Gold, the bridge house, and tis all hush hush, but Bulldog, is Ben Crawford, getting a breather, it's clear, to Attaboy Archie and Faulty, so the second and third, about to get to the withers of Bulldog, and about to pass him, and Attaboy Archie on the inside. Bulldog, Attaboy Archie, and Faulty. And then comes Lucky Lyrene Littlefoot, and make no plans, an ounce of gold, but Attaboy Archie on the inside. Now takes it up to Bulldog, the long-time leader in second. Faulty in third. Then Lucky Lyrene Littlefoot, and make no plans, leaving behind, ounce of gold. But Attaboy Archie and Emma Sweeney, been chased down in second in his wing mirrors is Faulty and Pat Taff. And then in third is Lucky Lyrene and Jamie Codd and Littlefoot. Liam McKenna. Then comes Bulldog. So inside the final half mile. And Attaboy Archie and Faulty. Lucky Lyrene and Littlefoot. But Attaboy Archie and Faulty. Over a length to the good over Lucky Lyrene and Littlefoot. But Attaboy Archie with the white face on the inside. In the centre of the track is Faulty. And Pat Taff looks between his legs and he sees travelling best to those giving chase is Littlefoot. But it's Faulty and Lucky Lyrene, Littlefoot and Attaboy Archie. Inside the final quarter mile in the McMahon McKay MA Pro Am bumper. And Faulty goes for home. Lucky Lyrene and Littlefoot switch to the sand side, leaving behind Attaboy Archie. But Faulty. Faulty two in second is Littlefoot and Lucky Lyrene inside the final 150 yards and Faulty trying to go for the stand side rail two in second place Littlefoot and Lucky Lyrene in between but Faulty Lucky Lyrene and Littlefoot Littlefoot and Lucky Lyrene leaving behind Faulty Littlefoot Lucky Lyrene and inside the final 25 and at the line is going to be one for the judge possibly Lucky Lyrene and Littlefoot then Faulty and Attaboy Archie well clear of Bulldog Vicky with uh just in front of those is Flight of Magaudi. 
So it's a contingent run downhill and a good clip being set here by It's a Long Long Road and Gary Noonan. Looking for a double on the afternoon, Lay leads by about two to three lengths over Caradon Boy, second on the inside of Sunny Villa. They've opened up a gap about half a dozen lengths back to Fly the Magotti, who's four on the inside of the Eye of Tulla with Carney de Stage on the outside of that duo. They're followed by Sound Money and Courting Vicky. Bonnie Kelly has two behind it, three behind it. Those are Made in the Woods, Stormy, and the back marker, Johanna Yates. At the first of the two fences, a straight fence number three. They're all jumping safely at this stage, although Stormy pecked on landing at the back of the field, has dropped back to last as they come to fence number four. It's a long, long road on the far side with Sunnyville upside. These two lead. Open up a lead about half a dozen lengths now over in third place, running Cardown Boy. Four to five then to Fly to Magadi, who races on the inside of the Eye of Tulla, who's come out towards the stand side of the track. They're followed by Carnet de Stage. Sound Money next, followed by Bonnie Kelly and Made in the Woods. Johanny Yates is two behind it. And these two are courting Vicky, just being pushed along for a stride or two. And on the end, that one's inside is Stormy. So inside the final nine furlongs of this BRC McMahon reinforcements handicap steeplechase. And continuing the long right-handed swing to bring them into the back straight. And the lead is held by It's a Long, Long Road. Well, three to four in front of Sunnyville in second. Similar break to Caradown Boy in third. Gap of six then down by, back to Flyda McGaudy, who's four on the inside of the Eye of Tulla. Next to field then, race to Sound Money, who's in front of Carne de Stage on the outside of Bonnie Kelly. Johanna Yates is next on the inside of Made in the Woods. And then a gap of three lengths to find Stormy and the back marker courting Vicky. So as they meet the, meet the entrance to the back straight and head towards the fence seven for the finish with the field just beginning to tighten up a little bit. It's a long, long road. It's a long, long road continues to lead. Just got a little bit tight to that, but lands half a length in front. Up in second place is Sunny Villa. Cardown Boy a length and a half away in third, followed three lengths back in four on the inside as they jump that fence by Fly to Magade, who's in front of the Eye of Tulla. Behind the Eye of Tulla races Bonnie Kelly, who's continued to make a couple of places ahead of Sound Money next. And behind Sound Money, Johanna Yates. Carnet de Stage is losing ground, followed then by Stormy. Courting Vicky is now very much the back marker. We lost Made in the Woods at the first defence in the back straight. At the fourth last fence. It's a long, long road, the leader. Sunny Villa in second. Cardown Boy is a closer third. They're followed three lengths back by Flight and McGaudy on the inside of the Eye of Tulla. Bonnie Kelly next. Johanny Yates tries to make headway on the outside of Sound Money. And behind Sound Money races Stormy, and they're clear. Reaching the top of the hill, inside the final half mile of this BRC McMahon reinforcements handicap steeplechase. And it's a long, long road, continues to take them along. Half a length in front of Cardown Boy in second. Three lengths then to Sunny Villa in third. Similar break to Fly to Magade four. Five on the inside is Bonnie Kelly, continuing to make headway for Philip Enright. And they're followed by the Eye of Tulla, just being pushed along at the back of that group, but remains in touch. And they're drawing on from Sound Money, Stormy, and Johanna Yates. Heading towards the turn into the straight, it's a long, long road on the inside for Gary Noonan. Caredown Boy moves up on the outside for Connor McNamara to try to join issue. About half a length between them. Three lengths then to Bonnie Kelly, who continues to make ground on the inside of Fly the Magade, Sunny Villa, and the Eye of Tulla staying on. Down to the second last, it's a long, long road with Bonnie Kelly now producing the challenge on the inside. At the second last, Bonnie Kelly jumps to the front from It's a Long, Long Road. Cardown Boy over towards the stand side, but racing down towards the final fence, it's Bonnie Kelly who's gone clear in a matter of strides. At the last, Bonnie Kelly meets it on a good stride, lands half a dozen lengths to eight lengths in front of Cardown Boy in second, but racing up towards the finish, it's Bonnie Kelly who's going to be the easiest winner of the day by some margin. Bonnie Kelly and Philip Enright going to win this and a tight rein for Sam Carlin. Second Cardown Boy, the Eye of on the third. It's a long road four ahead of Flyda McGaudy and Sonny Villa. Of a mark of 93, Bonnie Kelly is in the winner's enclosure for Sam Curling and Philip Emright. Put the race to bed in a matter of strides, in all honesty. And despite being raised four pounds for narrowly missing out a Clonmel last time, that was 39 days ago, she's justified favouritism in pretty emphatic terms in the end. As most of these races at Limerick can go, if you if you handle the conditions well, it can really separate the field. And, and ultimately, that seems to have been the case with Bonnie Kelly, who, who looked very much at home in soft, heavy ground at Clonmel in November and probably a little bit deeper conditions today. She very much has the kind of knee curl action that goes through it. And at this point, it was just a matter of jumping the last. And, and she did really, really nicely under Philip Emright, winner for Sam Curling on Stephen's day and 
winning just for the second time as well and for the first time over fences was one from 11 over over hurdles and had not yet won over fences until today so this five-year-old is off the mark over the bigger obstacles in the penultimate at limerick well supported bonnie kelly is a winner and has taken it five to two favorite for Philip M. Wright, Sam Curling, and the Ballycloa partnership. Second, Cahidan Boy, 100 to 30. Third, the Eye of Tuller, 11 to two. That's the penultimate at Limerick. We had to get away from Dan Royal very quickly, not for the first time on that card. There was a very, very tight finish. And not for the first time as well, a steward's inquiry has been called looking into this. Faulty is the leader at this point, but he's about to be overtaken by the first past the post, Lucky Lyrene, who is in the middle of them. And just on the right there is Littlefoot as well. They're looking into ex exactly, I think at this point, of exactly whether Littlefoot was impeded through the, through the closing stages of this. They're, they're both going hammer and tongs at each other at that point, neck and neck. A little bump before the line as well. And that's how close it was. That's a, a nose, really, isn't it? A, a winning distance of a nose for Lucky Lyrene, who, as it stands, first past the post, has, has taken the finale. But we, we await with interest uh, Gordon Elliott. A, a decent day. At the moment, it, this would be an across-the-card treble with taking the feature at, taking the feature at Limerick in the, in the grade one with Jerry Colomb and also... A winner at Limerick again with Ludus earlier on in the afternoon. I just want to see it again to to see from this point because they are they're in very very close quarters. I think absolutely the right call that Stewart's inquiry has been called, and we await with a, a lot of interest to see what the judge will make of this because such a short winning distance, you would expect that they'll have a, a good look at them. Want to know what's coming up on Racing TV? Keep up with the latest action or have your say on the big news stories. Are you interested in extra features, competitions and replays of great races from the past? Racing TV's social media channels are always at your fingertips. Watch the day's big races again and join the debate with others. Read tips from the experts and catch up on the breaking news from the Racing TV website. Enjoy highlights from the channel and the expert insight that you might have missed. Racing TV's social channels already have over half a million followers, keeping themselves in the know every day with updates around the clock. Wherever you are in the world, you can stay ahead of the pack by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Join them now by following Racing TV on social media today. Joined there by a man who's having an amazing season, Keith Donahue. He's just partnered final orders to a fourth win in a row for a syndicate of owners. Keith, who are behind you as we speak here. And my word, they've been making their presence felt. How much of a buzz was that for you? Yeah, sure, brilliant. They're all, they're all local. They're all from a tote, Garristown, all around there. So, uh, you know, obviously the horse came from Gavin Donnelly. Gavin done a great job on him when Gavin came to Gavin's. And uh, so he's been a brilliant horse for us. Fences has been the make of him. He wasn't a bad hurdler by any means, but perhaps didn't win as many races as he should have. He hasn't looked back over the large jobs. Because is it his jumping that's the key? Oh, it's his jumping, and uh, I think I think it, it suits his style of racing better. He was getting done for toe over fences, but with some with more over hurdles, over, over hurdles. Sorry, and with more fences in now, you know, he uh, it's big help to him, and he's so versatile. You know, two one today, two mile in Cork, three mile in Down Royal the last day, two seven in Killarney. He loves it. Brilliant horse for the syndicate. There was one fence maybe on the way around, he got a bit closer, but other than that, whenever you wanted him, he was there. Was he? Yeah, he, he, he was a bit more clever than I was, and he just didn't pop, but, you know, long or short, he's brilliant. I know he's not a grade one horse, but is he up there amongst your favourite horses to ride? I'd imagine he is. Actually, he, ha he has to be, you know, he, uh, that's, what's that, five or six wins on him now, you know, and uh, he's enjoyed to ride because he's such an easy ride, just let him bowl away, and 
status tree out, start to squeeze him on and he'll do the rest. Andy Capper will obviously have another go at him after today. Where do you think the ceiling might be though with him realistically? Gavin said to me I'm sick he didn't get into the Paddy Power. <laughs> I said I was happy enough because I wouldn't have been on him in the Paddy Power. <laughs> but I'd, I'd imagine they'd have to aim or stuff like that. Will he be an Irish, Irish national horse? You know, all the owners are local, mm. maybe something like that. But even them, them got two mile division. It's you know, it's that's definitely weaker than the staying than the weaker division of the handicap. So we might have to look for something, something it's over two miles. Utility, no question about that. Yeah. You mentioned the Paddy Power. You are riding in that tomorrow. You got a spare on Enjoy the Land, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Enjoy the Land. Yeah, my agent Gary Cribbon got me on him. Uh, he was third in the race last year. Uh, you know, it's great to be riding in them races and. He has had a couple of runs over hurdles, so he should be fine for tomorrow, hopefully. And you're riding two for Gavin in the grade ones. What are your thoughts there? Pat Duro can't have been the true running at Ferry has, can it? Jeremy's flame. Yeah, no, Pat Duro wasn't the true running. A couple of little things have come to light. Hopefully it's not too soon again, but we think he's a very good horse, and we wouldn't if we, did, we wouldn't think he was a good... You know, if we didn't have the respect for the horse we have, we wouldn't put him in that race tomorrow. And uh, I, Jeremy's flame is the outside of the field, but I think she's a great chance. Uh, drop her in and ride her for a bit of luck and like, she's going to win the last day when Curse of Blind fell anyway so I think she'd be running into the money Keith you're a very talented jockey but you can't be in two places at once you're going to be watching from here tomorrow when your Munster National and Troy Town winner the big dog runs in the Welsh National which will be tough I'm sure but do you think he's got a big shout? Oh he's a, ma he's a massive massive ch uh, shout and you know he's won he couldn't have won any easier in the Troy Town and uh, I'd love to go but you know Gavin's been very good to me and you know he's my he's my main man so I have to stay loyal. Fair play and visionary, and you got some run out of him for Peter Fay today. Didn't yeah, you? it was a lovely spare ride to get. Obviously, Dennis had to ride Gardens, so uh, I got on him, and we would have took second going out, but when you come second, it's a bit frustrating. It's not been a bad day's work, all told. Keith, thanks for joining us, well, and good luck tomorrow as well. Thanks, Eric. Cheers. Super. Thanks, Thank you. Well done to Keith Donahue, a winner on the card at Leopardstown, and Leopardstown is where we head next for the finale, the race and stay at Leopardstown bumper. It's over two miles. And Sean and Bernadine Mulryan have, have had a, a pretty good afternoon so far. Yes, Brentford Hope didn't quite get off the mark over hurdles just a, a few minutes ago in the, in the finale at Weatherby. However, they did have Longhouse Poet take the demolition hurdle uh, early in the afternoon. And did I ask you that is evens to make it an even better day for them for uh, Willie and Patrick Mullins, uh, son of Walk in the Park, evens for his debut. 11 to 4 and attracting noticeable support, though, is Park of Kings for Paul Nolan, who has also had a good day himself, having had a winner earlier, if I were a rich man down at Down Royal. Uh, 9 to 2 and drifting is Paul Ify, one and only 17 to 2. 18 to 1. Uh, was that arc? was that okay? <laughs> was that arc? Uh, get it right, twenty-two to one, twenty-five to one. Bot, bot, bobbin. The contractor, fifty to one. Lazy O, eighty to one. But did I ask you that? Evans' favourite to give Sean and Bernadine Mulryan an across the card double and provide Willie Mullins with yet another winner on the card, Gary. So the final girth checks just taking place for our favourite here. Did I ask you that bidding to put the seal on a fine afternoon for Willie Mullins? Already had a treble on the card here, including both feature events on day one at Leopardstown. Uh, lest we forget, 12 months ago, he took this with what proved to be the best bumper <laughs> horse of the season and possibly for many a season, <laughs> Fasal Vega. Big hoof prints to follow in, Kate. Yes, Could sir. this fella be another star? <laughs> Yes, he certainly does. Um, Fasal Vega had it all there on pedigree. This horse, and um, the only thing he has in common with him is they both have the same sire. And um, did I ask you that? Is um, obviously by Walk in the Park out of a Cape Town area. Is a French family that was picked up for thirty and um, two thousand euro as a three-year-old. Is interesting enough. I quite like um, Park of Kings. Um, interesting enough that JP McManus has picked up uh, this son of Walk in the Park um, in the Paul Nolan yard. Yes, he caught the eye, Park of Kings, in that bumper won by Dr. Bravo at Ferry House at the beginning of the month. Dr. Bravo certainly wasn't disgraced in an earlier maiden hurdle on today's card. And this turned out to be a pretty warm race last year. Every chance that it could be a similar story this time around. But did I ask you that? A strong favourite. Patrick Mullins lining him up on the outside there, as we can see. Sarah Joe Banahan. Looks as though he's happy enough for them to come in nice and steadily here. So, final race of the day. The race and stay at Leopardstown Flat Race on day one of the festival here. It's over to Peter O'Hare.
White flag is raised. And they're off. In the bumper, the race and say at Leopardstown flat race over two miles. Heading up the straight, get it right is the early leader. Close up, bop, bop, bobbin. Towards the inside, blue and yellow colours tracking the leader is the contractor. A break of a few lengths to Poor Le Fee as they pass the furlong pole and head up to pass the stands. Going along in front, got it right. Tom Hamilton leads by a little over a length to Bop Bop Bob and Tom Harney on the outside, the maroon and white. Disputing second place on the rail is the contractor and Owen O'Brien. A break of more than three lengths then to Poor Le Fee. Harry Swan on the inside, marginally ahead of one and only in Johnny Barry. Then the favourite on the outside with the red cap, did I ask you that? Patrick Mullins, followed away from the stands by Park of Kings, Derek O'Connor, and towards the back as they complete that turn and head away. Was that okay? Joey Dunn, and alongside that one, Lazy O and, Robbie, and Rob James. As they continue away from the stands, get it right, dictating the early pace. Bop, bop, bobbin. Close up on the outside in second, tracking them towards the inner is the contractor. They remain a few lengths in front of Poor Le Fee and towards the outside of that one is a noseband one and only tracked by Did I Ask You That as they begin this left-handed swing that will bring them to the back straight. Get It Right continues to show in front. Pop, pop, bobbin on the outside, the contractor third, followed into the back straight by Poor Le Fee, one and only alongside and they're followed by Did I Ask You That continues to be tracked by Park of Kings and the two hoop colours at the back. Was that OK? And Lazy O, as they enter the back straight, about nine furlongs ahead of them. In the lead, get it right, Tom Hamilton. Up on the outside, Bob Bob Bobbin and Tom Harney in second position. Tucked away on the inside, the contractor and Owen O'Brien. And then a few lengths to Poor Le Fee, Harry Swan, who went alongside one and only in Johnny Barry. And then did I ask you that to the outside, Patrick Mullins, just ahead of Park of Kings and Derek O'Connor. Close up behind that one. To the inside is Was That OK, Joey Dunn, and a break of almost three lengths to the overall back marker of the 900 field, Lazy O and Rob James, as they reach the seven furlong point, directly opposite the stands. Still the leader by about three parts of a length, get it right. Pop, pop, bobbin is a close second. They're tracked by the contractor with Poor Le Fee next, and behind Poor Le Fee is the one and only, improving on the inside the hoop colours of Park of Kings, which did I ask you that to his outer, and still at the back, was that OK and Lazy O as they continue towards the end of the back straight, tightly enough grouped, but get it right, less than a length in front, Bop Bop Bobbin is in second, the contractor third, and they're followed on the outside by one and only improving. Inside that one, Poor Le Fee, and they're tracked at this stage by Park of Kings, keeping to the outside. Did I ask you that as they turn? With just less than half a mile to race, the leader by about half a length now is Get It Right, with Bop Bop Bob in a close second, a length and a half away to one and only up on the outside. Between horses, Poor Le Fee, looming up on the outer with the red cap, did I ask you that? Making headway towards the inner is Park of Kings. Pushed along then, was that OK? Dropping back the contractor as they near the turn in. Bop, bop, bobbin goes up on the outside to tackle, get it right. And they're chased into the straight by, did I ask you that around the outside? Of one and only, as they straighten up, less than two to race, did I ask you that? Quick, quickens up on the outside to take over. Goes on, trying to stay on down the inside, poor Le Fee, and then bop, bop, bobbin. But as they head to the furlong pole, the leader, did I ask you that on the rail? Poor Le Fee is in second and challenging, and they've gone away from bop, bop, bobbin, well inside the final furlong, on the rail. Did I ask you that stand side staying on strongly? Is Poor Le Fee not much to choose between them? 50 yards to race, Poor Le Fee on the stand side getting up. Poor Le Fee wins for Gordon Elliott and Harry Swan. Pipping, did I ask you that? And close for third between Bop Bop Bobbin and on the inside, Park of Kings. So, a late drama in our final event of the day, and Gordon Elliott, who won the big one down at Limerick with Jerry Columbus, struck here with. Poor Le Fee at four to one in the colours of Kenny Hahi and ridden to victory here by Harry Swan, making a winning debut under rules, point to point winner at Bartlemy back in the spring. It looked for all the world as though the favourite was going to win when picking up early in the straight to probably go three lengths clear, Kate, but I don't know, has it 
just been the case that he's got a bit lonely when he's got to the front, or maybe he's got a touch tired combination of both, whichever he's been run down. And overall, Yes. You'd have to be pleased with the winner's effort, wouldn't you? Yeah, you definitely certainly would. Pa um, Patrick Mullins, you know, wrote him, and uh, don't ask you that, with plenty of confidence turning into the home street straight. And do you know what? Um, Harry Swan has given this horse an absolute beautiful ride. Um, Jamie Codd, um, the yard's normally first jockey, is up and down Royal. And, um, you know, Harry has done a brilliant job here. He's bided his time. He's waited for the gaps down the inside. Patrick's gone quite wide. And he's picked up and he's got the really nice fresh ground. Because as we said earlier on in the day, the horses have come wide onto the chase track halfway up the straight. And um, Harry, as soon as he's met this good ground, this horse has picked up really, really well. He stays very well. He's won a point to point. He's come from the yard of um, Colin Motherways when he won his point to point, but privately after that. Um, and he's from a good family um, of Alo Alo uh, and a nice pedigree. So a horse that really is going places. Nice winner for the Hoys. Very much so. Kenny and Laura Hoy and Kieran Byrne, the partnership of owners. Pick him up off the home turn. You see, the Mullins horse edges left when he gets to the front. I don't know, was Patrick making a beeline for the rail, maybe, <laughs> That's Kate? normally Patrick. You've been on the Back wrong end of that over the years. Back on riding days, yeah. He does make a good beeline always for the rail. <laughs> Ruby taught him well, didn't he? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and poor Lefiel had to switch around. But just from about 150 yards out, you started to get the impression that, did I ask you, that was floundering a touch. And poor Lefiel has just got there in the dying strides to put the seal on eventually what's been a pretty good day for Gordon Elliott he had a couple of winners down at Limerick he I believe he won the bumper up at Dan Royal as well and he's landed the bumper here with poor Le Feel and then, of course same connections have the very smart three stripe life on the go and I'm sure a few punters will be delighted with that result in the finale then as poor Le Feel strikes under Harry Swan <laughs> yep, using that stamina that she's shown when making a winning debut in a point. And a great half hour for Gordon Elliott. He went in with, an, with a couple of winners at Limerick to this half hour. He's come out with an across the card four timer. Paul Lefee being the fourth leg. Four to one winner for Harry Swan, Gordon Elliott, Kay Hawhey, Laura Hawhey, and Kieran Byrne. Second, did I ask you that? Got to the front, couldn't quite sustain it. Evans' favourite on debut. Third, Bop Bop Bobbin, 33 to one, and a neck in it between the top two at the line. And the third leg of the Gordon Elliott across the guard four-timer came courtesy of Lucky Lyrene, who survived the stewards' inquiry to keep the race and win by a nose. 11-2 to two under Jamie Codd for Gordon and the Lyrene syndicate. Second, Littlefoot, 8-1. to one. Third, Faulty, the 9-5 to five favourite. So, as we said, a quick-fire double for Gordon Elliott, marked an across-the-card four-timer. It's been a similar story for Willie Mullins with plenty of winners at Leopardstown. Couldn't quite get the four-timer up at Leopardstown, but we can head over to Gary to find out all about the card on a great first of four days racing at Leopardstown. So, the first day here at Leopardstown has come to a close. Poor Le Feel just getting up in the dying strides there to land the finale for Gordon Elliott, who had a good day at the other meetings as well to get the better of the Willie Mullins trained favourites. Kate Harrison has enjoyed it all with me. Kate, it's been a bit of a whirlwind today. That's often the way, in <laughs> fairness, though, with this particular afternoon. Have you enjoyed it? Yes, it's been an absolutely great afternoon of racing, Gary, and I think we've uh, saw some real guiders. Those maiden hurdles um, were very uh, fortuitous, and I think we see um, a few lossy moths. She was very impressive, and it's just on St. Roy. Like, you know, it's been a really, really exciting day's racing. Yes, Willie Mullins did have to settle for the runner-up spot there in the finale but goes home with a treble after the first day here at Leopardstown and the first leg of that Kate did come in one of those maiden hurdles with Dark Raven and beaten in two bumpers but have been off the track a long long time very strong in the market though today not sure it was entirely smooth sailing on the way around, but he got the job done. Were you impressed? Yes, I was very impressed. I could pick holes in bits of his form, bumper form, being off the track a long while. You could see in the first half of the race, he was very green throughout it, a little bit ring rusty. I loved what he did inside the last furlong, really put the race to bed. And uh, yes, he, whatever he did today, he's definitely going to improve from being off the track for so long.
Paul Ternan was the man in the plate there. He was very, very pleased with Dark Raven's effort and he duly completed a double on Lossimeth in the night Frank Juvenile Hurdle. The impressive Fairy House Grade 3 scorer took the step up to Grade 2 company in her stride. She was a very warm favourite. Did she take it to another level today, Kate? I mean, she was good at Fairy House, but surely that demanded a bit more, didn't it? Yeah, she definitely did. It, did. it had strength and depth the race today. And, you know, I thought she was a little bit keen through the early part of the race, like where a lot of the horses in the race, they didn't go that much of a gallop. But when she turned into the home straight, she put the race to bed and within a matter of strides. And she did it really, really well. And the third and final leg of the Mullins treble came in the feature event, the Racing Post app. Novice Jakes, the grade one. Fieldor, a warm order favourite here to supplement his Chase debut win at Navin. But in the end, he was no match today for his immediate victim on that occasion. That was Sam Waugh, who turned it around comprehensively. Fieldor having to settle for third in the end. Visionarian was the revelation of the race, finishing second. But the winner ridden confidently, patiently out the back today, Kate. What did you make of it? Yes, he was very, very impressive. He definitely learned uh, from his um, chasing debut at Navin and just his class, his turn of foot inside at, at the back of the last fence um, really came to the fore and he did it really, really nicely. And uh, to break your maiden in grade one company, he said it was he was a classy horse. I was really taken by Phil Dore. I don't think, I think he definitely um, knocked himself with that mistake at the third last, uh, just didn't quick quite quick enough as well as he should have. It'd be interesting to see where connections do go next with him. Yes, that was a crucial moment for Fieldor in the end. He had to settle for minor honours today, but I'm sure he will be able to bounce back. We got underway with a bang with the All About Sunday Maiden Hurdle at 12 o'clock. Permenion was all the rage here for the Mullins camp, but was unable to get to grips with the All The Way winner, High Definition. Of course, very smart flat horse for Aidan O'Brien, just touched off in the Tattersall's Gold Cup earlier on this year. Now it's on Joseph. Room for improvement in his jumping, Kate, but it's early days. Overall, would you be pretty pleased by what you saw? Yes, you'd have to be. It's very interesting. This horse is still a full horse, and, um, you know, you could see him going down the breeding line, maybe if he can reach um, some of the heights he did on the flat over hurdles. And uh, he just did things really, really nicely. I think even, albeit if they'd had the last hurdle in, um, he would have even maybe won more, of impre more impressively. Good run from the Harrington horse in second there, Jatara. I mean, she'll certainly have her day before too long, won't she? Yeah, you definitely hope so. But drop her back into Mayor's company. She probably contested one of the hottest um, maiden hurdles we've seen run this season. And uh, yeah, it'd be nice um, that if she could just get her winning bracket and um, get a bit of black type over hurdles. But she's improving the whole time. Plenty of options for the winner going forward between two and two and a half miles. Great day for a couple of syndicates as well here. That was lovely to see. The novice handicap hurdle went to Tully Polani. Fantastic moment there for Georgie Benson riding a winner on her first ever attempt here at Leopardstown. And the handicap chase going to final orders. Dominant from the front. Brilliant jumping performance under Keith Donoghue. And connection <laughs> celebrations after the two of those, Kate. I think really lit up the afternoon, didn't they? Yeah, it really did. It put it added a bit of variety. And it, it's interesting enough, the two syndicates watched it in the braid ring here behind us. And, you know, they were doing a lot of screaming and shouting. And it was absolutely brilliant to see. And it's great for uh, connections um, of syndicates to go and win big races here, uh, like the Leopardstown Christmas Festival. Final orders now. Won his last four starts over fences. Five of his last six. What a fantastic fantastic servant he has been to Gavin Cromwell and the CM Day Syndicate. That is where we must leave it. It's flown by day one here at Leopardstown. Kate, many thanks for your company. I know you're wearing your other hat tomorrow. <laughs> you're going to be here, though. A slightly warmer day, I think we're forecast to, aren't we? I hope a little slightly warmer. I can take some of the layers <laughs> off I have underneath this cape. But I've kept nice and warm. Yep. You didn't dress... I've done OK. Well, you've done yeah, OK, yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got the gloves out. Any, chan <laughs> any chance I got, I was going indoors. <laughs> OK, that's where we must leave you. Thanks very much indeed for being with us here on day one at Leopardstown. Join us again tomorrow for day two. Bye-bye. Thanks to Gary O'Brien and Kate Harrington for all their hard work at Leopardstown this afternoon. The first of four great days racing and it very much lived up to it on paper. High definition, high class flat horse and potentially, as we said earlier, high class hurdles as well. He did the, the, the job really nicely, albeit suggesting that there's plenty to work on going forward. A 9-2 winner in the opener. Uh, Dark Raven, it was worth the wait for him, 631 days off the track, but he won very impressively for Willie Mullins. That was the first of three on it, followed up quickly by Lossy Mouth in the Knight Frank a grade two juvenile hurdle, five to four on favorite scored. A big shock, Tully Polani in the novices handicap hurdle as well. Great stuff for connections, 33 to one winner. Sam Wah took the grade one on the day, three to one and turned the form around uh, with Fieldor. 
Final orders, he just keeps on improving. 7-2 to two winner and Paul Liffey taking the last as well, marking another win for Gordon Elliott. Those are the winners from Leopardstown on day one of four. And we're doing it all again tomorrow at Leopardstown. Uh, two grade ones tomorrow. The Paddy Rewards Club Chase. It's over two miles and a furlong grade one at 110. And the Future Champions Novices Hurdle, also sponsored by Paddy Power, over two miles at 145. The Paddy Power Chase as well. A big race on that card too. That is the scene at Limerick. Their finale. Runners are heading down to the start for the Aqua Process Solutions Mayor's Irish National Hunt flat race and two yards who have been totally dominant across Ireland today in Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins. Once again, they are going to fight out for favouritism. At the moment, it's the more experienced Cool Cherry who is at the top of the market. There she was in scene. And she is at the top with five to four. 13 to eight about the rules debutant, uh, the Jin Grin for Gordon Elliott, looking for an across the card five timer. A six to one bold reflection. Charity Barnum, 10 to one. 14's the Granos Girl. Hot Shimmer, 40 to one. 50's Grace Faraday. Loran, 66 to one, which stage lady. And nine going to post with the top two yards in the country going head to head in the finale. Seven final race of the day, Limerick and Dare. In shot will be momentarily at least is Cool Cherry, who will be a short price favourite for Willie Mullins and Jordy Town. And Gornelito Lee says three runners in this race. And it's we wish the best of luck to Josh Williamson having his first ride to track, of course, the son of Norman Williamson, uh, one of the legends that wear him in my time at least. And a uh, fantastic rider. Wish Josh the best of one of Gordon's runners. Uh, he's riding Charity Barnum. Yeah, it's fantastic to see Josh uh, on board having his first ride here today. I've been lucky to ride out with him and Gordon Elliott. He comes in quite a bit uh, there at the moment. He's still in school, but he showed that he's more that he's ca his capabilities at home on the gallop and riding plenty of work and schooling as well. So um, there's no doubt he's going to follow in his father's footsteps in some way, shape or form. So we wish him the best of luck. His family are here to support him, which is great as well. And fantastic friend to have your first ride at Christmas as well. You know, everyone wants to ride at Christmas and... Uh, it's fantastic for him uh, to get his first ride on the racetrack here at Limerick today. But in shot at the moment, we see Cool Cherry on the way to the start. First time I've seen her in the flesh, Fran. She's not the biggest. No, she's not in comparison to some rivals here today, but she does bring a good level of form. Question mark for me is how she cope with this really testing ground. I know Willie Mullins got a really deep test and gallop at home, but uh, she looks like a good action filly on both runs today. This is a di totally different test to what we've seen flip side of that though she's got the experience she has got the experience she's had two runs she's been second on both occasions she showed a great battling battling attitude and she showed that she's loads of heart albeit as you say it, Fran it's the first time she encounters these testing conditions today we've seen her on yielding to soft in Nace and good to yielding in Tipperary as well I thought at Nace they maybe got racing quite early but she showed she battled all the way to the line and to be fair she pulled out all the stops but she was just denied by Halka de Tarbet who has since gone out and franked the form when she secured her win in Maiden Hurl Company since since that run in Nace. But she comes from a good pedigree. She's by Maller, suggesting they, that they should be able to handle the softer conditions. But she's a half-sister to not trapped Dahlia Abu, who was placed in a Kerry National and a Munster National at this track. Bold reflection was a pick of the ring for me. John McCollin's runner, I thought uh, she was a standout ring. Yeah, plenty, plenty of size about her, a good step to her as well. Um, cost a bit of money at the Cheltenham November sale when finishing second and third in points points for Warren Ewing and comes from a family of multiple staying chasers. Alex Harvey claims a valuable seven. They're making way to the table. We'll get up just a hand call finale day, day one at Limerick. This is the race uphill. The first to show in front is Stage Lady and Dar Allen as they settle down through the first half running or so. Stage Lady leads by a, a length or so from Bold Reflection racing in second. And these two have opened up a lead about half a dozen lengths or so over at the Gin Grin. In the red jacket, races third on the outside of Cool Cherry. But very, very steady pace in the early stages. Grace Faraday races in five. And they're followed as they reach the top of the hill. By Charity Barnum, who races on the outside, or the centre of the group, but on the inner is Grano's girl. Between those races, Laurent and the back marker as they make the run downhill is Hot Shimmer. So the pace is uh, steadied up even more so as they make the run downhill run towards the turn into the straight with Stage Lady continuing to take them along by about a length and a half to Bold Reflection, racing in second. They're further length back by Cool Cherry, 
with the gin grin on that one's outside, two of the market leaders, followed by the yellow and black checks of Laurent, with on that one's outside is the free running Grace Faraday. Charity Barnum races next with Grano's girl on that one's inside, two of the three representatives for Gordon Elliott in this race. The back marker is Hot Shimmer. So as they continue on the run, continue in the straight towards the furlong point to bring them up past the stands. And it's Stage Lady and Dar Allen taking them along by about a length and a half or so to Bold Reflection and Aaron Harvey in second. Two lengths then to the Gin Grin and John Gleason, who is his third on the outside of Cool Cherry and Jody Townend. They're further next in the field by Grace Faraday and Anya O'Connor, who races on the outside of Laurent. With that one's, on that one's inner is Charity Barn, and ridden by Josh Williamson having his first ride in public. Josh, son of the great Norman Williamson. And they're followed on the inside by Granos Girl and Matthew Love, and the back marker, but only by half a length, is Hot Shimmer and Adam Ryan. So heading out in the final circuit, well on the final circuit, and making the right-handed swing to bring him to the entrance to the back straight. Less than a mile to race, and the lead continues to be held by Stage Lady. By half a length, three parts of a length, to Bold Reflection races second on the inside, a length and a half then to the Gin Grin in third. Four on that one's inside is Cool Cherry, they're followed two lengths back by Grano's Girl on the inside of Grace Faraday, between them is Laurent, and they're a length and a half in front of Charity Barnum and Hot Shimmer. Continuing the uphill run inside the final three quarters of a mile, and the pace finally just begins to increase a little, with, with Stage Lady the leader, by about two to three lengths now over Bold Reflection in second, Length and a half to the Gin Grin, who races third on the outside of Cool Cherry. Laurent makes a place or two on that one's inner. And they're followed as they continue the uphill run by Grano's Girl, who's in company with Charity Barnum. And Hot Shimmer remains just the back marker of the nine runners. But they're tightly enough bunched as they begin, continue the run to the top of the hill inside the final five furlongs. Stage Lady by two lengths to Bold Reflection in second. A length to the Gin Grin on the outside of Laurent. Between those two is Cool Cherry. Grace Faraday is a length and a half behind those, just pushed along for a stride or two by Anya O'Connor. They're two lengths in front of Charity Barnum, who's in front of Hot Shimmer, and they've relegated Granos Girl to be the back marker. On the downhill run, inside the final three furlongs, Stage Lady tries to kick in the front, leads by two lengths to Bold Reflection, still travels in second. Cool Cherry now moves up on the inside to dispute for that. They're followed by Grace Faraday, Laurent. Next in the field then is the Gin Grin under pressure, and they're followed by Charity Barnum. Racing into the straight inside the final two and a half furlongs, and Stage Lady being challenged now by Bold Reflection. In third place is Cool Cherry now being asked for its effort, and they're followed in four by Grace Faraday, racing down inside the final furlong and a half, and Bold Reflection is finally finding plenty for Aaron Harvey out in front by two to three lengths and increasing his advantage over Stage Lady in second. Cool Cherry has no more drive from third but racing well inside the final furlong it's bold reflection who's out in front and extending its advantage all the way to the line bold reflection going to win this bison five to slice and six to eight lengths to finish bold reflection wins the couple round cool cherry second third just only on to third was stage lady with finishing well on four on the inside was grace faraday ahead of charity bar Very, very good performance by Bold Reflection to get off the mark on her track debut and her debut, of course, for trainer John McConnell. This filly wants to pick at a ring, a standout, if you like, and she's got it on resolutely to win for Alex Harvey, putting daylight between herself and her rivals. Of course, the second home was the favourite, Cool Cherry. The pace setter was stage lady who had a cracker on debut in the orange and black colours, but this was a very taken performance, Lisa. Yeah, you really liked her in the ring beforehand as well, Fran. And she was always to the fore. Alex Harvey had her in a lovely position, just followed the pace with Stage Lady. And uh, she definitely, she comes from a family of stayers, and that's what she done today. She's seen this out to really good effect, but she's a beautiful looking individual. And Alex, Alex Harvey has seen to really good effect here today as well. Obviously, Stage Lady was still on the bridle at this stage, and it's a really good performance from that de debutante. Cool Cherry was off the bridle. Jodie Townend was trying to, trying to muster up a rally from her, but she's able to finish out in second place but the winner was all too good at this stage was indeed showed a bit of greenness understandably so when running between the second last and last hurl wings but uh, once straightened out she's galloped on relentlessly putting daylight on testing ground between herself and her rival stage lady very good run cool cherry boxing on the debt maybe cool cherry's better and better ground but i think overall 
the winners performed very well. Yeah, I think she could be very much an above average type of filly. She's been seen to really good effect here today. Very professional about everything she's done as well, Fran. She was obviously second and third in her two point points for Warren Ewing before changing hands for 140,000 at the Cheltenham November sale. Um, but I thought this is a, taking enough performance in uh, Cool Cherry. Maybe she just she's run her race again. But as you said, maybe the ground was just her um, wasn't wasn't for her today. But we can see in the background as well, Josh Williamson having his first ride today. He's been seen to good effect aboard Charity Barnum, who's just finished maybe just out of the frame, but has run with plenty of credit as well. Um, but this is a taken performance by the winner. It is indeed, yeah. Josh Williamson got on well there, back in a white cap with the purple colours. But the winner, make no mistake about it, bold reflection. We'll be hearing more about this filly. A lovely performance on debut for trainer John McConnell. Rider Alex Harvey gives a punch to the crowd. He's got a kick out of riding a St. Stephen's winner here today at Limerick on a day that this place really come alive, of course, with the feature winner, Jerry Colomb, doing it in great style. But a winner wins in great style. Bold reflection caps off at what has been a wonderful day at Limerick, winning for John McConnell and rider Alex Harvey. And I think it's the second winner of Alex Harvey's career as well. Well done to him. You could see crossing the line what it meant as well. And given that this filly has gone off a single figure price, there was some level of confidence behind her. Despite the fact that Cool Cherry had the form in the book, she just got a little bit, she just got a little bit held up on, on, on the ground and has stayed on. Well, as she as she always has, but ultimately had nothing to offer against Bold Reflection. Thirteen to two winner for Alex Harvey, John McConnell, and Carolina Hearn. Second, the favourite Cool Cherry, five to four, eighty to one about Stage Star back in third, and seven lengths the winning distance. So that was the final race of Limerick, day one of their four-day Christmas festival. Let's get more reaction with Framberry and Lisa O'Neill. Yeah, it's been a wonderful day here at Limerick, day one, of course, of the Christmas Festival. Seen a very good performance in the final race today. Bold reflection winning for John McConnell and Alex Harvey doing it a really good style on track debut. Yeah, very professional. Done it with consummate ease as well and showed that hand, more than handle these attritional conditions here today. Alex Harvey, brother of Ben Harvey's, who's just turned conditional as well. He had his first winner at Nace and nice for Alex to get a winner at Christmas as well. But he's been seen to good effect. Good value for a £7 claim, Fran. He's one to keep an eye on in the amateur ranks. As is the winner, of course, uh, trained by John McCollum, bold reflection, big unit, great start to her career in the track. Grade one race of the day, of course, was the Faheen, novice chase, fifth race today, seen a very good performance by the winner, Jerry Colomb, to win for Jordan Gainford, in the Rob Cork colours, of course, trained by Gordon Elliott. Down a distance today, Lisa, he was a winner over two miles six over hers last year, good winner in chase and debut fair years, but he was extremely good here today. Yeah, if you thought anything, maybe he might be vulnerable to, um, I suppose, a slow sedate pace and, and maybe something mm. being able to quicken off it. He's very much a stamina horse but he's he got in he got in slowed up to at the second last got in a little bit tight to the last but he showed that he's capable of securing grade one success today those attritional conditions as i mentioned beforehand he thrives in that too well able to handle that thought he was really impressive to be fair he was stepping up to grade one company for the first time but i thought he'd done it very very nicely yeah really good performance and he jumps extremely well be interesting or route to go as regards distance with him for the rest of the season given that he's won over further in the past of course over hurls uh, that capped off a good day for owner Rob Corr of course they had a really good prospect in the second race today trained by Henry Bromhead Foxy Girl getting off to mark after a really good start to her career at Torless prior to, to today yeah she was always to the fore Fran um, Michael Connor was on board lovely for him to get a Christmas winner as well on board Henry Bromhead's charge she'd been seen to good effect in France and Autoy and then second to Liberty Dance in Thurless Liberty Dance went on and Frank the forum but she was good here today Mikey O'Connor let her go to the front when she was a little bit keen and set a lovely pace as well she was never caught done it, done it with consummate ease as well and I, I thought this was a good performance and as we said we've seen an above average filly in the bumper and she could be another above average filly that we've seen today but I like what she's done and I thought she'd done it, with, it, done it plenty well Good performance uh, third race today Longhouse Pole back over hurls today of course Tiesta's chase with her back last January was out of sorts if you like on a season debut again over hurls a punch and he was very good today Yeah I thought it was Pinkerton's race to lose and uh, a little bit disappointed with him that he didn't finish out, finish it out to better effect. But Longhouse Poet, we've seen him in the National, we've seen him in the Tiestes. He's rated 142 over hurls. Um, he was superior by six pounds to Pinkerton and he showed that today. Mm. Um, he uh, he kind of guessed a little bit at the, the last down the back straight, but Ricky Doyle was on board and he made a big, 
winded it up a little bit from, from a slow early pace and uh, I thought he finished it very well. It was a very nice performance by Longhouse. Paul to long term aim, I'm sure is back to Italy for the Grand National. He's got back on track here today in great style. Very competitive mirrors, handicap hurl for the fourth race today to see a very good performance by Missy getting her third success on test and ground up grade here today. Yeah, overcome um, a little bit of a stumble at the back of the last and which could have really stunted her momentum but in fairness to her where credit where credit's due, she battled really hard all the way to the line. She thrives on these heavy conditions and I think that's really the flavour of the day as well. If you can heavy the te ha handle the test and going, there's a lot to be said for it. There is indeed and Bonnie Kelly in the sixth race of the day definitely handled test and ground, looked well handicapped prior to this race and was already winner for Sam Carling and Philip Enright. Yeah, won with plenty in hands as well, a wide margin winner, Philip Enright on board, seen to really good effect as well, but she was definitely one that caught the eye at Clomel the last day when she finished second, beaten by Court and Vicky. She stepped back and tripped from 2-4 to 2-1 today, and uh, very, very shrewd operation, and always one to note when there's market support, and she got that win on the board again today. Got on her way with a three-year-old hurl, of course, way back at 12.25 today, and a very good performance on third start. Over hurls, Ludus winning in the colours of Ayn Ryan for Gordon Elliott, first leg of the double for that team, Jordan Gainford and himself. Yeah, he, Ludus, he's been progressive and improving. Um, he was a little bit disappointing for me at Navin on his debut over hurls, but maybe he was just really learning the ropes. Mm. But he stepped forward at Cork and he's really stepped forward here today. I thought Paris Lost was one to take out of that race. Very much so. He stayed on strongly after a couple of scratchy jumps down the back. Very much horse take over. It's been a really good day's action here, at least to the crowds have came. There's been a really good atmosphere. I think we've seen a couple of good performances on the track as well. Yeah, we have and definitely plenty to stick in the notebook going forward. But we've had we've had rain, we've had sunshine, <laughs> we have cold. But uh, it's great that there's such a good atmosphere around Limerick here today. And credit to the manager, uh, Tom Rode, he's done a great job today. It is a great turnout, of course. That is day one of the Limerick Christmas Festival. I'll be back here for day two. Not a cracking card in prospect. But for me, Lisa, Pascal, our cameraman and all the artists team, it's goodbye for now. Many thanks to Fran Barry and Lisa and Neil for their insight throughout the course of the afternoon. It was a fine renewal of day one of the Limerick Festival, Limerick Christmas Festival. It kicked off well for Gordon Elliott. Ludus taking the open at 11 to 4 favourite, got off the mark. Foxy Girl stamped her authority and got off the mark in the process as well in the second race, 7 to 4. Longhouse Poet bookended his season in the best way, won the Thiestes in January and took the demolition hurdle at 133, 5 to 1. Missy had to survive a last, vet, a last hurdle blunder to get her head in front, six to one in the 208. Jerry Colom took the feature in the style of a very, very good horse. Five to four on favorite for Gordon Elliott. That was his second winner on the card. Bonnie Kelly off the mark as well, five to two favorite off the mark over fences in the penultimate. And Bold Reflection, a second winner of the career of Alex Harvey and a winner for John O'Connell on Stevens Day as well. 13 to two winner. Fran Berry will be back to do it all again tomorrow. It kicks off at 12.19 with a rated novices chase. There's more graded action on offer. The Lions of Limerick, Jaguar, Land Rover, Novice Hurdle, a grade two event over two miles and seven furlong. Jordan Gainford looking for another graded success at Limerick, having ridden Jerry Colom to take the day one feature. It runs from 12.19 all the way through to 3.49 for another seven race car. Want to know what's coming up on Racing TV? Keep up with the latest action or have your say on the big news stories. Are you interested in extra features, competitions and replays of great races from the past? Racing TV's social media channels are always at your fingertips. Watch the day's big races again and join the debate with others. Read tips from the experts and catch up on the breaking news from the Racing TV website. Enjoy highlights from the channel and the expert insight that you might have missed. Racing TV's social channels already have over half a million followers, keeping themselves in the know every day with updates around the clock. Wherever you are in the world, you can stay ahead of the pack by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. Join them now by following Racing TV on social media today.
Gordon Elliott joins us now. He's taking the bumper here at Leopard Sound with Poor Lay Field. And Gordon, it's been a good day overall because Jerry Colomb landed the grade one down at Limerick. How thrilled were you by what he did today? I was happy, Gary. Yeah, the day started off a bit slow, you know. Um, but, you know, when you're, when you're at these standards coming here trying to take on William Mullins and the likes, you, know, you need to be pumping in the winners. But uh, four winners in today, we can't complain. Um, Jerry, I was impressed with him, yeah, very impressed with him. Jumping really is his forte, isn't yeah. it? He was terrific in that department. Today. He was. He jumped great. He's very laid back horse. Just all, does what you want him to do. But nice horse from looking at him. What do you see the future holding for him? Could he stay at two and a half or step up to three miles? I'd say probably the further he goes, the better he'd be. If I'm being honest, Gary. But I'll have a chat with Brian and and Rob uh, and, and see what we do. Soft ground really important to him. Uh, I'd say it definitely helps him, but not essential. Okay, he's one to look forward to. What about the horse who just won the bumper here? Did that take you by surprise or not? We thought he was nice. Uh, thought he was a galloper. Um, he'd have been a lucky loser if he'd have got beaten. Um, you know, the second horse came by and cut the snout off the whole lot of them. Uh, but he, he's very gutsy. I love the way he put his head down and came back at them. Um, you know, he's a nice horse. But well, he's a horse for the future. He's not really a bumper horse, if I'm being honest. Straight over hurdles, do you think? We, uh, more likely. Okay. And I, it's hard to keep track on a day like today, but you had winners at Down Royal and Limerick as well, I think. We two in Limerick, uh, one in Down Royal and one here. So we had four winners, so uh, not a bad day. No, very much so. I suppose the low point was Field Door and Hollow Games. Did you feel both yeah. of them underperformed? I thought Hollow Games never, never looked happy, and Field Door landed on top of the third last, and he was bet after that. But uh, look, that's racing. You've got to keep your head up and worry about the next day. Was he OK after it? There was talk he might have had a bit of a nick. Yeah, he's got a bad nick there now. He's very, very sore. But uh, look, it's not taken away from the